paradise flycatcher, yeah. Then uh, vertebrate flycatcher, tiger flycatcher, then um, yeah, greater canary flycatcher, uh, lesser white throat, greenish wobbler, uh, magpie robin, Indian robin. I don't know. It's over, I think, 60, 70 species we saw it. Um, be it up. Okay. I think that encyclopedia is going to be in Oh my god, plenty of information, plenty of species, of course. Great. And how many people have the first visit to the Bhopal and One Vihar National Park? First visit. First visit. Just one person. You're not in Bhopal, man. You're in Bhopal, right? But you're studying in Barkatullah, right? Since? Since last one year. Since last one year. Let's go, no matter what. Now it's gone. Okay. Great. So, the purpose of asking is that we enjoyed it all. And of course, came across plenty of species and, you know, fauna, of course. Great. So. Okay. So, I think we should be beginning for the day two of the first uh, for the day two of the first lesser known uh, conference, national conference on lesser known species of Madhya Pradesh. I wholeheartedly once again welcome all of you. Khuli baahon ke saath, muskurahat ke saath, aap sabhi ka abhinandan karte hain, swagat karte hain. And uh, of course, this conference is presented to you by the Society of Nature Healers, Conservators and Local Tourism Development, Bhopal in collaboration with Madhya Pradesh State Biodiversity Board, Bhopal Birds Conservation Society and Madhya Pradesh Tiger Foundation. Ek bar zordar taalio se hum shurwaat karenge. Aur do pandiya mein humari audience ke liye kehna chahunga ta ki thodi aapki muskurha jada achche se bahar hai. Mujhe yakin hai shero shairi ka shok sab rakhte honge. So an unconventional start, but a start that will induce some positive energy. So wherever I find a good audience, I usually dedicate these lines to them. Ki arz kiya hai. Ek insan hai shayad bol raha hai, sabko bolna chahi hai. Arz kiya hai. Ki jab jab in nazro ko aapka didar hota hai. Vava bhi bolte hai saath mein. Vava koon bolega? Kya baat hai? Haan. Kya baat hai to shair ke baad? जब जब इन नजरों को आपका दीदार होता है दिन कोई भी हो हमारा त्योहार होता है बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद शुक्रिया तो इन्हीं तालियों की गड़गड़ाहट के साथ और इसी जोश के साथ शुरुआत करते हैं दूसरा दिन फाइनली ऑल ऑफ यू मेड इट अलोंग विथ मी इट्स बिन गोइंग ग्रेट एंड टेक्निकल सेशन थ्री बिगिन एज ऑफ नाउ this session is titled as Issues in Dolphin Conservation, Present Status and How to Revive. And to throw light on this very topic, to present uh, content on uh, and their research on this topic, we are delighted to have as presenters Mr. Sanjeev Yadavji and Dr. Amit Dubeji. Talio Sanka Swal Karinge, please. And this session will be chaired by Professor R.J. Rao, former Vice Chancellor of Barkatullah University. So I would like to welcome R.J. Rao to the stage. I would like to welcome you to the stage. And before I will introduce you to the stage of our presenters and our chair. Our presenter, Mr. Sanjeev Yadav Ji, he is the Senior Coordinator at the Rivers, Wetlands and Water Policy Division, WWF India. He has been working on the conservation of key freshwater species since 2009. He is leading the freshwater biodiversity work related to Ganga River, dolphin conservation, gharial reintroduction, and community-led freshwater turtle conservation programs in River Ganga. So we are extremely delighted to have you with us. As the second presenter for the day, the co-presenter, we have Dr. Amit Dubeji. He is the Associate Director, Wetlands, WWF India. So we are yet again happy to have you. And uh, as the chair, as the honorary chair for this session, we are extremely elated to have Professor R.J. Raoji with us. 
Uh, he is the former Vice Chancellor of Barkatullah University. He is also the member of IUCN, Crocodile Specialist Group, Turtle and Tortoise Specialist Group, and uh, he is a professor at Jivaji University, Golia, and has been a former member of National Biodiversity Board, as well as a renowned researcher on studies of turtles, crocodiles, and dolphins. So it's a privilege for us to have you as a chair with us. I would request the chair and I would request the chair to please provide opening statements and initiate the first session of day two. Good morning, everybody. It's great um, having this, such a beautiful gathering here. All youngsters and all senior most officers of uh, forest department and scientists. So the year, I congratulate the organizers to organize such a uh, very important topic, particularly about lesser known animals. So when way, way back in 19 late 70s, when I started my work on turtles. So there was a saying by our IUCN turtle special group chairman that uh, he was, a uh, comment he has given like, people are giving importance to the people who are working on a bigger animals like tigers, elephants, and all those things, and uh, not taking much interest on the lesser, smaller animals. So I was felt uh, differently, like I was working on turtles, and um, definitely it is a smaller animal, and uh, maybe uh, not much importance those times. People are not giving for consideration of those species. Everybody was working on tigers and all those things. So after uh, more than 30, 40 years, so now this is a beautiful uh, organized on lesser known animals. So it is very important to have all the biodiversity, each and every species have its own role in the environment and uh, we cannot uh, um, say that this is only the important animal. So that happened and uh, when we come to the um, dolphin work, I think uh, after my studies in uh, uh, from Bhopal, Bartula University, I did my PhD from the same university where I was vice chancellor. And then we went to Chambal River in 1983 and that is the time um, there was uh, Wildlife and Stuff India's Crocodile Breeding Training Center's field camp was there in the Chambal River. And Pro Dr. L.K. Singh, he worked on crocodiles. And I joined for working on turtles. And um, forest department people, particularly Dr. Rishikesh Sharma, was, he was just uh, not having PhD, in fact, but later on he did PhD. So that time, first time we saw this uh, river dolphin, Chambal River. So it's almost like 1983, I think we saw it. And uh, during our studies, um, I was working on turtles and uh, uh, like I think crocodiles. And we are all both became as a team of people studying on uh, birds, do dolphins, and everything, and even otters. So uh, later on, wildlife stuff India researcher, uh, he started doing his PhD, Dr. Uh, uh, Hussein. He did PhD on uh, otters from the Chambal River. So this is, we became as a team of uh, young uh, researchers that time and ultimately made the Chambal River as an important uh, wildlife area throughout the world. I can very well say that we are most like all the major crocodile experts throughout the world came to Chambal to see these animals and uh, see the research activities. That was the very big uh, contribution we came to know. And the, my f paper presented in the UK, first Herpetological Congress, so it was, uh, they have a, a recorded in Encyclopedia Britannica on the conservation successful project of uh, crocodiles in India. So that was the thing would happen. Later, in fact, I joined uh, by, uh, Gwalior Jivaji University, and i fortunate to have a program on the Ganges uh, second phase of the Ganga cleaning program, and uh, I was given a task of from, Kanpu, uh, from Rishikesh to Kanpur stage. So that area was given to us, and uh, we had a long meetings in Delhi in the Ganga uh, project directorate. And that time they were asking me to what type of animals you are going to do. It is a biodiversity uh, project that was. So when I was talking about I will work on the turtles, crocodiles, birds, and all those things, and dolphins. 
So that time, uh, you may be knowing that the first phase of the Ganges report, uh, scientific report was published, and in that report there was no mention of dolphins. All the biodiversity they have given it, but dolphins were not mentioned. So that time the committee members said, you know, there is no dolphin Ganges, what is the use? You re remove this uh, topic, when I mean, they're working on dolphins, uh, there is no dolphins. That was the um, comment made by the committee members. So we thought, okay, we were in fact to have removed the dolphin from our research, major research project. And we started surveying from, started from Kanpur coming all the uh, initial preliminary surveys we did it. And uh, because of my experience in Chambal, we are seeing this dolphin, how they are coming out and all those things. So first time I able to see the dolphins in Garmukteswar. So that was the very great thing. I, I thought when there are so many dolphins here, we can able to see why not we can uh, do some more work on this project. So I, uh, of all the research scholars, one of my research student, so he was given the task of doing this dolphin study. So he was Dr. Sandeep Behra, he is, these days he is in the Ministry of Environment. He was the first PhD on dolphins in India. So later on, um, we started working and uh, Sandeep Behra was joined to WWF and uh, ultimately we were able to make uh, all the, our research data and everything was pursued to the government and uh, now we are again feeling proud of that ultimately this, this dolphin became as a national aquatic animal. So initial work when we started in 1991-92, so that time nobody knows about dolphins in uh, Ganges River. So now it is, it became as a national uh, aquatic animal. So these are the very things, so that is the way uh, Chambal River is one of the very important river throughout the country, what I can see. The only place where you just go and see almost all the major animals like dolphins, crocodiles, gadial, in the successful program. And um, people are working on this, and uh, I'm really happy that uh, today, this first topic of this today's third session is on the Ganges River dolphin, and uh, one of the, these uh, students are they are performing this. I recently had been to uh, Sinapur. I could not meet them, and we had a telephone discussion. And I could able to see uh, two dolphins in the first moment. I visited the Asinapur sanctuary only two months back. So I think they are going to present this particular work, whatever they are doing in this Ganges. Really, I congratulate them, and I request them to present their work. Thank you very much. A uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, I think, uh, I hope I am audible, loud and clear. Uh, so at the outset, I would like to thank Rao sir for this uh, wonderful introduction of how the uh, conservation work of uh, the Ganges River Dolphin began and uh, how it all started. And uh, today we are going to present the work that we are doing towards conservation of uh, this uh, Ganges River Dolphin. So uh, I'd like to start my presentations uh, with uh, the statement that, you know, the first riverine Ramsar site, I hope all of you know what Ramsar sites are. So Ramsar sites are the wetlands of international significance. India is a signatory to the Ramsar Convention. And uh, uh, under this convention, you identify wetlands, uh, which are primarily the uh, water bodies of uh, stagnant in nature. Uh, but, uh, Unlike uh, the characteristics of wetlands, uh, this particular stretch of uh, River Ganga between Narora and Bridge Ghat was identified as Ramsar site in 2005 only because of the presence of the Gangetic River Dolphin. And the Ganges River Dolphin is the national aquatic animal as Sir just informed. And uh, on the lines of Project Tiger, we are also now initiating with a Project Dolphin which is entirely on conservation of dolphin and its habitats. So we'd like to present the work that we're doing towards conservation of dolphin. Uh, so we, uh, when we talk about dolphins, the general perception that comes in our mind is that of marine dolphins. We usually associate dolphins with uh, the oceans and the seas. Uh, but there are also fresh river, uh, freshwater dolphins, the river dolphins. Uh, sorry. So there are seven species of uh, freshwater dolphins that are present in different river systems across the globe. 
the first one is our Ganga River Dolphin. Uh, second one is the Indus River Dolphin, which is critically endangered uh, in the country. There are only three to four individuals that are present in uh, what is known as a Bias Conservation Reserve in Punjab. Uh, there is a river dolphin in Amazon. Uh, there is uh, Tukuksi. Uh, we've got Iravadi dolphin, which uh, predominantly lives in brackish water and some freshwater uh, rivers in South India. We've got the Yangtze uh, finless dolphin, and we've got the Yangtze river dolphin, which has now become extinct. Uh, So out of these uh, seven species of uh, freshwater dolphins that we get in the rivers, we've got three species uh, which an inhabit the rivers of India. We've got the Iravadi dolphin, which we found in South, uh, which we find in South India. There's the uh, Gang Ganges River dolphin, which is found in uh, River Ganga and its tributaries. And we've got the Indus River dolphin. As I said, it's a very small population of dolphin that we have in the in Bias, which is a tributary of River uh, Ganga, uh, sorry, Indus. So today we are here to discuss our conservation work that we do on the Ganges River dolphin. And this is a brief introduction about the species. Uh, the species was officially discovered in 1801. Uh, this species of river, uh, uh, river dolphin uh, lives only in freshwater. Uh, and uh, it is practically blind. It lives in the turbid waters. And it finds its prey. And it navigates through uh, emitting ultrasonic sounds and when it uh, basically receives an echo of that, it can actually uh, sort of make an image of its prey, and that's how it hunts. So the caustics of this animal is very, very important. Uh, they are found in small groups, uh, never exceeding 20, 25 in numbers. Uh, and their calves are chocolate brown. They are uh, grayish brownish in color. Usually the females are larger than males. And the calves, uh, they tend to live with their mothers. They are seen, uh, seen swimming with their mothers uh, until they attain an age of two to three years. This is the historical distribution range of uh, the Gangetic River dolphin in River Ganga system, the Ganga River and its tributaries. Uh, the areas that are marked in red uh, historically had uh, a very healthy population of uh, Ganga River Dolphin, which has now become extinct. So because of many threats that I'll be discussing in detail uh, just after these slides, uh, the, we've lost a significant portion of the habitat of this very important uh, mammal, mammalian species. So when we talk about the population status of uh, Ganga, Ganga River Dolphin, uh, we have done surveys along with the forest departments in respective states. And uh, I think around 5,000 individuals is uh, an estimate uh, population that we have. We've got some sporadic population. Around 85% of the total population we have globally is in India. And that is why uh, you know, the major responsibility of uh, conservation of this species lies with our country. Uh, there are around. Uh, less than 100 individuals which are present in the river systems in Nepal. And uh, as I said, a significant portion is in uh, India. Uh, but there are a number of threats uh, which are actually uh, reducing the numbers and which are impacting the behavior of this very important species. And one of the major uh, you know, uh, threat that this species face is because of the fragmentation of the habitat. Uh, you know, the, the species and the prey base this species depend upon uh, likes to live in deeper pools and because of the construction of dams and barrages in large numbers, uh, both on the main stem of River Ganga and as well as tributaries, this particular uh, species and its prey base is facing a lot of issues and, uh, you know, the migration is being hampered 
uh, these uh, animals are stranded in deep pools. Uh, the deep pools also shift because of uh, the fragmentation. And this is having a threat on the population of this important species. Uh, the River Ganga and, uh, you know, the, the tributaries of River Ganga is heavily fished. And uh, this is entangling uh, in, in uh, you know, the fishing nets. Uh, as a bycatch and a lot of mortality is reported because of this bycatch as also. This is the third factor. Uh, river Ganga is also uh, arguably one of the most polluted rivers and this degradation in the water quality has a direct impact on the prey base of uh, this particular species. Uh, the lack of oxygen uh, reduces the prey base availability and that's what causes uh, a major threat to this uh, important species. Other than that, as I said, uh, Navana, you know, it, the animal being practically blind uh, and depends only on the echolocation, uh, the Ganga and its ghats uh, have a lot of human disturbance. And this human disturbance, the noise that is made underwater, uh, interferes with the acoustics of uh, this particular animal, and that's why. Uh, it, it is difficult for it uh, to uh, catch its prey. So, of course, detailed studies are being carried out in this, but this is found to have an impact on the population. And there is a migration pattern that we have observed, and Sanjeev will talk about this in his presentation. Uh, how the disturbed areas are uh, increasingly finding lesser number of populations. And we all know with increasing population, uh, the pressure on River Ganga is actually increasing on a daily basis. So I would like to invite Sanjeev now to take you through uh, the uh, journey of WWF India's efforts in dolphin conservation. Thank you. Uh, WWF India's journey started from 2005. Se start hua. Uh, dolphin के साथ में क्योंकि वहाँ पहला uh, 82 किलोमीटर का स्ट्रेच जो है रेवराइन रामसर साइड डिक्लेयर कराने में इनिशिएट किया साथ ही अभी हमारे पास कर, uh, इंडिया में दो रेवराइन स्ट्रेच है और दोनों रेवराइन स्ट्रेच डॉल्फिन के लिए है दूसरा रेवराइन स्ट्रेच 85 किलोमीटर का रिवर स्ट्रेच व्यास रिवर में है जिसको अभी टू, 2010 to 2020 uh, के working committee में था साथ में हमने UP forest department के साथ में 2012 में पहला state wide census किया उसके साथ में 2015 में दोबारा state wide census किया UP forest department के साथ में WF India range wide uh, range wide population assessment में WI के साथ में एक knowledge partner है और WF India uh, और WI की joint team में अभी uh, 1360 square, uh, 1360 uh, kilometer ka river stretch Ganga, Yamuna, Rapti, Sarada, Gerwa, Ghagra ka bhi cover kiya hai. Aur saath mein My Ganga, My Dolphin campaign 2015 se WWF celebrate kar raha hai. Ek campaign hai, jiske andar kai saare uh, part hai. Jisme pehla part jo hai, wo uh, awareness hai, jo riparian villages hai, uh, 225 kilometer river kilometer stretch mein. Bijno Bera se Narora Bera, jo peripheral uh, population hai dolphin ka waha par. To aise unke saath mein community ke engagement ke seven days ka ek program hai, My Ganga, My Dolphin campaign. Wo har dolphin uh, day se start hota hai, wo paanch din chalta hai. Isme forest department ka front line staff, saat divisions, do, uh, teen uh, circle, do uh, john mein. Jitna bhi front line staff hai, sabka ek, ek, har saal training kiya jata hai. Field trainings, unka... ये एक ट्रेंड है जिसमें 2005 से लेके 2015 से 2020 के बीच में डॉल्फिन का देखा गया है ये ट्रेंड जो है क्योंकि गंगा अपर गंगा काफी डायनामिक फ्लड प्लेन है रिवर का जो स्ट्रेच है वो मूव करता रहता है मतलब शिफ्ट होते हैं सेगमेंट रिवर चैनल शिफ्ट होता है इससे पूल्स का शिफ्टिंग हुआ 2020 में सारा डॉल्फिन्स का जो हैबिटेट था वो ऊपर शिफ्ट हुआ नीचे से सारा डॉल्फिन का तो पापुलेशन मॉनिटरिंग के साथ में हैबिटेट का असेसमेंट भी इम्पोर्टेंट होता है अवेयरनेस कैंपेन 2025 किलोमीटर के स्ट्रेच में रायपरेन 30 विलेजेस है जिसमें से कि मोर देन थाउजेंड इंगेजमेंट है कम्युनिटी का एक्टिव इंगेजमेंट है 
जिसमें वो वॉलेंटियर्स हैं गंगा मित्रा के नाम से डॉल्फिन मित्रा के नाम से ये वर्चुअल इंगेजमेंट है डब्ल्यू इंडिया का डॉल्फिन के लिए ये कुछ सेवन डेज जो यूजली जो हम लोग हर साल करते हैं उस प्रोग्राम की कुछ फुटेज है ये गंगा इंटरप्रेटेंस सेंटर इस्टेब्लिश किया है डॉल्फिन ने हसनापुर वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी में जिसमें लोकल्स के लिए एक कंजर्वेशन पर डिस्कशन करने के लिए एक प्लेटफॉर्म्स हैं ये लाइफ साइज मॉडल्स हैं इसी सेंटर में जहाँ पर मतलब जो है घड़ियाल डॉल्फिन टर्टल्स के लाइफ साइज मॉडल्स हैं जिसमें मतलब जो है स्टूडेंट्स वगैरह और लोकल कम्युनिटी का इंगेजमेंट रहता है ये कुछ बे फॉरवर्ड है जिसमें कि मतलब सीजनल मॉनिटरिंग होना चाहिए ऐसा हमें लगता है डॉल्फिन का मॉनिटरिंग पॉपुलेशन का के साथ में हैबिटाट का भी मॉनिटरिंग होना चाहिए जिससे कि एक ट्रैक बना रहे जो चेंजेस जो आ रहे हैं उसका एक ट्रैक रहे साथ में मतलब जो है डॉल्फिन टास्क फोर्स होना चाहिए ऐसा लगता है इसका एक मतलब जो है सिंपल सा एग्जांपल है कि मेरठ में जो हस्तपुर वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी है उसमें दो जोन है दो अलग जोन है तीन सर्किल है सेवन फॉरेस्ट डिविजन्स है टू किलोमीटर स्ट्रेच में मेरठ जो सी है और जो बरेली सी है उन दोनों ने आपस में एक जॉइंट टास्क फोर्स बनाया जिसमें सातों डिविजन्स के लोग हैं वो सारे एक साथ काम करते हैं तो ये बहुत अच्छा एक एग्जांपल है तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि चंबल के अंदर जहाँ पे टू स्टेट है वहाँ पे ऐसा कुछ होना चाहिए साथ में कम्युनिटी मोबिलाइजेशन एक इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट है रिसर्चर्स जैसे कि कल सभ्यता जी बोल रहे थे रिसर्चर्स रिसर्च करेगा और वो उसके बाद वो चला जाएगा वहाँ से और एन भी चले जाते हैं लेकिन फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट कम्युनिटी वहीं रहते हैं तो उनका इन्वॉल्वमेंट शुरू से होना चाहिए तो अब जैसे कि डॉल्फिन मित्राज है ये वॉल्टियर्स हर हर जगह कम्युनिटी में वॉल्टियर्स होते हैं तो उनको आइडेंटिफाई करें उनको इंगेज करें और साथ में मतलब जो है डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल पर जैसे कि गंगा का जो है डिस्ट्रिक्ट गंगा कमेटीज जो हैं उनका इन्वॉल्वमेंट होना चाहिए एक्टिव इन्वॉल्वमेंट बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है उनका फ्रंट लाइन स्टाफ का ट्रेनिंग बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होता है क्योंकि एन के जाने के बाद फिर सब कुछ वैसे ही हो जाता है जैसे इसलिए इंगेजमेंट हमने माई गंगा माई डोल्फिन कंपेन में अब बोट टेंडम मेथड और टेंडम मेथड नॉन टेंडम और टेंडम मेथड का इतना जबरदस्त तरीके से प्रैक्टिस कराया है कि हमारे पास 40 ऐसे फ्रंट लाइन स्टाफ है जो कि दोनों मेथोलॉजी में बिल्कुल एक्सपर्ट है कभी भी स्टेट वाइज सेंसस होगा तो वो अपनी टीम को लीड करेंगे ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है उसके बाद हमने मतलब जो है हम दूसरा है कि इको टूरिज्म को प्रमोट करना चाहिए डॉल्फिन इको टूरिज्म को उसका रीज़न ये है कि हम जो रायपेरियन कम्युनिटी है उसमें बहुत सारे इकोनॉमिकल बीक लोग भी हैं अगर उनका उनका लाइवलीहुड जुड़ेगा डॉल्फिन से तो ऑलरेडी ऐसा एक एग्जांपल है जलद सफारी करके अभी एन ने कई तीन पॉइंट पर वहाँ पे जलद सफारी का क्या है उसमें वो छोटी छोटी बोट्स हैं तो वो लोग बेसिकली वॉचर हैं उनके फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट कोई भी कोई एक्टिविटी नहीं होने देते इलीगल एक्टिविटी होती फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट रिपोर्ट करते हैं तो बेसिकली और उससे उनका इनकम जनरेट भी हो रहा है तो इस तरीके के तीन चार एन में बोर्ड रिलीज हुए हैं जिससे जल सफारी के किया जाए डॉल्फिन हॉट स्पॉट्स होने चाहिए मुझे ऐसा लगता है व्यू पॉइंट बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है बिलेज को डॉल्फिन बिलेज के नाम से होना चाहिए तो ये सब चीज़ें हम चंबल में भी कर सकते हैं तो बाकी मतलब जो है मेरे ख्याल से थैंक थैंक यू पॉपुलेशन है वो भी डिस्टरबेंस क्रिएट कर रहा है तो उसका इनिशिएटिव कुछ आप लोगों ने क्या किया है क्योंकि वो इम्पोर्टेंट है जानना देखिए जो अंडर वाटर नॉइज का है उसमें अभी हम लोग एक स्टडी प्लान कर रहे हैं जिसमें कि अंडर वाटर नॉइज पॉल्यूशन जो है उसका डॉल्फिन के बिहेवियर पे क्या इम्पैक्ट पड़ता है साथ ही पिंगर का एक स्टडी हमने अभी स्टार्ट किया है जो हमने बेस्ट बंगाल फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट के साथ में और सॉरी आई आई एक्सप्लेन टू दिस सो बेसिकली यू नो वी व्हाट वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू इज थ्रू दीज सेंसेस दैट वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू वी आर ट्राइंग टू आइडेंटिफाई द हॉट स्पॉट्स ऑफ डॉल्फिन्स इन गंगा and based on that there is a management strategy that will prepare a dolphin conservation plan and uh, what sanjeev was referring to as pingers so these pingers are actually uh, acoustic uh, instruments uh, these emit sounds of a particular frequency and which tends to uh, sort of keep the dolphin away from the areas 
where we don't want them to go. So we want these organisms to live in their hotspots. We don't want them to get entangled into the fishing nets or we don't want them to be hurt because of the movement of the larger vessels that are planned to be moved. So we'll be uh, sort of, you know, identifying the hotspots. Uh, and the hotspots will uh, depend upon the availability of the prey base, the availability of, you know, the conducive environment for these uh, organisms. And based on that, those areas will be kind of no-go zone, uh, conservation zone for dolphins, and other areas would be then taken up for other activities. Uh, just a minute. Good morning, sir. Uh, I have two questions with me. First, uh, as we have, uh, as we know that uh, there are threats to the Gangetic River system due to the uh, invasion of foreign fishes, of like of Amazon. So, what would we have? Ta uh, what steps we have taken to save sure. them? And second is uh, that. As we are saying that uh, encouraging the ecotourism, it's, it's very correct, but uh, on the other hand, the introduction to, of ecotourism near the dolphin or any animal can interfere again with the uh, disturbance of human. And also in that, we will be using uh, boats which will, which will contain diesel and everything. So how we will balance it? Okay. So thanks, thanks for these questions. Both these questions are very important. So the first question was re regarding the exotics. So for controlling of the exotics, what we are doing on an annual basis is uh, these hot spots of uh, dolphin occurrence. Uh, we are monitoring the fish composition. Uh, so uh, we are alarmed uh, if there are any exotics, and we take suitable measures. We try to find out uh, the sources of these exotics, and we try to control it from there. Usually the exotics that are found in Ganga are uh, the aquarium fishes which are thrown in Ganga after, you know. So, or, or the, if there are some fishing farms in the upstream uh, which are growing these exotics and during the floods when they come down to the Ganga, that's how the exotics are being introduced. So we are trying to control that, identify it as a source. So the first thing that we do is, uh, for, uh, you know, we, we survey the entire river of stretch for the presence of these exotics. Uh, the second uh, question regarding the ecotourism, uh, what we're trying to do is we are uh, establishing thresholds. So there is a threshold that the river can take in terms of the number of tourists, uh, you know, which will not have a disturbance on the population. Why we're introducing, uh, introducing this uh, concept of ecotourism is uh, there has to be an incentive for the local communities to engage. And as Sanjeev rightly said that unless we engage uh, with the local communities, the uh, sustainability of the effort for conservation of dolphin will not happen. So, uh, to you know, give the economic benefits uh, to the local communities, to the riparian uh, communities, and yet not have a negative impact is something that we are designing through this threshold study. And once the thresholds are set, those thresholds will be a part of the dolphin conservation plan. And that will be st uh, adhered to very strictly. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I really enjoyed your presentations as well as your hard work uh, along with uh, dolphin conservations. I ca really congratulate the WWF effort with uh, dolphin conservations. But my question is, what is the deduction probability of dolphins? Sorry, I didn't get you. What question. is the deduction probability of dolphins in your study area? Uh, I think Sanjeev... Uh, you, uh, Population trends to have... No, no, you, you, uh, my question is actually, see, you are trying to connect with the population with the community. Community yeah. section, you have done very well, no problem. But uh, when we trying to estimate that the population trend is going up and down means we need information about detection probability of dolphins. So what is the detection probability of your study area? Detection okay, probability. so basically uh, what we've observed is we've observed the migration of, uh, you know, the occurrence, the hotspots. Uh, in terms of the numbers, I think the numbers are more or less stable. So there is no reduction in the numbers of dolphins, I think, if, if I'm answering you correctly. Detection. Detection probability, okay. Okay. 
yes it's Right. So if you want to determine the population, you would you approach any other techniques? Yeah. Yes, yes. I think Sanjeev would, uh, would be the better person to answer this. Sanjeev, if you can. Yeah, estimated hai, five thousand. इसमें बांग्लादेश का ये नंबर का अभी नम, ये जो है ये एस्टिमेटेड अनुमानित नंबर है कि 5000 हो सकते हैं अभी जो रेंज वाइड कंट्री जो सेंसस हो रहा है जो WIA कर रहे हैं उसके बाद इंडिया का नंबर क्लियर हो जाएगा कि कितना नंबर है और दूसरा है कि हम जो डॉल्फिन का काउंट करते हैं उसमें डायरेक्ट साइटिंग होता है साथ में एयरपोर्ट को भी हम इन्वॉल्व करते हैं तो उसके बाद हम एक नंबर आता है जो कि अभी हमारे पास जो इस रेंज में है 42 से लेकर 45 के बीच में डॉल्फिन का रेंज No, no, 5,000 is an approximate number over the globe. No, no, so what are you talking about? सर इंडिया में मतलब जो है डॉल्फिन कितनी है करंट स्टेटस पता नहीं है डब्ल्यूआई कर रहा है ये अराउंड मेरे के नहीं सर तीन हजार के आसपास होना चाहिए तीन हजार के आसपास होना चाहिए लेकिन एक्जेक्ट नंबर नहीं है तीन हजार के आसपास है लेकिन सर अभी डब्ल्यूआई का सेंसस होने के बाद क्लियर होगा नंबर दूसरी ओर स्टेट वाइड जब सेंसस किया था हमने 2800 200 2800 सर सर नहीं नहीं प्रोजेक्ट डॉल्फिन के अंदर में सर अभी प्रोजेक्ट डॉल्फिन का जो एडजस्टमेंट सर आप इधर आइए सो द फर्स्ट रेंज वाइज यू नो एस्टीमेशन ऑफ पापुलेशन ऑफ द रिवर डॉल्फिन्स इन इंडिया दैट इंक्लूड्स ऑल द थ्री स्पीशीज दैट वी हैव इज कमेंस्ड अंडर प्रोजेक्ट डॉल्फिन व्हिच हैज रिसेंटली बीन इनिशिएटेड द फर्स्ट सर्वे अंडर दैट हैज बीन टेकन लास्ट ईयर वी वर अ पार्ट ऑफ दैट and the results of that are still to be out around uh, so we've done the first ever uh, you know the study in up stretch and those numbers we have an exact uh, figure the approximation 5000 is an approximation of this species across the globe in all the uh, range countries where this is found all right the exact numbers of all the dolphin species within a couple of months or within a year we will have an estimate of this population uh, wii has been uh, given the charge of this and we will have an official report under the namami gange program yes
time we need to switch from the first stage to the second stage. Okay, the direction probably less than 10 percent. Yeah. Because the sunlight is, you know, reflects our eyes. We can't be able to see, you know. We, that's why we are, we, we are talking about population for a success thinking very limited. So we have to go with the, some advanced technique like acoustic tax, something like that, to estimate at least approximate population. Because there are scientific sites that where we estimate the sample rate, okay, 10 pixel, okay, from the different sampling techniques. Even different sampling techniques also we have a problem, okay. In WPA, they are using square transact. WA using line transact, okay. So even though, because the getting, the same individual again and again is possible. When same angle is going to run away, then, okay, 10, uh, 10 pixel. Then again, 10 pixel will run away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I got your point. So under this, uh, you know, uh, Project Dolphin, the, the census that we're doing, we are doing, we, we are going with acoustics. So Sanjeev referred to F-pods. So F-pods are being now used. So along with the direct sighting, we're using this technology as well. Uh, can I interrupt, uh, interrupt? Sorry. I think we are going in the same question and different answers. It's being an aquatic animal, which is impossible to get the accurate details at least unless you keep in a thousand people there or use some advanced technique like whatever that device under it. We don't have an answer. They already said it. we don't have an answer. So let's wait for the WA to publish whatever it is, then we can discuss it. I mean, if, if different people have different opinion on this, you know, how many percentage. Some people say point 0.1. I think we are, we are, probably we can, after this, we can talk about or discuss about it. We are, I think we are wasting time on this particular yeah. number. Yeah. I can say, okay, 3015, you can defend it, you know, it's okay. <laughs> if you want an answer, if you want, that's an answer from my side, I think. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not giving any answer. I just wanted to say, I worked with WWF and Dolphin Project, so I'm not going to speak anything about the detection probability and all, but what happens, no? Uh, all of us, you are also an otter expert, so they, there is a deep pools, okay? And that stretch of Ganga is very dynamic. So deep pools, continuously shift and for that particular period, be it summer or winter, there are uh, deep pools and unfortunately dolphins are not able to move in the shallow water. So there are teams with WWF who are placed in those positions and we certainly know that this animal is at this particular point of time is not going to go at that point. So that basis, on that basis, currently I'm not aware how much uh, kilometer stretch uh, is the area which one team used to cover. So like that, on the basis of that deep pools, they were calculating and we were sure at that time that this is the animal and it's not going there. And very slightly, like the fisherman does know on the basis of the fin and all, they can identify the animal. So yeah, it's a little bit tricky. And of course, I'm not going into the detection probability and the exact number, but this is the methodology which is like operational in that particular stretch. That is it. Yeah. I have to say, uh, very um, tedious work. In fact, we had uh, surveyed in the Chambal River. It is almost like a full, more than 250 kilometer stretch. Um, it's a uh, continuous process. We cannot uh, give in a one or two years time ki how many animals are there because the sincerely surveys in a small area, this is what Madam was talking about. There are some type of pools are there where you can get these animals. And uh, next, after some distance, where how many animals are there? Again, a sincere and continuous monitoring is required. So that is that we cannot give exactly the population. Maybe the range, whatever they are giving it is good. But I need to have more studies on this, uh, then only we can able to uh, tell the healthy population. What, what we are seeing, the mortality rate, if the departments are working, if any mortalities are there, then we can give some uh, clue of uh, animal uh, uh, population is reducing or something like this. So you need to have uh, experts working on the uh, different uh, riverine systems and someone is working on Bhampotra and uh, after th there is what they were talking about is the forest department can continuously monitor all those things because the researcher will work for only a few years and then he leave and uh, there is no second batch of students come and uh, work on this. 
So this data will going to be uh, not authenticated. So it is okay. I think we have to have a more uh, interaction and uh, discussion on this. Need a big program by making large number of uh, researchers working in different ranging areas so that only we can go it, get this uh, population surveys. And uh, at the moment, I think what we are seeing uh, with the trend is population of dolphin is increasing because of the habitat uh, protection and all those things. So that's what we can see. Thank you very much, and I really congratulate the researchers working uh, on this area, and I uh, congratulate the organizers to give this specific topic for this session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to our respected chair and our presenters. I would uh, please be seated because, uh, sir, please be seated because I would like to invite uh, Sri Vikas Singh Bagelji, founder president of SNHC India, to please. Uh, present a symbol of welcome to our presenters. Yes. Mr. Sanjeev Yadavji and Amit Dubeji. Yes, there it is. Our presenters from WWF India and uh, now to our chair, Professor R.J. Rao, former Vice Chancellor, Bakatullah University, Bhopal. It was a pleasure having you and now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Uh, Bakul Larji on stage, and I would request him to please present a memento to our presenters and to our chair as a symbol of our love and respect and gratitude on behalf of the organizers and other committees. Firstly, to our chair, yes, there it is. Bhagul Larji, the uh, Assistant Member Secretary of Madhya Pradesh State Biodiversity Board, presenting it to Sanjeev Ji, followed by Dr. Amit Dubey Ji. Yes, Tali on is here. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you for being there. Amazing, great. So, indeed, a thought provoking session. <laughs> And uh, moving forward with the second session of the day, under the segment of technical session three. This session is titled as Raptor Conservation with Special Mention on Vultures. And as the presenter for this session, we are happy to have Mr. Sunny Joshi Ji with us. Zorda Tali Oni Che Unke Liye. Sunny Joshi ji, and uh, this session will be chaired by Sri Dilshir Khan ji, vulture conservationist, Madhya Pradesh. Zorda Taliya on ke liye honi chahiye. Main aapko hamare president aur chair ke se avgat karwa du. Mr. Sun Sunny Joshi ji, senior project manager, Raptor Conservation, WWF India. He has done a master's degree in environmental science from Doon University in 2017. He has seven years of experience in vulture conservation in Uttarakhand. He has also written master's dissertation thesis titled Population Status and Threat Assessment of Vultures in Doon Valley, Uttarakhand, funded by the Conservation Leadership Program. After that, he worked at the Center for Himalayan Ornithology at Himalayan Institute for Sustainable Environment and Research Society in different capacities. He is trained in faunal taxonomy from Zoological Survey of India and restoration of degraded habitats from Earth Corps, Seattle, USA. Ham Zorda Taliyo Sunka Swagat Karenge. As the chair for this session, we are extremely happy to have Sri Dilshir Khan ji with us. He has been researching on vultures since 1996, a long time. In 2018, he was designated as the member of the Vulture Committee. And for his amazing and important contributions, in 2012, he received a Sparrow Award as well. I think that calls for an applause. And he has also been a resource person for vultures in Madhya Pradesh Forest Department. So it's a pleasure for us to have you here. And I would request our chair to please provide opening statements so that we can ignite this session.
uh, and just before we move ahead, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Uh, Sangeeta Rajguruji, Member Secretary of Bhopal Birds Conservation Society, to please come forward and uh, present a sapling as a token of welcome to initiate a pious beginning for the session to our chair and to our presenter as well. Yes. To our chair, Sri Dil Sher Khanji, and to our presenter, Mr. Sunny Joshi ji. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Good morning. As all of you know, after 1996, the vulture has been finished. And the knowledge of it has been in 2000. Diclofenic sodium injection has been finished. In 2005, it has been banned. And in 2015, the government has started to start on it. But before that, the vulture has been finished on the vulture. The vulture has been finished on it. और जो पहली गणना जो अगर जो कह सकते हैं वल्चर पे तो सर ने पन्ना में की थी जब पहली बार वल्चर की गणना हुई तो 6000 वल्चर पाए गए थे अभी 2021 में 10000 के लगभग वल्चर पाए गए पूरी दुनिया में 23 तरह के वल्चर पाए जाते हैं और इनके रंग और इन अलग-अलग इनके नामों से पहचाना जाता है जैसे ब्लैक बल्चर को ब्लैक हेडेड, एलो हेडेड, व्हाइट हेडेड और अपने इंडिया में नौ तरह के बल्चर पाए जाते हैं, चार तरह के यहाँ रेवास हैं, लेकिन एक बल्चर चार साल से यहाँ देखा जा रहा है हिमालय गिरफान, जो यहाँ पे प्रवास कर रहा है, और इस साल शायद वो जुड़ जाएगा। सात तरह के वल्चर यहाँ आते हैं, तीन तरह के जो वल्चर हैं वो यहाँ से सर्दियों के बाद वापस चले जाते हैं, सिनेरियस वल्चर, हमारे गिरफान, यूरेशियन गिरफान, वल्चर के बारे में सन्नी जोशी जी आपको जानकारी देंगे। हेलो Glad to be here. Uh, chaired by renowned vulture conservationist Dishar Khanji. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to talk about raptor conservation in the beginning, and then maybe you know switch to vultures. तो रैप्टर्स जो हैं ये एक ग्रुप ऑफ बर्ड्स हैं जो कि उनके कुछ स्पेसिफिक फीचर्स हैं जो उनको बाकी पक्षियों से अलग करते हैं रैप्टर जो शब्द है वो लैटिन वर्ड रैपियो से निकल के आया है जिसका मतलब ही है सीज करना या झपट्टा मारना तो जो हमारे जो रैप्टर्स हैं वो उनके जो कुछ फिजिकल फीचर्स जो उनको अलग करते हैं बाकी पक्षियों से उनमें से एक है कि उनकी आईसेट काफी तेज होती है हुक्ड बीक होती है और उनके जो टेलेंस यानी कि जो क्लॉज होते हैं वो बड़े शार्प होते हैं पक्षी जो हैं अलग-अलग तरीके के फूड हैबिट्स उनके होते हैं उनमें से जैसे कुछ पक्षी होंगे जो कि दाना खाते हैं कुछ होंगे जो इंसेक्टिवर्स फ्लैश ईटिंग भी दो तरीके के हो सकते हैं या तो वो हंटर्स हो सकते हैं जिसमें कि ईगल्स वगैरह आते हैं और कुछ स्कैवेंजर्स होते हैं जिसमें कि मेनली वल्चर्स आते हैं लेकिन कुछ ईगल्स ऐसे भी हैं जो कि हंटर्स भी हैं और स्कैवेंजर्स भी हैं जो आगे आएंगे तो हम उसमें उसमें बात करेंगे तो जो ये रैप्टर्स हमारा जो एक ग्रुप है ओके 
so there are about 500 species of raptors uh, found throughout the world. In India, we have about 100 uh, raptors. Uh, so according to the India's bird report of 2020, uh, it, it has been observed that all the, in, among most of the raptors, there has been a sharp or at least, uh, I want to say, steady decline in their population where due to various reasons. Uh, we are going to discuss the reasons in the next slide. Uh, some of the uh, reasons may be uh, quite common according to you know all the other uh, wildlife degradation things, uh, such as deforestation, uh, habitat loss, use of pesticides, environmental pollution, and I want to mention two reasons that are specific. One is use of NSAIDs. Uh, it has been widely published and widely known in the community uh, since last 20, 20 years at least. And, the and another one is collision by transmission power lines. So these are uh, large birds, eagles and vultures, and they, they usually collide with these power lines because, you know, uh, wings are really huge. So in, <clears throat> in absence of good perching grounds, uh, degraded habitat, like, you know, if, if you can see this picture, you will see that there are no trees where these big birds can perch. And there's me right next to an electricity power pole. And there's a dead steppe eagle, which is a migrant uh, in India, winter migrant in India. It, it has been electrocuted. So what, what happens is, uh, in absence of trees, these birds would sit on these power uh, pillions. And when they spread their wings, because these birds have huge wingspans, like, you know, two meters to three meters in between, like, depending on the species, and they get electrocuted. So that's a big threat here. What the hell? What just happened? Okay. Okay. So, in Madhya Pradesh, there are about 40 species of raptors that are found, including eagles, vultures, kites, and owls. Owls are also considered raptors due to many similarities in their uh, habits, feeding habits, and you know they also uh, seize. They, are, uh, I think, uh, this is a forest owlet, very uh, famous in Madhya Pradesh because this bird was rediscovered after and about like I think 120 years or something. It has been listed as endangered, and there's a session, uh, upcoming session on this bird. So I'm not talking. I'm gonna not gonna talk about this. Uh, from the 40 species of raptors that are found in uh, MP, 14 are threatened. Some of them are listed, such as you know Indian vultures, a white horned vulture, red headed vulture, Egyptian, and Himalayan griffin. As Sir had said, that it's migratory; it, it comes here. Uh, okay. So these are the nine species of vultures that are found in India. Of them. I guess uh, seven are uh, found in Madhya Pradesh, except the bearded vulture uh, on extreme right uh, and uh, slender billed vulture. Of these, long billed vulture, uh, red headed vulture, and white horned vulture are critically endangered according to the IUCN red list. And Madhya Pradesh actually holds is is among the last few fortresses that are, that are holding the vulture population. We have a very good uh, nesting colonies of white horned vulture and Indian vulture in Madhya Pradesh. And WWF India's team has been reporting and you know monitoring these sites consistently along with the forest department. Okay. So uh, to conserve these raptors, uh, WWF India has started their raptor conservation program of which I'm a part of. Uh, so our objectives are to conduct and support raptor research activities which includes nest monitoring and uh, raptor hotspot monitoring and to understand what's the breeding success or mortality of these raptors 
across landscape across India. And uh, we've started a uh, raptor conservation program in MP in 2021. So we've finished one season of monitoring uh, in 2021, and currently we are uh, in the process of you know uh, doing the nest monitoring in Madhya Pradesh. Okay. So these vultures use these kinds of cliffs that you can see. Uh, you can see uh, a lot of Indian vultures, you know, nesting in these areas. So what we basically do is we conduct hands-on training session for the forest staff to observe vulture behavior and recording, uh, and we then we record data set of the vulture nest monitoring. And then we assess, uh, I've already said, the breeding success and failures of the sites, and then we identify threat and try to mitigate these threats by, you know, um, conservation actions. Okay. So these are the areas that we are doing, you know, uh, vulture nest monitoring and in Madhya Pradesh and actually outside Madhya Pradesh also. Uh, currently, we are also, we have this raptor exhibition thing going on in our WWF India's uh, field office where we have displayed around 60 species of uh, raptors and it's open to everyone. People can come in and uh, see these uh, magnificent birds. Thank That should be it. Thank you. धन्यवाद सन्नी जोशी जी वल्चर पे ओके जी आई थिंक यू आर मिसिंग इन योर वर्किंग एरिया ओके सो इट इज टुवर्ड द विंडियन साइड Major vulture population is this towards the Vindian side and then Kuno and Gandhi Sagar. Right. So, so better, matlab, if you want to get a better representative population right. of vultures in Madhya Pradesh at least, okay. you have to include these areas. So, uh, they are well known. Yeah, yeah. so uh, these are the sites uh, we started here uh, because forest department was already, you know, uh, active, act actively monitoring these sites. So we, we started from there and we are slowly trying to uh, you know, spread to the country, uh, like you know, all the areas that you've mentioned, Gandhi Sagar also. So there are some sites that you know, these are the, the sites in the pink. These were the sites we monitored in 2021 in the pink, and then uh, we've selected the sites for 2022. So what we did was uh, we trained the forest forest uh, department staff, and we went there for surveys time and again and when, once the consistent data started coming in we moved to other sites so these people are still reporting uh, data and uh, we've moved to you know Neemaj, Gandhi Sagar and Kuno we'll train uh, for forest department officials uh, sorry frontline forest staff for monitoring and then we'll move to other sites and uh, in in successive years we are hoping to get a collective you know uh, uniform data set from everywhere uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, sir. Hi. I actually wanted to know that we birds are having adaptations like from long time in the geological time scale, they are having adaptations from the beak and the foot. What adaptations can we observe in vultures in the future that uh, they, as they have hooked beak, what are the other adaptations they can be having with the changes in, in the future like that? Okay, so uh, you're talking about evolution. It's a very slow process and uh, uh, unless and until there is a you know steady change in 
the habitat or availability of food and uh, something like that. I don't think we'll uh, see uh, much changes in our lifetimes, thousands of years, maybe millions of years. But for that, the change needs to happen very slowly. If you know, we talk about habitat destruction and you know all these things, uh, I had uh, showed you the pictures of uh, pillions. So pillions have replaced the trees as a perching ground. It happened very quickly, okay, and that's why it's causing a problem. But if okay, so so if if the change is very slow, then only you know the species can I guess adapt because uh, right now it's not looking good. What other raptors you find are going in the di uh, declining or fast okay. going towards the Okay, so One, two, uh, right now what comes to my mind is uh, step eagle that I had showed you the picture. So step eagle is uh, listed as endangered in the IUCN red list. So this bird it breeds in Central Asia and maybe Eastern Europe. Uh, I think the Mongolian population comes to uh, India. So these birds, uh, they'll breed there and they come to winter here, and then they'll face the threats such as electrocution or NSAIDs. Uh, there's, a, there's a paper, uh, I think, from Rajasthan Jorbir. It was reported that uh, NSAIDs or uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are causing problems for uh, step eagles also. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, please take the mic. Uh, that was also facing the same issue okay. uh, because they also have a very huge wingspan. Right. Uh, GIB also. Yeah, GIB also. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for that, uh, what uh, what we had seen is that mostly not the uh, transmission lines, but the three poles and the two right. pole distribution exactly. distribution lines. They were causing mo uh, right. major problem. Right. So uh, I, at that time. Uh, we had also uh, suggested some measures, but I would like to know, are you working on uh, suggesting some so, measures or taking actions on yeah. them? So uh, for these scavengers, uh, what, they, what, what usually happens is uh, they feed on dead animals, okay? And these dead animals are uh, disposed of in outskirts of the city or a village or in no, man la no man's land area, okay? And if uh, the carcass or dead animal is dumped in a, such an area where there is a power line going like nearby, so what uh, these raptors would do is they will use it as a perching ground. Okay. So what we like usually try to do in in such situation is try to make sure that these carcasses are not dumped, you know, uh, nearby any uh, such lines. And what could be done is because uh, it I have not seen much uh, collision with the power line as you said. It's it mostly happens when they perch, right? So what could be done is uh, the the connecting wire in the you know for example there's a the, these are two jumper poles. wire called yeah, yeah the jumper wire it could be ins insulated yeah. it, that could be done true true but then uh, you'll have to to have you know more stakeholders involved in get the electricity department involved in 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 such a process yeah. this okay. could be done right yeah. we'll move yeah. towards one last the last question. last question yeah okay uh, here, here. yes sir Achha, one by one here, yes sir Achha, you want to so, uh, first there is one suggestion, okay. so, you know, uh, throughout your presentation, uh, it's not clear what kind of methods you are, you know, adopted and what kind of uh, efforts you had taken. Right. So, this is a suggestion whenever right. you will okay. be presenting, so that gives, so that questions will be less. Right. Uh, second thing, you know, we are talking about mortality because of power lines. Right. Okay. Uh, so, detection of this, you know, uh, dead animals is very difficult because, you know, this, there are other scavengers, they can lift these dead birds. Uh, so, you know, how you are monitoring this area okay. to detect this mortality of birds due to power lines? Okay, so uh, what we've done is, uh, there are some people who, who, are, who are dumping there, these, these are called skinners, okay. So we've uh, get, got in touch with skinners uh, and what, what happens is, they will visit the area frequently, like they, they actually visit these areas every day. So any kind of mortality happens, they directly report back to us. And uh, like you have said that other scavengers might, you know, pick up the dead bird and uh, eat it, right? But what usually happens is there's a, so many dead uh, animals like cows and everything there, other scavengers don't indulge in, you know, eating these birds, you know, 
uh, it's easier for them to eat the flesh of uh, the dead, dead animal. So usually it stays there for a, for, for a few days. Okay. I think we will discuss uh, during okay. tea time. <laughs> All right. My uh, suggestion is कि डाइक्लोफेनिक सोडियम जो रहता है जो पेन किलर होता है अपन लाइव स्टॉक में यूज करते हैं hmm. जब स्केवेंजर्स उसको खाते हैं right. तो उसकी किडनी पर उसका लॉस होता है right. तो किडनी के डैमेज होने से ही वो बर्ड्स खत्म होता है right. तो यदि इस कंजर्वेशन प्रोग्राम में हम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एनिमल हस्बेंड्री के जो डॉक्टर्स रहते हैं जी. उनको इसमें जोड़ा जाए हुँ. क्योंकि अभी जो नए डॉक्टर्स आ रहे हैं उसमें डॉक्टर्स तो सब समझते हैं बट जो हमारे फील्ड ऑफिसर्स है एवीएफओस रहते हैं जो टेक्निकल इतने परफेक्ट नहीं रहते हैं या गौ सेवक है जो एक दवाई लेते हैं और इंजेक्शन लगा देते हैं जाके तो वो काफी कुछ लॉस करते हैं इन स्पाइट ऑफ कि वो बैंड है प्रतिबंधित दवाई है फिर भी उसको यूज करते हैं तो किस तरह से डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एनिमल हस्बेंड्री के जो हमारे फील्ड ऑफिसर से डॉक्टर से उनको जोड़ा जाए जिससे कि उनको भी अवेयर किया जाए कि ये इससे इतना लॉस होता है ताकि इस स्टेज पे कहीं उसको रोक सके हम लोग सो सर एक्चुअली वी हैव स्टार्टेड रीचिंग आउट टू द वेटनरी ऑफिसर्स अक्रॉस स्टेट्स अक्रॉस इंडिया uh every state has a database of the uh, veterinary officers in uh, working there okay so we we have uh, started to reach out to them and maybe in a few i think a couple of months or something we'll try to arrange uh, a, a meeting in this kind of setup where we can you know directly talk to them and we have online surveys and everything that's going on but uh, the problem uh, is not the veterinary officers but the chemists that are you know handing out the uh, ns aids so 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 uh, there there are not a, not a lot of people who are prescribing these ns aids because uh, it's it has been like out like last 15 years that uh, diclofenac is a threat so people are usually prescribing meloxicam as a drug but uh, when you go to a chemist shop and you ask ki meri gaye bimar hai and you like you know aap dawai de dijiye तो दे गिव यू डाइक्लोफेनाक एक पार्ट ये भी है दूसरा पार्ट ये भी है कि जो हमारे नौसेवकीय गौ सेवक है राइट जो ट्रीटमेंट करते हैं फील्ड में इनको कि हमने बस टेक करके लिए रखा हुआ है वो भी इलाज करने लग गए एग्जैक्टली ओके थैंक यू सो मच जनरलमैन प्लीज गिव इट अप फॉर सनी जोशी जी एंड आज शेयर श्री दिल शेर खान जी इसके बाद चाय का ब्रेक है तो चाय पे चर्चा हो ही सकती है वक्त की कमी हमारे पास अभी सर आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज स्टे है because i would like to invite dr elizabeth thomas ji assistant member secretary madhya pradesh state biodiversity board to please come forward and present a memento to our presenter and to our respected chair as a symbol of love and respect uh, from this uh, organization yes there it is memento to shri dilsher khan ji vulture conservationist madhya pradesh and a memento to uh, our presenter yes sunny joshi ji and i would request the chair uh, to pass on the conclusive remarks before we depart for the tea tea break so you can use that mic Thank you so much, gentlemen. So now uh, it's time for a tea break, 20 minutes in hand, and I hope to see all of you back in a similar way, right after 20 years, 20 minutes, <laughs> not not two decades. <laughs> Evolution will happen until then. check one to check 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 one to check check one to check audible at the back audible okay great so welcome back everyone good afternoon yes indeed a good afternoon and i request all of you to please be seated once again we are moving towards the third session sorry we are moving towards the technical session 
of the day two of this national conference on lesser known species of Madhya Pradesh. And this session is titled as Diversity of Scorpions in Madhya Pradesh. And as a presenter for this session, I invite Karna Chahunga Manchpe, Mr. Sudhir Kumar Jina Jigo. Zoda Talia Sunka Swad Karinge Ham. And as the chair, we are delighted to have the person Jinko Aap Kal Dek Chuke Hai, Sun Chuke Hai, Aaj Bhi Sun Chuke Hai, the one and only Mr. David Rajuji, naturalist from Kerala. Zoda Talia Sunka Bhi Swad Karinge. मैं आ, मैं डॉक्टर बकुल लाल जी से निवेदन करूंगा कि वो आगे आए और सैपलिंग के द्वारा हमारे प्रेजेंटर और हमारे चेयर का अभिवादन करें यस अच्छे डॉक्टर डेविड राजू तालियां होनी चाहिए प्लीज कम ऑन खाना खाने के बाद तो एनर्जी आ जाती है and our presenter, Sudhir Kumar Jina. Thank you so much, Dr. Bakullar Ji. And I will start this session before I will introduce you to my chair and my presenter. Mr. Sudhir Kumar Jina Ji is a project fellow in Zoological Survey of India Central Zone Regional Center, Jabalpur. And uh, he has been working on the project entitled Diversity of Scorpions in Madhya Pradesh with studies on ecology, biology and, and he has been associated with traditional knowledge about medically important species. He is pursuing his PhD from Ravinshaw University, Katak, Odisha. He has completed his MSc and MPhil from Central University of Odisha. Previously, he, wo he has worked on several projects in various institutions. His experiences include biodiversity inventory and assessment, ecological studies on cave fauna with special focus on invertebrates. Currently, he is working on taxonomy, biology and behavioral studies on scorpions. We are extremely happy to have Mr. Sudhir Kumar Jina with us. And once again, Dr. David Raju, uh, this time as chair, he has over 18 years of experience as a senior naturalist in southern and central India. He had always been interested in wildlife and with specific interest and expertise on multiple taxa like birds, mammals, butterflies, reptiles, amphibians and his first love. Anyone remembers his first love? Dragonflies, absolutely. He has worked at some of the leading wildlife lodges in India, currently working at Wayanad Wild a CGH Earth Experience Hotel in Kerala. He has also co-authored three books in which we have talked about yesterday. Dragonflies of Kerala, A Photographic Field Guide to Wildlife of Central India and Wildlife of South India. And uh, with that, Taliyo Sam Unka Swagat Karenge. And I would request the chair to please begin this session with the opening remarks. Good morning. Um, let me also clarify, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I, I'm not from a science background also. I've done my degree in English literature. I have nothing to do with science. It's all self-taught and whatever my great gurus or teachers taught me. <coughs> and um, today's uh, topic, uh, Sudhir is going to talk about uh, scorpions. I mean, it's a very exciting topic. Uh, I mean, whenever people talk about all these uh, different uh, uh, taxa, which actually uh, pretty exciting. Uh, I remember when uh, I actually look into a lo lot of smaller things, butterflies, dragonflies, even scorpions and all. We don't know much about it. Like uh, one of my friends was studying on scorpions. He had come to Pachmadi, then we went and looked for a particular scorpion called uh, Scorpiops Pachmadicus. Then we realized it's actually only found in Madhya Pradesh. Actually, Madhya Pradesh has a, an endemic uh, scorpion. I don't know, he more probably able to put more inputs on their distribution. Uh, there are some amazing other species like Lyochelis, Hot and Dota, then uh, what else? Um, Butho Scorpio. Uh, I think it's just looking deadly, a tiny black scorpion. So these are the things, that's the only thing we know about it. We don't know much about these scorpions. I think uh, uh, I don't want to take too much of time. I mean, let over to him. Um, 
Uh, I'm also pretty excited about uh, this topic. Thank you. Over to Gina. Thank you, Chair, for this nice introduction. And actually, I am uh, presenting this on behalf of, behalf of my supervisor. He couldn't come, so he told me last week that uh, you have to uh, present uh, this topic uh, in this seminar, sorry, conference. So uh, I don't, uh, I couldn't think of anything. So I prepared this uh, presentation on the basis of my studies that I, I have been doing in like last two years. So let's begin. So scorpions, uh, as I think all of you know, scorpions are tiny. Uh, uh, I think arachnids with a stinger on the tail. So uh, they are very primitive arachnids. Uh, like uh, their um, evolution, their origin date back to uh, uh, approximately 435 million years ago. And uh, they were one of the first group to uh, terrestrialize. So, and they are the fifth largest known vertebrate group, sorry, invertebrate group uh, in the world, yet uh, uh, like uh, there are being uh, more than 100 new scorpions being discovered every year. So th that number is increasing still. And uh, they are venomous and their uh, venom is uh, neurotoxic. So in some cases it is fatal, uh, like uh, there are around 25 species of scorpions found all over the world who can actually kill an adult human being. And uh, this, this is like uh, they glow in ultraviolet light because uh, their cuticle reflects due to presence of certain uh, chemicals. They look like that. So this is the most recent fossil discovered in USA uh, in 2020. So, this is the, um, uh, from this, uh, they, uh, they were able to uh, relate this to uh, Eurypterids, uh, which are called as water scorpions. So uh, the modern day scorpions are believed to be derived from the water scorpions. So uh, the morphology, scorpion body part is divided into uh, pedipal, carapace, mesozoma, metazoma. This is for information only. I'm not going to like get into technical things. Pedipalp, uh, just like crab, you have seen uh, they use their pedipal to like uh, uh, catch their prey, and sometimes uh, if you disturb them, they will catch your finger also. So carapace and uh, mesozoma, metazoma, metazoma, the tail. So uh, in pedipal, uh, you can see the picture, I think. So there are uh, the fingers, lower one is movable and upper one is immovable. And there are some, uh, I, I don't think you can see, uh, there are some uh, trichobothria or hair sensilla. So uh, these are uh, very sensitive to air vibrations and that's how they detect their prey. And uh, this is the closer look of carapace. The, uh, and here, here you have the median eyes one pair of median eyes and several pairs of lateral eyes. It depends on like species. And this is the ventral side. Ventral side, they have legs. Then uh, this is the closer look of uh, pectins, which is unique to scorpions only. They're, uh, and uh, they sense the ground by this. For, uh, they search, uh, sweep the uh, pectins like this two cents for pheromones and other things. Uh, so th this is the closer look of uh, stinger. And uh, different species have a different type of sting uh, stinger. So sexual dimorphism also uh, uh, there in many scorpions, like uh, presence of teeth in their pedipalp, and uh, bul uh, like bulbous uh, uh, manus and slender manus. Bulbous manus is generally uh, present in males because they, while mating, they grasp the female. And uh, body size also uh, uh, differs, like females are like uh, bulky and uh, males are slender. 
So in uh, even uh, pectin, num pectin uh, the pectins I showed you last in the last slide, uh, they have pectinal teeth, like complex structures, pectinal teeth. So they also vary in number in different species. And male and female also, they vary. So uh, scorpions are distributed all over the world, and uh, they are majorly found uh, in the subtropical region. And uh, their number decreases towards the poles. And uh, these, these are some examples of uh, scorpions found in extreme habitats, like Himalayas, the lower picture. Actually, we don't have a live picture of that species. So that species, uh, during winter, uh, uh, it, uh, in, uh, it uh, stays uh, below the um, ice. And when the uh, ice melts after some months, it again became, uh, becomes active. And uh, the upper one is from Alps, I think. Uh, so in extreme conditions, like uh, they thrive up to, uh, thrive in up to minus 35 degrees Celsius. So diversity till now, uh, th uh, there are 27, 33 species in, found, in all over the, uh, found all over the world, uh, out of uh, which 151 species are present in India and 24 species are present in Madhya Pradesh. Okay, so Madhya Pradesh, we have seven type locality, se uh, type locality of seven scorpion species. As uh, he mentioned, like uh, Pachmaricus uh, in Pachmadi, then Jabalpurensis in, from Jabalpur, that was described in 2007. And uh, um, Gwalior has two type locality, two species type localities. One is uh, Komsovithus and other one is Scorpionid, I'll show you later. And Bhopal has also one type locality, one species, that is Radianus, Radianus rigidulus. So this is Buthoscorpio he was talking about. Uh, so there are two species of Buthoscorpio present in Madhya Pradesh. One was described from uh, Madhya Pradesh only, Buthoscorpio indicus. So actually, we are not able to find that specimen till now. Uh, uh, because uh, in that paper, they have mentioned like, uh, uh, it is found between Jabalpur uh, and Khajuraho Road. So we don't know the exact type locality of this species. So we're still searching for it. Maybe DNA data will show like, uh, to differentiate. We don't know morphologically how different they are. So this is Janalakas uh, Biharensis. Uh, this is a first report from Madhya Pradesh, or from my work. Uh, we have found from four localities. And this one is also a first report from Madhya Pradesh. So these are, uh, this uh, Hotentota genus, it is actually very problematic species uh, because mo um, the uh, mostly uh, the uh, uh, human scorpion conflict includes this, uh, this genera. So this is Pakeuras, it was described uh, from Mandla. And this is Rugi scutis. It is found only in one location. I think you can see uh, there. Uh, there is a yellow circle there, and star marks are for Pakeurus. This is Hortentota jabalpurensis, and it is the m most widely distributed species in Madhya Pradesh. And uh, this thing is very painful. <laughs> this is Lyocellus, and. Uh, Lyocellus, uh, they may, uh, this kind of boros, elliptical boros, and uh, it is a boring species. So uh, I think, th I, sorry, I forgot to mention, uh, though, those uh, red lines, actually it is highly venomous, like uh, their uh, sting can be ver uh, very painful. But the yellow ones, uh, if they sting, uh, the pain, uh, pain lasts for some minutes or some hours only. But uh, those, uh, Highly venomous species, uh, those can last up to two days and even fatal for babies and uh, elders. So, uh, yeah, there is a story behind uh, this species. In uh, Madhav National Park, uh, near that uh, boat club, there is a guest house in the hillock, top of the hillock. And if you go uh, and uh, by, uh, see scorpions, uh, like such scorpions uh, by using UV light, you will see uh, there are more than 1,500 
large list there like uh, they are scattered everywhere you will uh, see the like uh, uh, the ground will glow <laughs> like stars it is so dense there so this is copy of pachmaricus and it uh, it was described in 1992 by dr bastavade so uh, jishal and uh, you people were uh, like uh, des uh, designated the new type in 2012 because there was no specimen uh and uh, have you been to reachgarh yeah reachgarh is a place where uh, like tourists go in the day time but in night time reachgarh walls are occupied by this species like they are very densely available in the reachgarh walls so this is uh, this was described from uh, gwalior only and we have found from two other localities and this is from uh, kanna this is the largest specimen uh, species found in india it can grow up to 184 mm okay so uh, where do where can we find scorpions so scorpions are of different habit uh, they are rock dwelling they are burrowing they are arboreal in last one uh, they uh, reside under rocks actually and ha uh, habit uh, i think uh, where there is prey you can find uh, scorpions mostly uh, like uh, forest human habitation and arboreal species are found in tree bark and you uh, may not find arboreal species in well littered area because uh, they are not fond of light so how do we uh, we search for scorpions scorpions are like uh, you have to if, if you are um, searching for them in day time then you have to like uh, lift the rocks and uh, uh, peel the bark of trees but in night time it's very easy you just have to use a uv light and uv light and just walk and you can see uh, you can easily spot a scorpion uh this picture that that is the normal light photo and this is the uv photo okay so coming to the uh, like uh, i will be covering uh, ecology biology so there uh, there has been very little information available on ecology biology and behavior of scorpions worldwide and indian scorpions have like there is a very little information so actually i try uh, we tried to uh, study their uh, population dynamics in a uh, area nearby jabalpur so we try tried to incorporate that uh, uh, mark capture recapture method so by using uh, some markers actually it was just a trial and it went for like four months only because uh, after that time they uh, tend to shed their skin so if they shed their skin the marks will be gone so we were able to uh, mark 132 indi individual and we recaptured only in 11 individual in that particular area so this study is like uh, we are still looking forward to continue this study actually then ecological role uh, if a person asks why we should <laughs> uh like conserve scorpions actually they are responsible for you can uh, see those point two points uh in the middle scorpions are responsible for almost uh, around 11% of the isopod population in israel uh, and uh, that one uh, the second one is from australia but we have no data in india for this so they predate on a variety of insects like uh, uh, grasshoppers a uh, cricket centipedes uh many things uh, which uh, uh, moves in front of them they catch and eat even vertebrates they eat uh, like geckos and small snakes also they can eat uh, and uh, especially my uh, mouse rats so i'll show you a video and they are prey to many animals like uh, uh, owls feed on them and uh, sat eublifaris satpurensis eublifaris eublifaris genus generally feeds on scorpions and uh, even saw scaled viper feeds on scorpions 
and and in patal court there is a like we don't have any pic, uh, picture but uh, uh, the monkeys in the plateau they uh, lift the rocks and eat scorpions we have that information still looking forward to investigate that okay feeding actually some uh, species they uh, uh, come out to open during the night time they are night hunters so uh, and um, they move like maybe 10 meters, 100 meters to uh, uh, feed. But some species, some burrowing species, they just stick their pedipulps out, hands out from their burrow and wait for a prey to pass. Then they uh, readily grasp that prey using, using that. And um, some, uh, how uh, actually uh, for larger prey, the smaller scorpions, uh, uh, like uh, they who have uh, the weak pedipulp or slender pedipulp, they use their venom to kill that prey, and still they uh, use a head-first eating strategy to manipulate that prey. Because uh, sometimes the prey, uh, big prey, they do not die easily. But in case of large scorpions, they do not uh, like they eat randomly. So. Also, they are highly cannibal. They can eat anything that moves. Actually, I said that. So, they eat on other species of scorpions, and same species also they eat each other. So, uh, there is a photo uh, that uh, that one. The one baby is eating another baby, actually from same mother. And here you can see uh, the mother is eating her baby. I'll. Uh, come to that part Nick, uh, later. Okay, this is the time lapse uh, of uh, uh, that uh, swami dummy, the largest scorpion. Actually, it was feeding on a mice. We gave that mice in our lab. So it fed on uh, that. Uh, like I started this uh, recording at 11 at night. It was uh, still going on till uh, 7, I think. Okay. Okay, and they also drink water like us, like uh, not like us by bottle. So <laughs> uh, they stick their pedipulp, or uh, they just lie down uh, in the open during the night time, and they collect dew, and they lick their pedipulp like this, and they drink water. And they actually need water. Many species need water for. Uh, Metamorphosis. And coming to the courtship and mating, it is a very complicated and time consuming process in scorpions. Like uh, we, uh, I used to uh, breed them in lab, uh, and uh, once I um, uh, like started, I mean, uh, tried to start, it, uh, start that courtship in uh, one uh, Hortentota double currencies, and the courtship actually went on for two days. And I was tired of them. <laughs> the, so there are many processes with how they uh, actually do the thing. And it is very uh, interesting in scorpions because they do a dance, mating dance. That is the ritual. So uh, when a uh, male approaches the female, it judders, like it shakes its body, whole body. Uh, if the female is willing, then it then grasps there. Uh, pedipulp. Then um, they sometimes they club their tail. I'll show you a video later. So the scorpion dance. The scorpion dance is also called uh, promenade dukes. It is a name given to. Like they uh, hold their hands and move forward and backward, just like uh, Western dance. So and and yeah, actually I'll show you. Uh, uh, they also sting during the uh, uh, mating process to subdue the female, actually to uh, lower the aggression in female because females are aggressive and uh, they tend to eat their mate. Okay, and uh, during this process, the uh, af like after this, uh, and it goes on for hours. 
So after this process, the male actually, uh, while dancing, it sweeps the floor for any uh, hard surface to lay the spermatophore. They do, do not mate directly. The uh, uh, mating is indirect. Actually, the, uh, ma what, uh, what uh, the male does, uh, it prepares a sperm packet and leaves it on the ground. Then it guides the female to sit on that sperm packet and take the sperm in. So uh, then pectin movement, by pectin movement, they search for solid grounds. Then uh, if the ground is uh, like soiled, then the male cleans it by uh, uh, moving uh, the legs also, the scrape. Uh, then they deposit the spermatophore and the, uh, they guide the female and then the uh, sperm transfer uh, occurs and female head stand. Actually, while uh, taking up the sperm from spermatophore, the female raises her head. Okay, then post mating escape, it is because, um, I, I just said, uh, they tend to each other, uh, eat each other after mating. So uh, generally, uh, uh, the largest, uh, larger mate uh, eats the smaller one. It uh, may not be like uh, male, uh, male is eaten by female only. Sometimes uh, male, uh, male also eats the female. So, oh, so this is the mating dance. Sir, bigger one is male actually, that uh, female was smaller. But uh, actually, uh, that is the age difference. This is clubbing. Actually, it was in a container, so it was not properly, actually, they couldn't perform that properly. And uh, there is another thing, while dancing also, they uh, uh, massage their mate with their chelicere, their mouth parts. Actually, it's like uh, uh, they kiss each other. Ja that is also to uh, like uh, uh, reduce the aggression in females. And uh, uh, this male actually ate the female after mating. Because uh, the female is smaller, it ate. And uh, I slept after it deposited the spermatophore, but I thought, uh, 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 like they will stay together, but <laughs> during, uh, when I woke up, the female was gone. <laughs> Next. Okay, th these are the previous, previous. Oh, oh these are the spermatophore. Uh, this is also a taxonomic, uh, uh, like key to different species. Like uh, different species have different types of spermatophores. And uh, there are broadly two types of uh, spermatophores. One, uh, uh, one is lamelliform and one is flagelliform. That one, uh, that one is flagelliform. They have a flagella like this. And this one is lamelliform. They uh, generally scorpionidae family have lam uh, fla uh, lamelliform and boothids have flagelliform. And coming to parturition, uh, the male, uh, when uh, after mating, the females uh, give, uh, give birth uh, like uh, after five months. So uh, while giving birth, what the female does, uh, it uh, raises the front legs and uh, forms a birth basket, like a basket like structure, this like structure. So uh, uh, that uh, babies can come out easily from the genital operculum. So, uh, here you can see uh, babies have come out and what uh, after coming out uh, they uh, stay inactive for some minutes then they start moving and climb up to their mother's back and they stay there for two minimum two days then they disperse so so there are two types of uh, actually embryonic development in uh, scorpions. 
One is uh, apoikogenic and uh, one is catechogenic. What is apoikogenic? Apoikogenic is uh, with a membrane. The babies are formed with a membrane, embryonic membrane, and uh, like uh, this, they born in they are born in groups. Like uh, three to four babies are born at a time, and they are encapsulated inside a single membrane. So after they come out of the mem uh, okay uh, then catechogenic catechogenic are uh, like they do not have a membrane they just uh, come out the uh, come out of the mother then uh, stay inactive for some time and they come out individually not in groups so uh, after uh, uh, breaking the membrane they look like this uh, you can uh, notice here the stinger is not fully developed like it is blunt and other appendages also. Then the mold. Then, uh, then the mold on the mother's back only. Okay, so, uh, someone was presenting yesterday, I think. He said, uh, if the mothers, uh, babies eat their mother. Actually, no, this is a misconception. This is a myth. And you can find many videos on this, short videos in uh, YouTube, but this is not correct. Actually, uh, what happens, uh, 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 these babies, actually their uh, cuticle is not hard and they do not glow uh, under UV light. You, if you see them, the first in star, they will not glow under UV light. So uh, why they climb on the mother's back? Because they depend on water for their molting, going to the next stage. So uh, the water evaporating from their mother's body, they uh, actually, um, what uh, they take the take up the water to develop into next thing. So this is uh, the first instar. Uh, then they have molted here. You can see the difference. I think the coloration difference and uh, the babies uh, also. You can see the stinger properly. This is a molted one. And larval orientation is also there. In uh, different species, uh, the babies tend to uh, like uh, stay organized in some species. Like uh, their head is uh, uh, in the same direction of their mother's head. And uh, like uh, there are uh, transverse uh, orientation, longitudinal orientation, and random orientation. So it dip, uh, varies species to, uh, from species to species. And okay, I think I skipped one or what? no, no. Yeah. So this is the molting process in uh, scorpions. Uh, this is very much necessary in arthropods, as you know, because uh, they uh, ha uh, have this uh, hard uh, cuticle layer on the outer side. So if they do not uh, molt, then they will die. So it uh, this process takes uh, up to seven to eight hours. First, uh, they come out of uh, the carapace breaks and they come out of that uh, uh, carapace uh, by pumping action actually. And this is the most vulnerable stage because they stay inactive for almost two days after that. And uh, it uh, comes out slowly, slowly, then it turns there to, uh, for the metasoma to come out, then uh, it it stays like this and they do not glow because the uh, cuticle takes time to harden uh, like uh, minimum one day. After one day, they start to glow a little bit. Then after two days, they glow completely. Uh, so this is the molting on the mother's back. Actually, first instar, they are molting. You can see this one, this one. This one coming out from the okay. Scorpions are not actually that social, but uh, in some species, like uh, in some borrowing species, they uh, live in a single borrow up to generations also. 
So uh, in MP, uh, like liochilists, I think it is social, but we do not have any proof till now. And some scopinidae are social, actually. They live, uh, the mother and the juveniles uh, stay together in a single borough. OK, defensive adaptations. Uh, if you have ever done, like, chased a scorpion, they will avoid it for some time, then they will take their stand and uh, they will raise their stinger. OK, so uh, some scorpions also make sound, like this one. It will uh, rub the uh, hairs of uh, chelicera to make a hissing sound. And uh, cryptic coloration, uh, you can uh, actually, uh, you cannot see some species by uh, naked eye. But they will be there, nearby you only, but you won't be able to see. I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, this is a video. OK, uh, can you spot the scorpion? Anyone? OK, by up. Oh, OK. Oh, he has played already. <laughs> so it is like that. This is very hard. Sometimes it, it is very hard to locate them with normal light. But with UV light, you can easily detect. OK, what is uh, scorpionism? Scorpionism is the man-human -scorp scorpion interaction, actually. So uh, in wo uh, all over the world, there are about 25 scorpions which are lethal to human. Others are, like from 27, 33 species, only 25 species are lethal to humans. And uh, others are, like, they can cause uh, mild to severe pain, but they are not lethal. But in case of juveniles, like uh, uh, below 10 years, and in case of uh, elders having chronic diseases, it can be fatal. And recently, one uh, girl was admitted into ICU uh, in Panvel, Mumbai, last month only. And there is a paper uh, from UP, Bansal et al., in 2015, I think. So uh, they have recorded from 2012 to 2014 210 people were admitted to ICU because of scorpion bites, I mean scorpion stings. So uh, why it is prevalent? Actually, because uh, during rainy season, you have seen, uh, you must have seen uh, that when the first rain comes, the scorpions come out, the, uh, come out of their border and uh, they roam randomly and uh, sometimes they enter houses also. So it is, uh, and people also, they do not take it seriously. What they do after scorpion sting, uh, they just go for local healers and they try home remedies. Sometimes that proves to be fatal. You can just go to doctor and, uh, and we actually, we have to tell them. And, uh, and uh, there is a myth uh, related to scorpion sting in MP, I think. So uh, what they think, uh, the local uh, villagers, actually, they think uh, when a scorpion stings, if it walks, like, if it walks more, then the pain will be more. Jitna jada chalta hai, utna jada pain hota hai, bolte hai, mujhe nahi pata, actually, uh, but some people in Jabalpur side also, they... Okay, what are the traits? Actually, scorpions are not treated as venomous animals, not at all. And uh, people like keeping them in their homes. Everyone, uh, I've seen in uh, Facebook uh, posts, so they will post, I have reared this, I have reared that, because uh, they do not come under any protection act in India. And, uh, uh, people also, uh, they watch some uh, random video in YouTube where uh, they learned like uh, scorpion is ven uh, so scorpion venom is uh, uh, like uh, more costlier. It, uh, the international price is in lakhs. So we want to culture scorpions. They approach, one person has approached me in uh, like August. So 
even scorpions are used for drug like uh, some people burn them and uh, smoke them and some people eat them some people use uh, live stings to get that feeling i think and in ayurvedic medicine they use scorpions in odisha they fry the scorpions in oil and use the oil for arthritis so there is a lot gap in uh, scorpions in india especially so these are the population biology community structure activity patterns behavioral ecology many things are not yet known so actually uh, more people should <laughs> like work on these things and these are some um, books if you want to refer actually the this is a very good nice book and uh, this is all over the, for all over the world this one is the only book available in india it was published in 1983 after that no book has published so and this one uh, was uh, uh, only for uh, this is only for uh, scorpionid family one family of scorpions they have uh, like uh, differentiated in south asia uh, south asian scorpions for one family only they have worked and uh, hortentota pacurus there are some sporadic breeding papers and behavior paper but not much actually thank you it is every time like post mating one is eaten by other no 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 that's why uh, they use the strategy post mating escape some uh, are able to escape some are trapped okay uh, so um, not matlab, have you gone through the uh, behavioral ecology of the scorpions that the jaise male hai and female so uh, they are made for a purpose to have kids then yeah. why they are eating no, someone no uh, uh, i'll sh uh, this is very uh, like uh, this is not new in arthropods actually they tend to eat the mate okay. uh, in uh, mantis they uh, the uh, female is uh, very much aggressive that uh, uh, while mating and the male has uh, developed a strategy uh to function their uh, rear body muscles even the head is gone still they transfer sperms continue transferring sperms while being eaten by female so it is maybe uh, we can come up with some different story with different species but it is not yet known it is not e at all easy to uh, do all these things in lab like uh, i used to all the videos and uh, things i used to uh, like uh, sleep during the day during the second lockdown and um, uh, stay awake uh, for the night for two months and uh, like i used to mate scorpions i used to give them food actually in uh, lab we used to give them uh, grasshoppers and uh, meal worms so it is not that easy actually and in field it is very rare we have only uh, like uh, twice seen uh, hortentota double pudens is only uh, like courtship not even full uh, mating uh, if there is no uh, questions i will just uh, first of all sudhir it was a fantastic presentation it is it is an eye opener <clears throat> i mean i know there's a lot of scientists sitting here uh, everyone take pride of their own species if uh, parvin talk you know skimmers is probably she'll try to portray skimmers as the best you know if somebody talks about smaller cats is okay that's my small cat are the best but yeah that's that's uh, we have you know, I, if i want to speak uh, dragon flies i'll try to make sure you know they evolved 300 million years ago you know i just realized you know it's one of the first species scorpion 430 Six million years ago, they they evolved. They are the first, probably one of the first creatures to step on the land. So that is itself, you know, it's like a classic. Rest of all, all of our species will follow that. And uh, another interesting thing, uh, there are over seven species uh, which is described from Madhya Pradesh. 
it is a type locality for uh, i don't think any other species uh, which can actually qualify uh, for that uh, probably if someone else study some moths or some mantis or something or ants it may be there but uh, otherwise i don't think any other species got seven species type localities i used to think only the now hot and dot jabal purensis and scorpiops pachmedicus these are the two species i knew it but yeah seven species itself it's a very interesting uh, thing uh, then uh, he spoke about cannibalism mating dance all those things was pretty exciting i think uh, uh, next time if you are doing this kind of uh, conference uh, please add this kind of more talks you know uh, scorpions lesser known spiders or uh, mantis ants i i think there's an uh, there's a termite is endemic to kana i think there's a species named after kana so these are the things which we don't know i mean we should all protect and uh, uh, it was fantastic talk uh, any any more questions please uh, hear this Uh, it is not a question, just a suggestion. Uh, this is a, uh, one of its first uh, kind of workshop, and we have so many experts here. Why don't you? Why don't we create a database of domain specialists? We have so many people, and uh, you people know others who are experts in different areas. Maybe we should have a, a national database of such uh, uh, scientists and researchers working in uh, domain-specific areas. So I think we. Uh, the uh, organization SNHC they can take a lead and create a database of such specialists that's a good suggestion but also you should be careful because I know this field pretty well there's a lot of internal politics also happen unless you choose the right people in between yeah. no especially be careful with the herpetology yeah that's <laughs> one thing I say you know it's, it can be pretty yeah yeah uh, hi Sudhir um, yeah. You mentioned that uh, if the male is larger, it consumes the female. If the female is larger, it consumes the male. So, what is the sort of sexual dimorphism? Uh, like, is it uh, varying, or uh, it can like? Yeah, it uh, varies in uh, some species, and uh, like significantly, and uh, it doesn't vary in some species. They look like like uh, size is similar. So, so in some species, you can say that the male will yeah, be larger. Yeah, but uh, but that's the problem. Uh, there has been no specific study on uh, like mo most of the scorpions. That's why the data is actually what I said based on observations. Actually, we do not know for every species. Maybe uh, if anyone studies in future, then they can enlighten that more. What's the average age of? Age varies from five to twenty-five years. Sir. तो आ, मैं सारनी से हूँ वहाँ पर हमने रिकॉर्ड किया था अभी बूथो स्कॉर्पियो भी रिकॉर्ड किया है और उसके अलावा ये जबलपुर एन एस है जो सेंटीपीट पे फीड कर रहा है इसके अलावा एक और स्कॉर्पियो था जो फ्रॉक को ईट कर रहा था ओके okay, हाँ। तो अगर आप लोग मतलब इस तरह का कुछ काम करें जैसा मैम ने सजेस्ट किया है तो इससे डेफिनेटली हमको काफ़ी ज़्यादा नया डाटा मिल हाँ, सकता है एंड इन इंडिया देर आर वन फिफ्टी वन स्पीसीज and there is only one group actively working on scorpions like not one if i include myself then two only <laughs> so there is one group uh, they are describing a species like more species they have described like uh, around 12 species i think in last two years from western guards only and other parts of the country no one is working no one is working and there are some species not some species many species which we do not have a single photograph like colored photograph we only have diagrams pencil diagrams okay thank you so much gentlemen any, any more questions yes yes any questions uh, i think that's it thank you so much sudhir kumar it was a fantastic uh, presentation okay please give them a huge round of applause Thanks to Sudhir ji and David ji for being the chair. I would like to invite Vikas ji to please come forward and present a memento. If he is not here, uh, he is there. Or uh, Dr. Sangeeta, I would request you to please come forward and present a memento 
to our presenter and the chair. कहना पड़ेगा मानना पड़ेगा बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग सेशन था ये जोरदार तालियां होनी चाहिए थैंक्स टू डेविड जी फॉर हिज इन बुट्स एंड ऑफ कोर्स सुधीर कुमार जीना जी अमेजिंग थैंक यू सो मच जेंटलमैन थैंक यू सो मच संगीता जी एंड आई हैड नो आइडिया दैट वेस्टर्न कल्चर इज हाईली इन्फ्लुएंस बाय स्कॉर्पियंस ओके ग्रेट मूविंग फॉरवर्ड द नेक्स्ट सेशन इज टाइटल्ड एज फर्दर इंसाइट इन टू द इकोलॉजी एंड कंजर्वेशन ऑफ इंडेंजर्ड फॉरेस्ट आउलेट इन मध्य प्रदेश एंड एज द रिसर्चर फॉर द सेशन आई एम हैप्पी टू इन्वाइट मिस्टर धीरज दास जी जोरदार तालीस से उनका स्वागत करेंगे हम एंड एज द चेयर We are delighted to have Dr. Sangeeta Rajgarhji. Unka bhi taaliyon ke saath hum swagat karenge. And मैं चाहूँगा विकास जी सामने आए और सैपलिंग के द्वारा हमारे प्रेजेंटर और हमारे चेयर का अभिनंदन करें स्वागत करें. और जब तक स्वागत होता है मैं आपको हमारे प्रेजेंटर्स और हमारे चेयर के बारे में अवगत करवाना चाहूँगा बताना चाहूँगा. Mr. Dheeraj Das Ji is a master's degree graduate in environmental biology and wildlife sciences from the Cotton University, Guwahati. He is an avid wildlife enthusiast and loves spending time in the forest. He is currently studying forest owlets in Madhya Pradesh with WRCS. Previously, he has also worked on Amur falcons in Nagaland and Manipur and also studied the avian diversity in Dipur Bil Ramsar site. For a brief period he has also worked on pikas in the trans himalayan landscape in ladakh his areas of interest includes habitat ecology and conservation ecology we are really happy to have dheeraj das ji with us zordar taliyon se unka swagat karenge hum and as the chair it's a pleasure for us to have uh, dr sangeeta rajgir ji she is the founder and member secretary of bhopal birds conservation society and state coordinator of indian birds conservation network of madhya pradesh she com she completed her phd in zoology in the year 2009 and her paper was titled as studies on avian biodiversity and habitat correlation in managed and unmanaged ecosystem of van vihar national park catchments in bhopal madhya pradesh Presently, she is doing research projects on avian species in Madhya Pradesh and Uttarakhand with her organization. Her research work and articles got published in more than 60 national and international journals and magazines. I think that calls for an applause. She is also a resource person for various government and non-government agencies in Madhya Pradesh for her work on sarus crane conservation in Bhoj wetland, which is recognized by many national and international organizations and the media as well. she has received many prestigious awards like wetland mitra and vasundhara samman for conservation of avian species and has also part participated in cop 13 as a community stakeholder held at amdabad in february 2020 we are extremely happy to have you with us and i would request you to please open the session uh, thank you uh, the dada uh, actually uh, here the, we have a uh, Uh, Dheeraj Das. So, uh, he is talking about forest owlet. Actually, owlet is not a chick. It's a completely adult uh, owl. And we have three species of owlet in uh, in our uh, MP and India. So, uh, one of them is uh, spotted owlet and uh, uh, jungle owlet. Both uh, two species are very commonly found in India, uh, in central India. And uh, only the forest owlet. is the only rediscovered species of the india a uh, forest owlet is a small sized uh, owlet it is it's a small sized uh, owlet and similar looks like is a small spotted owlet but uh, the, in a in a spotted uh, a forest owlet is no uh, spots in uh, crown and uh, it has a uh, uh, marking in the, in its wings and uh, in its tail and other uh, prominent characters with the forest owlet is the 
pale brown chest. It's a wood, and uh, once in 1873, it's a, uh, this outlet is uh, recognized, and uh, after 113, uh, sorry, it's uh, after the uh, 1884, by Alan Octavian Hume, is the founder member of uh, National Indian Congress. Is a uh, 1884 after it has not seen, and uh, considered that it is a extinct species. Basically, the uh, those species which, which have not any single individual found in a wild or in a captivity considered as an extinct species. So, uh, forest owlet is also considered as an extinct species in 1894. But after the 113 year, in 1977, uh, sorry, 1997, it was rediscovered by Pamela Ram Sinens. Uh, I spell not correctly, but uh, the Pamela and by an caller. And uh, after, uh, in, it's restricted in a central zone, central Indian zone, and uh, more than 500 individuals found in uh, central India and in uh, MP and uh, Maharashtra. So uh, Prachi Mehta and its team is working very well on the forest outlet and, uh, and its population monitoring and conservation efforts. So we have uh, Dheeraj. So I'm inviting Dheeraj to talking about the forest outlet and its work on. So before I start my talk, uh, I would like to greet uh, you all with a very good afternoon. Uh, and uh, after my greeting, I would like to say that uh, someone else is also waiting uh, to greet you. Okay, uh, so after this musical start, I would like to invite you all to my talk. And uh, for this talk, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, SNHC as well as uh, Madhya Pradesh State Biodiversity Board for giving us this opportunity to present our talk here. Uh, in this brief talk, I will be uh, discussing about the uh, efforts that we have been putting uh, in conserving the forest outlet in the uh, reserve forests of Madhya Pradesh. Uh, I am Dheeraj Das a research biologist in WRCS, currently working on the forest outlet conservation project uh, in the area of Khandwa in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, this is a brief detail about the stakeholders uh, involved in this project. We thank uh, 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 Madhya Pradesh State Biodiversity Board for supporting us in this project. Uh, we are also working uh, with uh, Madhya Pradesh uh, Forest Department, who is a uh, uh, Field collaboration, uh, who is a field collaboration partner with us. Uh, the principal scientists of our uh, of this project are Dr. Prachi Mehta and uh, Mr. Jayant Kulkarni. Uh, so let's start. Uh, what is the need of studying an owl? Can anyone say? Of course, they don't, don't say they are cute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me, let me, I'll, cl I'll cl clarify uh, with that. Uh, so yeah, do, uh, apart from cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But they are also the apex, uh, ap apex avian predators. Uh, one of the apex avian predators, I would say, because there are many more. Uh, then owl, they uh, mostly feed on rodents and other species of uh, inver invertebrates, such as grasshoppers and other insects. And these are mostly found as pests in our agricultural farms, and uh, these cause a lot of harm to uh, in the agricultural field. So these uh, apex predators help in uh, controlling the uh, population of pests, and thus uh, serve as a very eco serve a very uh, crucial ecological service to our community. 
Now, what is the need of studying forest owlet in particular? As because I've asked this question, the forest owlet you can see is very angry. So it is uh, endemic to the central India, as we all know. And then uh, it is also uh, listed as endangered in the IUCN red data because of its uh, very isolated population found only in the central India. Uh, also, it is, said, uh, it is categorized under uh, Schedule 1 in the uh, uh, WPA Act, Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Uh, more, uh, only less than 1,000 individuals are currently found in India. And that means all over the world because uh, it's endemic. So this makes, us, uh, this makes it very clear why, should, why we should uh, study the forest outlet. Uh, this slide, I don't think, uh, needs much uh, explanation because uh, Dr. Sangeeta had already said about this. Uh, it was first, dis uh, first identified uh, and uh, discovered in 1872. Uh, till 1884, only, four, uh, only six individuals are uh, found. Uh, and uh, mind you, one, uh, one information I would like to say is that in 1872, the first uh, specimen was found in uh, northern, uh, northern Madhya Pradesh, which is currently not in Madhya Pradesh, but in Chhattisgarh district. So uh, it, uh, for in, now st in today's standard, it, is, uh, it was found first for the first time in Chhattisgarh. Uh, in, uh, after uh, 1884, uh, till 1970, uh, there, was no, uh, there was no recording uh, of the forest outlet. So it was uh, declared by uh, Mr. Ripley, uh, Dr. Ripley, uh, as uh, possibly extinct, not as extinct, but possibly extinct. Uh, but in 1997, it made a, a return it made a dramatic comeback uh, when Dr. Pam Pamela Rasmussen and, Dr., uh, and Mr. Ben King uh, found two, uh, two specimens of uh, forest outlet in Maharashtra. Uh, so how has WRCS been involved in this project? WRCS uh, uh, started a short survey. Uh, it was, I couldn't say short, it's a two-year survey. Uh, between 2005 to 2007 in five states of uh, India, namely uh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, uh, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, and uh, uh, Gujarat. Uh, we found uh, in, this t uh, in, this, in this survey, we found uh, populations uh, f uh, in the three states, that is uh, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, and Gujarat, but uh, we did not find any population in uh, Chhattisgarh as well as Odisha. In this project, I would also like to say that uh, for the first time, uh, forest, uh, forest outlet was discovered in the Khandwa region of Madhya Pradesh. So in 2013, uh, for WRCS decided to take up the study of, uh, uh, of studying the long-term ecology of uh, forest outlet. So uh, from 2013 to 2017, the first phase lasted, which was, uh, uh, which was basically go aimed at studying the ecology of the forest outlet, studying its, uh, studying its diet, behavior, uh, uh, habitat selection, etc. In 2000, uh, also I would like to say that uh, between these uh, years, between 2013 to 2017, when we were working in the East Kalibit region of uh, Khandwa district in Madhya Pradesh, uh, we were also continuously looking out for owl population, forest owl population in other regions of Madhya Pradesh, such as uh, Baranpur district uh, in Betul region. Uh, and uh, in 2015, we were able to report for the first time uh, a population of forest outlet in Betul forests. In 2000, uh, uh, after 2017, uh, there was a break of three, four years. And then in 2000, uh, 2021, we started the second phase of the for, uh, forest outlet uh, project. In this uh, uh, project, the main uh, goal, the main goal was to continue understanding the habitat and the ecology of the forest outlet as well as to uh, as well as to implement the new conservation strategies that we had developed during the first phase of the uh, project from our observations forest outlet in madhya pradesh uh, this is a map uh, this is a map of the study area of us in madhya pradesh uh, so uh, the blue area that you can see in the bottom of the map, map is the Khandwa region as well, and uh, the green region that you can see is the Baranpur region. Uh, this is a zoomed out map. Uh, the, uh, the dark brown area is the Khandwa division, and 
to the right of the Khandwa division in the uh, east side, we have the East Kalibik region. This is the region where we are doing our intensive study, where uh, the population of this uh, place is the one which we are currently studying. Uh, what are the methods that we use for our studies? Uh, the most popular method that uh, is used uh, in this type of studies is uh, uh, grid-wise occupancy, and that, that is what we have used here. Uh, using uh, grid-wise occupancy uh, is not the only tool because uh, we can, owls are very elusive and very hard to find. Hence, uh, we have used the technique of call broadcasting so, uh, so as to find the owlet uh, in, uh, so as to find its presence in the uh, location. Uh, but we are also uh, ethically aware that we should not be using call broadcasting for a long period of time and uh, that disturbs the habitat uh, that disturbs the ecology of the for, uh, of any species so uh, we don't use call broad broadcasting for the second time like if we have identified its presence in a location we cannot use it every time to call it to us so we stop it then and there uh, we used uh, uh, some methods to use the demography uh, of the uh, to study the demography of the forest owlet. The uh, best method that we found was color banding. Uh, also, color banding happened in owls. Uh, in forest owlet, happened to be the first study where owls were banded in India. Uh, we also studied the nesting biology of the forest owlet using camera traps uh, and also visual scanning using uh, uh, hides where we would using hides. Uh, also, during the st uh, while studying the forest toilet, we have also been working uh, closely with the Madhya Pradesh, uh, Madhya Pradesh Forest Department as well as the local community and uh, uh, farmers uh, to create awareness about the forest toilet as well as uh, put effort in its conservation. Uh, conservation. Yeah. Uh, this is a grid-wise monitoring uh, of the forest toilet. The one in the left you can see is. Uh, a map where we can see, uh, as I said, we had uh, divided the area, uh, divided the area into grids. So in this map, we can see that uh, this shows the occupancy of a forest outlet in an area uh, uh, in different years, from 2014 to 2017. Here we can see that in some uh, of the uh, square, uh, in some of the grids, there are no forest outlets at all found in all throughout the four years. But in some uh, of the grids, we can see that. Uh, uh, they have been found every year uh, in the same location. Uh, the other, uh, so this led us to uh, study why, what, what, what uh, affects the, uh, what in, like, uh, what promotes the selection of a habitat uh, by the forest outlet uh, to stay in it. So uh, we compared the habitat, uh, habitat uh, demographics and the variables uh, in different uh, grids, and then we found that. Uh, there are some factors which uh, are very crucial for the forest owlet to uh, take it take the area as a habitat the map on the right uh, shows here which, which button is that the uh, this map uh, in here we can see uh, this is a representation of uh, uh, it's a compare it shows the probability of an area being uh, to be selected by the forest owlet as its habitat uh, uh, the the, squ the squares that you can see in dark blue have a high probability that the area will be selected by the forest owlet for its uh, dwelling. Uh, but the ones that you can see in white, they have a very low chance that the forest owlet will be taking up this area and will ever be found there. Uh, this is a typical habitat of the forest owlet. Uh, from our studies, we have found that it prefers a medium density teak forests uh, that should have, uh, what is it? That should be on the edge of the for edge of the agricultural lands, such as uh, uh, it doesn't want its food, its kitchen and its bedroom to be very far. It doesn't like that. So the other pres uh, the other factor is that the forest, even if it's uh, near to the agricultural land, it wants uh, cavities in the f uh, forest trees because uh, it is a cavity dwelling uh, bird. These are two typical habitats of the forest owlet. Uh, you can see in the top, the picture on the top is a medium density teak forest. Uh, these are the places where they would be like nesting or roosting. Uh, these trees must have uh, cavities so that they can make the nest there. Uh, the picture below uh, is a typical uh, kind of area where we will find uh, 
the forest owlet because uh, as you can see in the right there is a for, uh, agricultural far farm uh, on the left uh, it's a farm uh, it's a forest this uh, are various maps which shows the probability of uh, which shows the uh, variables uh, on which the habitat selection of the forest owlet is dependent Uh, during the study, we also made a diet analysis of the forest owlet because uh, that is one uh, thing that uh, that uh, that it has to compete with uh, with other owls that it lives in sympatry with. So uh, during the study, uh, we used palate analysis and uh, to compare the diets of it, uh, the diet of the forest owlet with the other owls, we used uh, uh, we did palate analysis between three sympatry owls that is a forest owlet. Uh, spotted owlet and jungle owlet and found that uh, forest owlet mostly prefers uh, large size mammals in sense rodents uh, uh, whereas uh, the jungle owlet preferred uh, yeah for the forest owlet prefers mostly mammals as well as snakes as well as uh, insects uh, but mostly mammals but in uh, jungle owlet the most preferred meat uh, was uh, for insects whereas it was also uh, having some amount of small sized mammal, mammals and also uh, some reptiles but the spotted owlet it usually preferred large, uh, small sized mammals as well as invertebrates uh, we also uh, did, uh, checked the variables that are uh, dependent on uh, uh, that the forest owlet and the other owlets are dependent on uh, so so we found that there are uh, there is very site selection fidelity between the three species of owls and uh, only specific areas are inhabited by them so to to study the demography of the forest owlet uh, the uh, the method we used was uh, color banding of owls here we can see dr prachi mehta color banding an owl uh, in the second image uh, we can see dr jayant jayant kulkarni and mr ali hussain posing with a owlet there uh this color banding technique uh, has been very useful to us we can say uh, because it uh, it is a very uh, useful technique to uh, study an a species using uh, mark and recapture technique uh in the uh, top 3 images we can see the visual representation of uh, recaptured birds we do not have to physically recapture the bird uh, to identify it later in this uh, in this stage and uh, it just makes it easier for us as well as the bird uh in the image below we can see uh, the movement of uh, forest owlet that we had tracked uh, using for, uh, using mark and recapture uh, in the using the color banding technique uh, one image i would like to say here we can see that uh, in 229 uh, the grid number 229 the owlet was seen to be moving from here to uh, grid 2232 uh, this two grids are almost 6 kilometers apart uh, but uh, I would also like to say that from our study, we have found that the home range of a forest owlet is not more than one square kilometer. But uh, sometimes we can see that an owl moves even six kilometers apart. So this was possible only because of color banding. These are some visual re recaptures of uh, marked owls. Uh, also, uh, this is very uh, mark and recapture technique has been useful in studying the individual in a a studying a specific individual uh, focal species we say uh, here we can see uh, the map the picture in the left uh, the bird has a green band in her feet uh, one of the i think uh, we are not sure sorry uh, there is one bird that we have found in uh, in in a place called jinjiri uh, that was tagged in 2013 and it has been uh, roosting in the same place for last uh, 10 years so uh, this has been possible because of the uh, uh, color banding otherwise we would have not known if uh, the owl was owl was replaced or if the nest cavity was replaced Uh, now let let's come to the threats of the uh, forest the forest owlet. Now the first of all that I would say I would like to say is that since yesterday's start, I think up till this talk, uh, this talk as well as in previous talks to come, we have been hearing one threat that is faced by all the species is habitat loss, and forest owlet is no exception. 
uh, we have been facing uh, habitat loss for the forest owlet due to various reasons such as uh, cutting of uh, trees by the villagers as well as felling of trees, se selective felling of trees uh, in coop, coop areas by the forest department. Uh, then there are various other reasons such as, uh, such as collection of uh, uh, fuel wood from, uh, from the forest areas by these villagers. There is cattle grazing. Uh, which also creates a lot of disturbance in the area. One other problem that uh, arises due to cattle grazing is that uh, the forest uh, does not get, get enough time to, get, uh, to regenerate. This causes the uh, food uh, supply to be uh, decreased uh, for the rodents and all, thus decreasing, decreasing the prey database. Another reason is forest fire. And uh, during the uh, months from February to April, uh, people in Madhya Pradesh uh, go to the forest to collect mahua flowers as well as tendu leaves. Uh, for this, uh, they, what they used to do is they will burn the forest floor uh, and after the forest is burned, uh, they, the, the floor will become black. Uh, so this makes it easier for them to collect the yellow colored flowers. Uh, so uh, in this process, a fire, if uh, misses out and goes uncontrolled, uh, we all know what a fire can do in a jungle when it is not controlled. This is another picture of a aftermath of a fire. Uh, then trade in owls. This has been a very uh, interesting topic because uh, we know that uh, trade uh, in speci especially superstitious uh, beliefs, believed birds uh, and other animals is uh, a very serious issue. Owls also uh, in some regions possess a bad omen and that's why uh, they are one of the most uh, traded as well as poached birds. This is one issue which cannot be controlled by us. Of course, this is a brownfish owl that is at least four to five times larger than a forest owlet and uh, the forest owlet being only like 20 centimeters in, uh, from head to tail is like a very small prey for this large raptor. This is also an eagle owl, which is also about three to four times larger than a, a forest owlet and easy, easy predator. This is a, this is a very uh, difficult situation. But yeah, uh, less interference in this is le is the better one, I think. Now, what is our uh, role in uh, this project? So, uh, in this project, uh, in the second phase, basically, we have been training students. Uh, in uh, taking up owl research as a, a means so that they can, uh, in helping them learn more about owl research. Uh, we have also been uh, uh, working closely with the Madhya Pradesh Forest Department in helping them uh, uh, plan their conservation guideline uh, models uh, for the reserve forest. We have also been uh, helping them uh, uh, upskill themselves in uh, owl identification as well as owl conservation methods. We have also been generating awareness among the local people, uh, setting up owl purchase. For that, we have been uh, closing, uh, working in close collaboration with the forest, uh, with the uh, farmers. Uh, we have we have also introduced uh, fuel efficient chulhas into the villages, which are uh, located in the fringe areas. We are also introducing a handicraft, uh, handicraft, uh, in uh, as a livelihood for the women. So uh, these are some of the uh, things we have done, such as eight MSc students were, uh, were able to publish their uh, master's dissertation. Uh, there were 10 publications that uh, have been published till now. Uh, we have also published uh, this, uh, the picture here. This is uh, the cover uh, page of a manual that we have uh, made on studying the owl diets, how to analyze the pellets that we collect from a owl. This can give, uh, this is a very easy read and anybody uh, can take a uh, look at this book and just uh, uh, study the diet of the owl. Not just owl, but any raptor, we can say. These are some of the popular talks that Prachi Mehta had given all around. Uh, and these uh, definitely help in uh, creating awareness among the local people. 
for the conservation guidelines uh, planning with the forest department, we had uh, proposed the idea of uh, leaving out the cavity, uh, cavity bearing trees uh, in the forest uh, area because cavities not only are used by forest owls but many other species which dwell in ca cavities. So these uh, these trees can be left out from the uh, felling areas and uh, help in conservation of a species. So in that, uh, we can see here, can we go to the last? Uh, yeah, uh, we had uh, proposed that we could mark the trees. Uh, we can see in the, the tree marked in red, it has two bands, we can see. It is a red band as well as a green band. The green band is put by us to show that this tree has a, a cavity and should not be felled. Whereas the red uh, mark, I guess the forest department people will obviously know. But uh, for the others, the red, red mark indicates this that uh, this tree was about to be felled in the following year. But because it has a cavity, we, we marked it in, uh, in green. We have also been taking up uh, awareness programs for the forest department. Uh, this is a picture of Dr. Prachi Mehta taking an awareness camp in East Kalibit region. Uh, we have also been working with uh, the schools as well as the local people uh, to spread awareness about the conservation of owl. Uh, this is me there with the school students. Uh, these are some of the pictures where uh, we have been uh, working in the field with the forest department uh, to, uh, to help them, uh, to upskill them in identifying an uh, owl or an owl habitat in the, uh, in the field so that they can uh, readily, uh, so when they, even when they patrol in the forest, they can uh, easily identify owls and their habitats. Uh, introduction of Chulhas has been a pilot program. It is uh, introduced in a very small scale currently, but uh, uh, this has proven to be very effective because these chulhas are very fuel efficient. Uh, from our uh, database, we have found that uh, uh, these are almost 50% fuel efficient as well as faster uh, in, uh, they take le less time to cook the food. Hence, uh, the forest women, uh, the village women, they don't have to go to the forest every time when they, uh, like at least uh, this reduces the time they spend in the forest for uh, collection of fuel. We have been uh, training women in handicraft programs. Uh, so we can see here uh, that the women are trained and uh, they are happy making uh, forest owlet uh, as well as other owl and elephant themed uh, uh, handicrafts. These uh, items are uh, marketed through our uh, network and uh, then the uh, money generated is again diverted back, back to them uh, because uh, as an incentive like uh, because they have uh, partner uh, helped us in our conservation effort. We have also uh, s taken up this step where uh, we set up posters about owl uh, conservation as well as awareness. As well as, well as we have also taken uh, put some pictures in them about uh, roadkill safety because uh, we have also seen that owls and other mammals also are found uh, in roadkills a lot. These are some of the global recognitions that Mich Ms. Uh, Dr. Prachi had uh, achieved. Uh, so with this, I would like to conclude. But uh, before conclusion, I would like to show you uh, a movie that we had also made for the general public to spread our, uh, to spread our idea among the general public and uh, help create awareness. are mysterious creatures. They are on the move when all other birds are asleep. They are the hunters of the night. Owls come in every shape, size and expression. They are highly specialized for the unique lifestyle that they have chosen. This is the School of Owl series. You are watching the first episode, Food for Thought. With their sharp vision and strong talons, no prey can escape the owl's clutches. 
Most owls hunt at night, but there are some exceptions. The endangered forest owlet is one such diurnal owl that has carved a niche for itself in the daytime. Have you ever wondered what the owl eats? Small owls feed on a variety of small prey. Mice, shrews and birds form their favorite food. This one is seen savoring a frog. This brownfish owl is even snacking on a snake. Owls feed on their prey whole and the undigested parts are regurgitated in the form of a pellet. Pellets are a treasure of information about the food habits of owls. Our research showed that each owl species has specialized in a specific range of prey. By sharing their prey resources wisely, all owl species live in the same locality without competing with one another. Mice are a favorite of the owls, but insects and mice are major pests for the farmer. By feeding on mice, owls protect the crops. That is why owls are true friends of the farmer. To get rid of mice, farmers resort to rodenticides. But these can also end up harming the owls when they feed on the poison prey. A better way to control mice is putting up owl perches in the fields. It is the natural and eco-friendly solution to pests. This has been our first glimpse into the life of the owl. Before we leave, here's some food for thought. An owl's ode to Robert Frost. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and mice to eat before I sleep, and mice to eat before I sleep. We hope you liked this first episode. Stay tuned for more. So uh, with that, I uh, grant my thanks and uh, hope you like the talk. Uh. Uh, very well presentation, Adhiraj. And indeed, the, the Prachi Mehta and her team is, did a very splendid work on Forest Owlet. And I have one question. At, uh, you said that 2015 you started your work. No, so, 13. Okay. So, uh, what was the population in at uh, you were starting your work in that uh, 2013? Uh, during that time, uh, I was not here, but uh, uh, it is not possible to say the exact population of a species in an area because we cannot track every one of them. But during that time, we had. Uh, uh, color banded 49 birds, so we are sure that there are 49 at least, uh, but we cannot say the exact population over that. What, what is the current population? Current population, we are uh, finding one color banded bird uh, till now, uh, but uh, apart from that, we are closely monitoring uh, 15 birds, uh, of which uh, five are pairs currently, and yesterday only I uh, got on call to know that we have like found locations of two more owls. So. No, no, in, only in East Kalibit. Hmm? East Kalibit of Madhya Pradesh. Again, we have uh, forest outlets in West Kalibit also. Uh, we have in Aulia Range also. Uh, then again, in from apart from Khandwa, we have forest outlets in ba Barhanpur as well as in Betul also. But we are studying in East Kalibit only, currently. Yeah. And uh, is. And habitat destruction is the only reason for uh, uh, declining the population of forest owlet or the extinction, about the extinction of forest owlet. So, uh, uh, what uh, age required by forest owlet to nesting of this? What is the age, age of tree? Uh, uh, there is no particular age of tree, I would say, uh, but they have specific uh, requirements such as the cavity, the cavity selection of the uh, for its nesting, that that is what basically matters. Uh, as and when the cavi cavity is formed in a tree, it's usually formed in mature trees. So, especially uh, this is one another reason that uh, they they are in a threat because uh, uh, mature trees only are, yeah. 
and only mature trees will have cavities, not young trees. So uh, for uh, the tree felling uh, in this region are also happening not of the uh, young trees, but also of only of mature trees. So it is, it is coinciding, like uh, the trees that are being uh, at the threat of being cut are also the uh, cavity bearing trees and they are at threat. Yeah, I had a question, sorry. Uh, I was asking about uh, competition for nest holes. Is there a competition for nest holes with the other similar sized outlets or other, um, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, of course there is a, a competition for nest, uh, but uh, we have not seen, uh, documented it in exact look, uh, in exactly. But uh, we have seen that there is competition for nest uh, in the forest toilet with squirrels as well as parakeets. So there, there is competition with these species too. So uh, yeah, we, we can definitely say that there is competition. How, how about uh, competition for other things uh, amongst, uh, you know, like the jungle outlet and the spotted outlet? Uh, yeah, uh, in I, only for I nest selection. The larger owls are obviously predating, you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you're saying only for uh, nest selection or for other? Yeah, for nest selection, if we see that, uh, uh, then forest outlet is not in very much competition with the uh, jungle outlet and the spotted outlet. And the other owls, uh, which are larger than these two species, will ob obviously take up uh, cavities which are larger. But uh, in, in terms of these species, there is not much competition. But for food, uh, they, they have competition. And uh, still, for that also, we had conducted the, uh, the study where I uh, showed that uh, forest outlet diet mostly consists of larger mammals, whereas jungle outlet and the for, uh, spotted owlet mostly take smaller size mammals. Uh, and in insects also, a uh, jungle owlet mostly feed on uh, insects, uh, less on uh, rodents. Yeah, there is a niche separation there. So, uh, Dheeraj, I wanted to uh, make a comment. You say you did occupancy surveys. Yeah. But those are not really occupancy surveys. What you did are presence absence surveys. Yeah, because uh, occupancy, you need a lot of covariates. You need to estimate the psi value. And uh, what you did was you did it grid-wise, but that's not occupancy. Uh, so during that time, I was not there. Because it's if you call it occupancy. Uh, I'm not sure about that because I was not in uh, okay. that time. Uh, also, I don't know what, the va what are the variables that had they had taken exactly at that time and what are the uh, models they had put uh, to make that, gra uh, that okay. map. Yeah. Grid size and on what basis you have selected the size of grid? Uh, the grid size is two by two square kilometers. Uh, these are again uh, divided into 500 square meters. Uh, so uh, the method we use is that uh, in one grid there will be f uh, there will be 16 subgrids. So if one subgrid has a popul has a, a presence of a forest outlet, then we consider that the two square kilometer proper grid has the presence of a forest outlet. Uh, that is East Kalvik, whole East Kalvik forest is put in grid. Uh, uh, I don't know the reference that they have taken for that, uh, but also, uh, yeah, uh, the the habitat range, uh, the home range of a forest outlet depend is like m merely one square kilometer. So there is no, no, not much point in taking a very large area or a very small area. Yeah, I think Dheeraj, uh, there's a lot of people, students sitting here. Probably you can tell the story of how they rediscover this owl. It's a fascinating story in Indian taxonomy. How Pamela and all Palm and Ben King discovered. How somebody in a Maynard Sagan actually uh, fooled everyone. I think after everyone's answer, that is a fascinating story. I think I usually tell that people, isn't it? Right? You'll agree with it. It's a fun of the. Fa Should I take? No, exactly. I'm not very. Uh, my you, do you know? Uh, no, I. Uh, I don't know much. Why don't you tell? It? Yeah. So, uh, this is actually a owl discovered. I think 1800. Uh, so a lot of people tried to find it. This owl. Uh, but what was happened, there's a guy who used to work in India as a spy. 
he used to steal the museum specimens and he used to uh, remove all the stitching and do his own stitching and put it in a different place, made sure, okay, I collected this owl from Gujarat. So the last collection is from Gujarat. So people thought, you know, everyone went to Gujarat to look for that particular area because that is the last sighted owl. Then everybody was trying to rediscover this bird. Nobody was able to find it for 120 years. So then when uh, uh, Ms. Pamela Rasmus and Palm Rasmus and Ben King, when Palm looked at, uh, when she was writing her book on uh, birds of Southeast Asia, so she looked at the specimen, she realized the stitching was wrong, not the original one, it is actually, then she went and uh, checked the guy, I think its name was Maynard Sagan from uh, Germany. He was a British spy who was living in India. So he used to steal different museum specimens, you know, he wanted to prove that okay, I was here. So instead of, he taken this specimen from uh, this particular museum, and he labeled it, okay, I collected this specimen from uh, Gujarat. So later he checked the specimen and the, how the stitching was wrong, he realized he was actually fooling us. Then they went to that place, the original description, uh, he, uh, she and uh, Ben King, uh, when they went in, they, they found this owl, uh, two owls. I think that was the rediscovery. So it is actually a fascinating story how people fooled us for almost 100, and 100 years, you know, just to wrong information on this particular owl. Uh, that's a forest owl in the story. Yeah, that's also that the is one issue. People were trying to find, because it's an owl, everybody thought it's a yeah. night species. Yeah. This, this owl is actually species, active yeah. in the daytime. Yeah, and the yeah. other species actually rediscovered after a long time. Jadam's Corsa, again, it's gone missing. Yeah. That one uh, is a Corsa, like a. Like Indian Corsa. Yeah. So we have been looking at that for during the days, and you will be discovered at night. Again, it is gone missing. So two species actually rediscovered in India. Yeah. Can I just make one comment before the next question, please? So uh, uh, the Salamali Center for Ornithology and Natural History, SACON, we, along with all the stakeholders, including the Madhya Pradesh Forest Department, Maharashtra Forest Department, Gujarat Forest Department, Prachi Mehta's team and a lot of other NGOs, we actually drafted the Forest Owlet Conservation Action Plan for India, including Madhya Pradesh. Mm -hmm. The problem is, it's now stuck at the ministry. So one of you can please push and get it through at Delhi. At Delhi. In the wetlands division. <laughs> no, but this actually has all the inputs from each forest department for policy. I, we can't release it unless it's cleared from there. Yeah. Okay. No, I, uh, actually the draft, was un until it's cleared, you know, <laughs> I can't release it. Uh, so, you know, out of this entire population, so how many of them are, you know, using deep forest area, how many of them are using fringes, and how many are in, you know, non-protected areas? Non? Non-protected area. So, is okay. there any sighting in non-protected area? This uh, East Kalibit region is a non-protected area. It's a reserve forest. So, all these birds are in non-protected area. So, uh, we have a viable population in a protected area also, but uh, in Melghat, that's in Maharashtra. Uh, in Madhya Pradesh, it is in reserve forest. So, we are uh, aimed towards uh, conserving the reserve forest and the population of the forest toilet in the reserve forest. Found in uh, deep forest or only fringes? Uh, they are mostly found in fringes. Uh, one phenomenon that we had uh, observed is that uh, they, if they are uh, found in a uh, where they are, where they have a nest. Uh, if uh, nearby to that area there is logging or deforestation, especially mass kill uh, happens in logging only, coke felling and all. So uh, during that time, if the area is logged, uh, that area uh, is again uh, is is having some chances that the forest outlet will occupy that area after like at least four to six years when there is no disturbances after that. Because when there is logging happening in a forest, that time there is a lot of di disturbance and then uh, the bird tends to go away. But after four to six years, they again tend to occupy that area. Can we suggest logging? <laughs> no. Of course, uh, uh, we cannot suggest that. <laughs> so most of the pictures, uh, the bird is actually sitting on a tree tree. Yeah, yeah. They are mostly found in a tea, 
teak dominant teak dominant forest yeah yeah dry right. yeah. so i was curious to know about the sms yeah. program give the mic to the stakeholders please give the mic to the uh, where you sensitize the stakeholders now because you talked of superstition and ominous things about uh, this outlet so it's really hard to convince the stakeholder stakeholders because the story goes around across india yeah so if you could just like uh, give us a uh, example if you could like how you sensitize those uh, stakeholders about the superstitions etc uh we generally take up awareness camps in schools so uh, we uh, uh, we cannot of course uh, show them in the field but uh, we take awareness camps in schools uh, and putting this idea of uh, non superstitious beliefs uh, into the minds of young uh, people will help uh, at, if not in the current day but it will help uh, uh, change the idea about the superstitious uh, beliefs in the future so that's why uh, we are doing mostly it in the schools इस प्रेजेंटेशन की कोई स्पीसीज तो क्रिटिकली इंडेंजर्ड से इंडेंजर्ड हुई है हाँ, हाँ, बहुत है। तो माय क्वेश्चन इज कि कोई ह्यूमन इंटरवेंशन हुआ है जिसकी वजह से स्पीसीज का डाउन लिस्ट हुआ है या अपने से ही ये बढ़ रही है स्टडी करना इज वन थिंग बट डू वी डन एनीथिंग और इट्स क्रेडिट डिस्कवर हुई तो और ज्यादा सर्वे होते गए तो दिखती गई so that what is yeah that that could be a reason because uh, jab se uh, 2013 se we have been doing survey every year so this year also we have done survey in barhanpur as well as uh, khandwa division six ranges of khandwa division as well as two ranges of khandwa uh, of barhanpur division betul is still pending we are uh, about to go in survey in betul division as well so jaise uh, jaise uh, survey hote jayenge more uh, populations will come into display as well as uh, i think there is hu human uh, uh, effort as well because uh, without hum human effort uh, and matlab at least deforestation pehle se thoda kam hota hai limit ka limit limit lag jata hai so that also helps i guess uh, can oh. i uh, can, can i just say ja underestimation tha shayad surveys ho rahe to hum zyada dhoond paaye i think as yeah, yeah that that ha huh, if we survey more then i guess we can find them more can i can i just add to that actually it is because of new populations been found in the dang forest by another group okay there were uh, actually birders who found population in dang forest there's one population found in daman and diu and uh, even in maharashtra and tansa and uh, near nashik harsul so basically the area of uh, extent of occurrence increased a lot and that's why they were down listed but it has to be looked into greater detail right now i don't think the populations have increased because of human inter interventions uh, i just thank you uh, we have a lot of talk about the forest outlet and uh, i have some suggestions for you dheeraj that uh, you have to uh, your team have to increase the public participation to change their perception about the forest outlet and uh, and other thing is that uh, why don't you adopt the, the artificial nesting for the forest outlet okay uh, and uh, there is a need to protect the area so you have to try for that the you near know, the area should be protected and her so so thank you very much and uh, very well done thank you so much to our chair and presenter i would request you to please stay there i would like to request uh, dr elizabeth thomas ji to please uh, come forward and present a memento to our uh, chair there it is to our chair a memento a symbol of love and respect from our side and to our presenter mr dheeraj das for showing us what a group of owls a school of owls a parliament looks like thank you so much ma'am and thank you so much dheeraj for being there amazing session absolutely because you see even in when we talk about mythologies owls have a significance in greek mythology they are considered to be a symbol of wisdom in indian mythology or the hindu mythology it is the vehicle vahan of lakshmi ji and kai jagah aul ko pooja bhi jata hai so great wonderful session uh, for now we'll have a quick lunch break but after the lunch break we'll be witnessing the session issues in 
Caracal conversation, conservation, sorry, conservation, present status, and how to revive. Dr. Randeep Singh Ji will be presenting us with this topic. And uh, this will be chaired by uh, respected R. Srinivasa Murthy Ji. So, uh, lunch break for now. We'll depart for lunch. Umid hai. Lunch ke baad thode. Aur behedreen josh ke saath aap sab wapis aayenge. And hum aadhe ghante baad, half an hour baad, yahin pe milenge. Thank you so much everyone. About the presenter, let me tell you. Dr. Randeep Singh is currently working as an assistant professor in Amity University of Forestry and Wildlife, Uttar Pradesh, Noida. He did his PhD degree in wildlife ecology from Wildlife Institute of India, Dehradun. Dr. Singh has been actively involved in research and mainly focused on carnivore ecology, natural resource management and biodiversity conservation. During his PhD research work with Wildlife Institute of India, he has refined the non-invasive methods used for population estimation of tigers and quantified the impact of spatial temporal variation in habitat use patterns and the habitat suitability analysis of tiger. After his PhD, he was actively involved in assessing forest change detection after an inter interval of five-year period and also gained experience for using high-resolution satellite data in preparing 1 is to 2500 scale for all the biosphere reserves of India located in distinct biographical zones of the country during his post-doctoral work. We are thrilled to have you, sir. Please, Taliyo Sunka Swad Karenge Ham. As the chair, we are delighted to have Sri S. Sri R. Srinivasa Murthy Ji. He is an IFS retired officer and has served as divisional forest officer in production, territorial and wildlife fields. As the field director of Panna Tiger Reserve, he was the team leader that revived the Panna Tiger from 0 to 32. I think that calls for an applause. He also received RBS Earth Hero Award and Madhya Pradesh Gaurav Samman for his exemplary contributions. And he was also selected for CM Excellence Award in 2016. So it's an honor for us to have you as a chair with us. I would request you to please ignite the session. <clears throat> so good afternoon to everybody. <clears throat> I am here as a chair by default. <laughs> so, my request is that Randeep Singh Sahib chair karna tha as per the matlab, original schedule. I think he will uh, conduct the session uh, from, both, from myself as well as himself. Otherwise, I can only add some general knowledge about yesterday. Already we have discussed those things. But still, Caracal is an important issue uh, that need to be really agitated and then we, we need to get back Caracal wherever we are losing it or we have already lost it. So, Chuki, Shomita is the right person who can intervene and then <laughs> uh, really uh, pull through this session. But still, um, I have said that I have said that I Baki, I open the floor for Randeep Singh Ji to carry on, carry forward the rest of the things. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Namaskar. Uh, myself, Dr. Randeep. I am working as assistant professor with the University. Before starting this lecture, so I just call in the morning from Vikasri, Dr. Randeep, to you have to prepare a presentation on Karakal and you have to present because the presenter is is some through some reason he is absent. So at starting from nine o'clock to ten o'clock I have the one hour. So whatever the information I have in mind with me. So I have put in my presentations which I'm going to throw in front of you. So uh, a beautiful picture you can see in this picture. You can see uh, you can see these eyes. These eyes of the caracal, which 
every wildlife biologist they have a dream to see in the wild or they have to be captured in their camera traps fine so in india uh, across the india so lot of research is conducted on camera trapping based research conducted on tigers leopards and other species so i'm fortunate so i'm also part of the tiger team so i got capture in my camera traps the caracal fine so uh, after finishing my phd with the wi on the tiger i collected some data on the caracal so later on i think ki i have to start a project on the caracal in the same area it i have finished phd in 2011 then i have started my phd in the the post phd 2015 i started my caracal project in ranthambore spending a year and approximately 10 lakh rupees the output is zero so i have i have put my full efforts but did not get a single capture of the caracal inside the ranthambore so what is the reason so when i'm doing phd inside i got the captures and after the phd after the four years nothing captures so but again the funding constraints so again i have start my study on this time on the high nars on the special ecology and ecosystem services outside the protected areas so again i am fortunate and lucky i got the caracal outside the ranthambore the areas are the agriculture landscape riverine habitat disturb habitat scrub lands so where i get the capture of the caracal so i build up the story so then i join the dots ki what happens how happens what caracal ecology ki what are the important thing for the caracal what are the habitat what are their population structure what might be the their occupancy their density their food habit their litter size so all the things i try to join the dots so the today's presentations is about the joining the dots a journey from 2005 to 2000 i think 21 it's a 15 years data that i'm going to present here in front of you yes this data is a very very small data sets but i can say this is the one of the largest data sets on the caracal that i have in india so as say in the presentation title the issues the conservation issues and re revival of the caracal no this is not my title my title is some aspect of ecology of the caracal in uh, you can say in the rajasthan because i have not never been work in madhya pradesh but i have worked in the chambal area in the chambal area one side is the madhya pradesh and another side is rajasthan in the border areas so you can see these pictures i have taken uh, i'm fortunate and lucky so this is a kitten of the caracal in ranthambore i got this uh, day sighting in 2016 in the november Yes. So the content of my talk is the, about the caracal. Ki just give the information about the caracal. What is caracal? Their distributions. What is the population density? Their litter size. Their activity pattern. That's important. Their food habit, and some sort of habitat preference. But I um, I cannot basically say 100% habitat preference. This is the data set that I have. I try to interpret the data sets. So caracal is a meso carnivore medium size a predator its a weight is approximate to 8 to 20 kg and widely distributed in north africa asia and 36 sub uh, saharan african countries the estimated home range size is 26 to 7 square kilometer in different countries including africa and uh, south africa and uh, this caracal is listed as a listed is and plays in data deficient in icns and uh, the population estimate in india is approximately says some of the uh, wild biologist they says only 10 to 15 individuals they survive in the kutch region approximately less than 15 individuals in the rajasthan in the different protected areas in the rajasthan different protected areas are ranthambore sariska and latestly discovered in uh, bharatpur they got one photo capture in the camera traps dholpur forest region 
So there are some unknown pockets where we have not sampled or the camera traps, we got the, some of the capture of the caracals. Fine. So, yes, so this is the distribution range of the caracal. You can see in India, on the drier part, some arid, semi-arid habitat region and the arid region where caracal is the basically, it is distributed. <coughs> These are the historical records of the caracal that I have gathered from reviewing the literature from the JBNHS library and uh, and uh, because the forest department, forest personnel, when they visited some areas, they got the capture, they write a miscellaneous notes in the JBNHS journal that I have reviewed and get their locations. Some of the poaching information about the in, in area of the Bikaner and Jaisalmer, they have reported in some areas that I get some information about that. So this is the distribution range, historical distribution range, sorry, are you saying distribution range of the caracal? And these are the presence point of the caracal. I have developed based on these points a predictive model about the distribution of the caracal in India. So I use bioclimatical variables. So I use temperature, precipitation, land use land cover, aridity, and approximately 36 environmental variables. Then I have developed a habitat predictive model basically. So you can see in this range, so there are the three colors, red, jones, green zone and the blue zone, sky blues. So you can see this darker red portion is showing the where the probability is very, very high, where you can get the caracals. And green, the probability is high, blue, there is no probability or the least probability. Then I uh, superimpose, these are the protected areas boundaries over this predicted map. So you can see, these are the Ranthambor region and these are our Kuno, where is the probability showing this region. So we got the photo captures. So you can see Kutch region where Karakal is reported. Fine. Some of this uh, Panna landscape, Bandavgad region. So these are several pockets. So it means that Karakal distribution is not even. So it is distributed in the pockets. So, so I have superimposed again this IUCN distribution boundary and the presence point. So it's a basically give the mis mix effect in some of the very high suitable area and the suitable area where caracal distributed is basically occurs. So now the parts come about the Ranthambor. I have started my journey in 2005 to 2021, still going on. So you can see Ranthambor distributed in Swai Madhapur district of Rajasthan and the area of Ranthambor Tiger Reserve is approximately 1400 square kilometer. Out of that core area is approximately 344 where tiger is distributed. Because my work on the tigers, my work is not focused on the caracals that I want to say. So that's why I have focused my work where the tiger is basically prominently distributed in the core areas. So you can see a larger landscape of Ranthambore, Ranthambore, Kela Devi, this is Swai Mansing Century, Chambal, Ramgad Vishdari, and Mukandara Darra Hill National Park. And here is the Kunogars. So you can see, so my study area is here where I have deployed the camera. Search these areas, so we'll get some information about the caracals. So you can see uh, some photos of Ranthambo tigers of the dry season in uh, summer and in the monsoon season. So you can see they will drastically change in the, the vegetation when the, the dry season and the rainy seasons. So these are some species of Ranthambor. You can see tiger, leopard, hyena, jungle cat, uh, jackals, caracal, rattle, civet, sloth bear, say a approximately 32 mammal species we have reported in our camera traps inside as well as the outside of the camera. This this uh, Ranthambo tiger zone. Sampling design is the same. I have divided area into 4 by 4 square kilometer and then I did the subsampling. Subsampling means 4 by 4 square kilometer I have again divided the grid into 1 by 1. It means that in a grid there are the 16 subgrid. So in the sub 16 subgrids, so you can see these are the dots. These are the dots, these are the camera trap points. So I have used 224 camera trap points where I have sampled continuously from 2005 to 2011. And in a year, I sampled thrice, these two, 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 three, uh, three times, summer, winter, and the post-monsoon season, except for the monsoon season, I have now 
sampled. So continuously a six year, so how many replicate, approximately 12 replicate I have done. So the result of the six years, so you can see only these are the green dots where caracals is captured. So I but only tot I have got 37 photo capture of the caracal in the six years, which I have deployed approximately sampling effort of the 25,000 trap knives approximately. It means you mean that ki how many sampling efforts I have put and get what are the my results. It means that the photo capture rate range from 0 0.022 to 0 0.34 photo capture per 100 trap knives based on the season, different sampling seasons. And or I required a 679 trap nights to capture a single capture, single caracals. So, so it means that, so how much efforts is required? I have deployed and how much efforts I got. I analyze the data, I estimate the occupancy, I estimate the population size, density based on some of the, uh, the models. So based on the all there are the 28 the sites grids out of 28 sites only 17 sites or the grids correctly have been captured. So these are only correctly occupied 60% over the sampled areas, and abundance was per grid per sampling grid was 1.01. I use the Royal Nichols model for estimating the populations. So Royal Nichols model is based on the presence, absence, the surveys. So I use these camera traps. I have not done any type of the these uh, uh, sign surveys, scat sampling, nothing. Because we have no information about key how the caracal signs are looking like, the how the scats are looking like. I have no information. So, but caracal is not. A, we are not able to identify the caracals based on their natural marking because there is no natural marking present on their body. So based on mark and recapture, we cannot estimate their population. So we have to rely on the Royal Nichols model, the occupancy based models that I have calculated the probability or the abundance per grid. So this is the abundance per grid is a 1.10 caracal per grid. And these are basically detection probability are 0 0.5 per grid. So overall abundance is approximately 28. Over the years are not the realistic number. I can say these are not the realistic number. These are the estimated number. So I don't know if these are the correct or the they are the wrong. But the procedure that I have followed as per the scientific literature, they say there are the 28 caracals in your protected areas. And density that I have calculated is approximately 4.8 caracal per 100 square kilometer in the Ranthambore Tiger Reserve. So these are the same key, uh, same figures that I have discussed. So when I compare my results with other studies, in, you can say, Namibia, Africa. So their density was 19 individual per 100 square kilometer in North Central Africa. 23 to 47 individual per 100 square kilometer in South Africa. In Israel, 20 caracal per 100 square kilometer. So our population is much, much lower, 4.8 caracal per 100 square kilometers. You can see the activity pattern. So you can see caracals. They are, although my sample size is a 37 photographs, and few which I have recorded in daytime, as well as some of the photographers, they have captured these uh, characters one or twice in daytime, including some IFS officer like Govind Sagar Bhardwajji. He got the photo capture during the daytime also. So I can say these characters, they are more active during the late night period. Late night means between the zero is a uh, one, AM to 4 AM. So they have the peak, their uh, activity timing. Then as the time say, key, then their activity duration is decreases as the, the sun is growing. So food habit, you can see this photograph of the character captured in, uh, uh, by some of photographer, Imran Mirnaji. So character capturing this uh, hair. In the, in the daytime, they filmed these photographs. So, but to getting the actual spectrum, okay, what is caracal is eating, it is very difficult. Because we are not able to identify the scats. If we have to identify the scats, we require the genetic sampling, sampling for the genetics works. Because genetics is the only tool which can identify the species. Fine. So, but 
again, the funding constraint, we don't have the funding. So where to do? So what we have done, ki we have captured the moment of the caracal with the food. So uh, based on my camera trap results and photographers, I have the three or four records of the caracals, ki which basically depict what type of the food item it is basically eating. First item, like a hair, mammals. One book was published by uh, some of the author, uh, Kulpika, in 2012. So a caracal with the monitor lizard, and they have given the pictures. And uh, one caracal eating the egret on the tree. One uh, caracal with the mouse rat, I have captured in my camera traps. So these are the four items generally I got, ki, what are the a spectrum of the approximately of the, the diet of the caracal. So you can see uh, about the litter size. Information getting the caracal litter size is very, very difficult. So except one or two incident where caracal is captured with this, photo captured with uh, their kittens, I have basically there. Uh, so in Africa, the caracal litter size is approximately three to four uh, kittens, but in Ranthambore, I see one or two kittens along with the caracal. These are two or three settings. I not say this is accurate, but these are approximate settings. So you can see this caracal with the kitten, the same photographs I have captured. Yes. So the information and the diet about the information about the diet and reproduction is very limited about this caracal. So this type of observations about the caracal can basically suggest ki what caracal is eating, what are their reproductive status. So it basically gives some of the hope ki yes, caracal is doing good in the wild. So we get the information. So these sightings and uh, so these uh, events, you can say observations are important evidence for the existence of the reproductive population of the caracal. It means that caracal is breeding well in the Rantambor, these information. So you can the habitat use pattern. So you can see the habitats. In the Rantambor, you can see the water lakes, dry forests, scrubland, and valleys, grasslands. You can see type of the mosaics they have. So the caracals is captured in these locations. So when I analyze the data using my camera drive based on the occupancy, so sorry. Yes. So you can see, so caracals are the photo captured in different habitats. You can see the type of the habitats when their caracal have been captured. So you can see okay, where caracal is captured in camera trap in a pair, type of the habitats they are using. So, so I extracted the landscape variable using various satellite data, topo sheets, and then I have generated some landscape variables, and then I analyzed the data using the occupancy modeling. And so based on the by camera trap data, sighting data sets, and uh, uh, these uh, landscape variables data sets and incorporating the presence. You, I estimated the occupancies, the forest and the ruggedness is a basically, ruggedness means the topographic ruggedness. Fine, undulating terrain. These are the two important factors which basically model says these are the a highest model which, where this, the caracal is, is detected, which basically support the caracal detections. So these data set says the caracal presence is associated with the forest and undulating terrain. This may relate to the suitability of the habitat of the caracal, which provide cover for the hunting and the shelter and distribution of the prey species. Right? So similarly in the Africa, caracals spend most of their time in the foraging the vegetation. They have these are similar, similar findings as we got. And uh, our results suggest forest cover and ruggedness and important environmental variable that had the highest influence on the caracal, the occupancies. So you can see where we can search the caracal. So you can see these are the two important news that captured my eyes. One caracal supported in birth for bird century for the first time. This photo capture. It means that earlier we don't have the information about the caracal distribution. These photos are four years back, four or five years back. It means that. Elapse is from our side. We have not searched the caracal. 
करेक्टली इज देयर बट वी हैव नॉट मैच अनदर जाने क्या दिख जाए तीन दशक के विलुप्त सिया गोस धौलपुर के जंगलों में ला देगा सो यू कैन सी दीज आर दूज न्यूज आर्टिकल विच बेसिकली सेज कैरेक्टर इज स्टिल देयर इन द लैंडस्केप वेन आई मेक ए बिगर लैंडस्केप यू कैन सी द लोकेशन ऑफ भरतपुर धौलपुर रणथम्बोर एंड दिस रीजन एंड कुनो सो यू कैन सी वेन कैरेक्टर्स आर इन द डिस्टर्ब एरिया इन द भरतपुर इन अराउंडिंग एरिया Why not in the Kuno National Park? In this landscape, it means that we have not put our efforts. So, if you we we want to save the species, we have to put our efforts in the riverine area of the Chambal in Madhya Pradesh side, because Rajasthan side already I have surveyed. I got the information. I have full distribution of the caracal in ch this Rajasthan side, but I don't have the information about this Madhya Pradesh region. so these are the two papers ki which i have published one on the estimating the occupancy and abundance of caracal in semi arid in uh, the general the european journal of wildlife research another in journal of arid environments population and habitat characteristic of caracal in semi arid landscape western india so these are the two important papers that is basically from the the caracals so so these are the some of the photo captures which i got i have total uh, 56 photo capture of the caracal with me and uh, approximately 39 different locations that i have so with this few words and few my research experiences i hope so you'll get information about the caracal if you have any questions you can ask excellent presentation sir thank you sir with a limited time and then but your field knowledge is vast with respect to caracal so now the floor is open for questions and additions additions also ji chambal ke sakri एरिया में 18 फरवरी को मैंने देखा था लेकिन मेरे दुर्भाग्य था कि उस समय क्या यूपी में चुनाव चल रहा था तो ये खबर थी कि कुछ यूपी से लोग फरार लोग जो है चंबल में घूम रहे हैं तो मैंने क्या किया कि अनफॉर्चुनेटली मुझे कार्यकाल के लिए तो जा नहीं रहा था मैं तो बर्ड्स वगैरह के लिए जा रहा था तो अपना ट्राईपोर्ट मैं जो है ऐसे गन की तरह दबा करके आगे जा रहा था कि और चूँकि सीजन में वहाँ सरसों की फसल काफ़ी ऊँची रहती है तो सरसों में ही बदमाश छुपे होने की आशंका होती है तो मैं सावधानी से जा रहा था और जब से मैं करकल के बराबर फोटोग्राफ देख रहा हूँ तो मेरे दिमाग में इमेज है उस एरिया की वहाँ मैंने ये चूँकि उसी दिन मैंने ये वो एक पोस्ट भी एक डाली थी करकल से संबंधित नहीं डाली थी जो क्योंकि मेरे दिमाग में ये था ही नहीं कि ये बाद में जब सर से एक बार बात हुई तो दिमाग में अब वहाँ और कोशिश करूँगा क्योंकि अभी तो कोहरा वगैरह थोड़ा ज़्यादा है ये सांकरी में है देखिए कि क्या है कि हम लोग मैं नोएडा में रहता हूँ ग्रेटर नोएडा में सडनली किसी को एक जंगली बिल्ली मिले तो उन्होंने इसको पकड़ लिया लेकिन बाद में पता लगा कि फिशिंग कैट थी ग्रेटर नोएडा अर्बनाइजेशन के अंदर जब हमें फिशिंग कैट मिल सकती है ये तो करेकल है जहाँ पर हम लोग जा रहे हैं आस पास देखें फोटो मिले तो उसको लें तो विल गेट ए डेटा बेस कि विच बेसिकली हेल्प द स्पीसीज एट लीस्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन करेक्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द स्पीसीज which basically help alert the forest department and the conservation agencies which basically they take the remedial step for the conservation of these species ki sir sir hum logo ne jo kela devi wildlife sanctuary hai uske niche tak hum logo ne pura pura kiya sir ye kyunki usse aage jaane mein fir wahi hai ki hamare panch che camera traps fir chori ho gaye to resource limited hai तो एक बार तो हमें डकैत भी मिले हैं सर उसमें कैमरा ट्रैप्स के अंदर देर दर सो देर दिकॉर्ड्स सर अभी हम लोगों ने 2021 में हम लोगों ने समर्स में बंद किया सॉरी नवंबर तक बंद कम किया है सर ये 
नहीं सर हम लोग वहां नहीं गए सर धौलपुर में अभी भी रिपोर्टेड है यस सर लेकिन अभी भी लोग सर अभी मैंने जो रिपोर्ट दिखाई है सर उसमें धौलपुर का है सर वहाँ पर जो फॉरेस्ट है वहाँ का उसमें धौलपुर में स्पेशली कैला देवी से चार बार मेरे पास इन्फॉर्मेशन आ गई कि आप आ जाओ ये सर दिन रुक जाओ सर ये सर आपको पता नहीं डोंट नो ये लेकिन ऐसा उन्होंने बोला है ये सर तो मे भी मतलब हो मे भी सर लेकिन रिवाइंस को किसी ने नहीं छेड़ा नहीं छेड़ा सर वो और बहुत पहले हम मैं चूंकि राव और हम एल के सिंह ये सर तीस पैंतीस साल से चम्बल में ही हैं ये चम्बल से काम कर रहे हैं ये सर वहाँ हमने 2005 में ये सर खुद देखा था एल के सिंह साहब के साथ में एक बार देखा था पता नहीं बहुत पुरानी बात है 84 फोर एटी फाइव में टिगरी रिठौरा के पास ये सर तो लेकिन मे भी पॉसिबल के रिवाइंस रिवाइंस में है सर है ये सर पूनो में हो सकता है Yes, yeah, uh, very good presentation. It was very interesting, and congratulations for sticking on to the species for so many years, more than a decade. Yes, ma'am. Really good work. Uh, I just want to make a few comments. It is caracal, caracal, and not felis caracal. Ma'am, several. I have seen the documents. No, no, the latest taxonomy, the cat taxonomy. It is caracal, caracal. This is with molecular investigation. It's a genus of its own. Yeah, and. Uh, The second thing is the body mass in India is not 8 to 15 kilograms. That is from South Africa and Israel. The average body mass of caracal in India would be around 6 kilograms only. They are really small in India. Uh, ma'am, I, I can show you the pictures. The average, average. Average, ma'am. Uh, average. I, can show the, uh, I, can I show have the measured <laughs> skulls. I have measured skulls and I have compared it to uh, caracal from Africa, where they are really big. and in israel also where they are smaller than the african caracal but they are big they are on average 10 kilos over there in india because of character displacement they become small the same thing is with jungle cat they become smaller in india because there are many many more cats that they coexist with and they have to fit into a certain uh, body size so okay. character but displacement is there any basically. reference yes there is in terms of uh, what i have published in the um, as their diet from sariska okay ma'am okay and even after that there are some i can send you the the yeah. the publications sure, sure 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 so uh basically the caracal in india is not as big as the caracal in africa and israel okay uh that's something that can be studied also you know looking at body mass even look at pre, uh, at pocock what data from pocock okay pocock Surely, yeah, even there, it will be small. The Indian caracal is much smaller than its African and uh, Israeli counterparts. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so these are the two comments sure, and sure, really sure. excellent I work. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you. Sure. Any 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 other questions, it is, please? Uh, it is Schmidzi, according to uh, you know uh, Pocock's classification, the same as the Israeli one, but molecular studies have not been done, so we really don't know whether. it is a different population no what it is anybody else any questions thank you randeep singh sir you, you made the day for caracal <laughs> and then uh, <clears throat> please bye to uh, with all the matlab information that i could gather over last say 10 years 15 years hearing from my colleagues and other uh, field persons who have done some research on car caracal i seen only once caracal in uh, sariska that way back in 1992 so that's the only one sighting and people say ki jo usko dekhne se lucky hote hain ab mujhe mujhe nahi malum kaise but people will will have will have a belief that's one thing with all those information uh, to sitting here uh, one thing that comes to me is that immediately we should go for the ex situ conservation of caracal if if matlab we need to uh, you may disagree but if you are going to lose whatever there on the ground so that will be again cheetah like situation no uh, can i can i just say why why words? not okay see the this misinformation has been perpetuated even here he said there were 10 to 15 caracal that information is from 1970s it has never been updated definitely there are more, many many more than 10 to 15 caracal is just that as he said surveys have not been done we put seven camera traps in a semi protected area in kutch 
and we started finding caracal with kittens. Outside that is wasteland. There are caracal in wasteland. And I suspect in your wastelands over here in Madhya Pradesh, if you do a very focused survey, you will find them. So I think we should not jump to XC2 conservation when we really do not know what's happening in ground who, in C2. Who, who will build the cat? <laughs> you give me money, I'll do it. <laughs> you are asking money from a retired person. <laughs> I think biodiversity, biodiversity board can step in too. Certainly, uh, MPSSB is capable of doing it. That's all. So, thank you everybody. So, this session comes to an end. Check, check. हाँ सर बिल्कुल प्यार का और सम्मान का चिन्ह भाई प्लीज प्यार का और सम्मान का चिन्ह जैसा कि श्रीनिवास जी ने कहा वो ले आइए एंड हम हमारे ऑनरी चेयर एंड ऑफ कोर्स रणदीप सिंह जी जिन्होंने बहुत बेहतरीन तरीके से अपनी डिकेड लॉन्ग रिसर्च के बारे में हमें यहाँ पे बताया सो प्लीज मैं आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट मिस्टर बकुल लाड जी मैं चाहूंगा वो मंच पे आए असिस्टेंट मेंबर सेक्रेटरी मध्य प्रदेश स्टेट बायोडाइवर्सिटी बोर्ड एंड हमारे ऑनरी चेयर को सम्मानित करें जोरदार ताली होनी चाहिए थैंक यू फॉर बीइंग हियर वंस अगेन विद अस सर ऑन द स्टेज एंड ऑफ कोर्स द प्रेजेंट द रिसर्चर विद अस रणदीप सिंह जी थैंक यू सो मच जेंटलमैन फॉर बींग विथ अस फॉर द सेशन Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Moving towards the next session. Well, आज के दिन की खास बात ये कि हर session के साथ ज़्यादा interesting होता जा रहा है ये conference because इसके पहले आपने scorpions के बारे में देखा अभी आपने caracals के बारे में देखा. अब we are going to dive into the insect world because this particular session is titled as the amazing insect world, joy at fingertips. And as presenter, we are delighted to have with us Alok Govind Shoyde ji. Zorda tali sun ka swaad karenge ham. And as the chair, we are going to have one person jinko ham already pehle sun chuke hain, Sudhir Jina ji. Yes, Sudhir Jina ji, Zorda tali sun ka swaad karenge ham. Or main Muhammad Khalik ji se nevidan karunga ki wo saplings ke saath aage aaye aur. हमारे रिसर्चर और हमारे चेयर का अभिवादन करें वेलकम करें प्लीज मीनवाइल लेट मी ब्रीफ यू अबाउट आर चेयर एंड द रिसर्चर एंड द प्रेजेंटर यस तालियां होनी चाहिए भाई तालियां गम्मत रहने दीजिए यस प्रोफेसर अलोक शेडे ही इज अ मास्टर्स इन इंग्लिश लिटरेचर बट हैज हैड कीन इंटरेस्ट इन द लाइफ ऑफ इंसेक्ट्स ही स्टार्टेड स्टडिंग इंसेक्ट्स as a hobby way back in 2008 and in 2011 and 12 he was enlisted in the limca book of records for two consecutive years you know and i think that was when he started his grip on insects since last 15 years he has been deeply indulged into insect photography and videography he talks about the insects personality in his lectures and in this session you are going to witness lesser seen activities of insects he has been successful in clicking variety of insects roughly over 300 species including butterflies beetles bugs grasshoppers etc his audio visual show joy at fingertips interacts with people about the beautiful personality of insects and their important role in building up the environment and also the urgent need to save them he has conducted over 240 sessions so far and he strongly believes that insects have emotions like that of us and he is constantly working to make entomology popular among common people sir hum aapka swagat karte hain taaliyon ke sath and as the chair we have 
मिस्टर सुधीर कुमार जीना जी वथा साहब उन्हें ऑलरेडी सुन चुके हैं ही इज अ प्रोजेक्ट फेलो इन जूलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया सेंट्रल जोन रीजनल सेंटर जबलपुर एंड द प्रोजेक्ट इज इन टाइटल्ड जैसे कि आपने पहले सुना था डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ स्कॉर्पियंस इन मध्य प्रदेश विद स्टडीज ऑन इकोलॉजी बायोलॉजी एंड एसोसिएटेड ट्रेडिशनल नॉलेज अबाउट मेडिकली इंपॉर्टेंट स्पीशीज वी आर वंस अगेन डिलाइटेड टू हैव यू एज अ चेयर दिस टाइम जोरदार तालियों से उनका स्वागत करेंगे and i would request the chair and the researcher to please begin with this much awaited session uh oh uh, yeah uh good afternoon everyone actually uh, i am not that experienced in life uh to like uh leave my uh, leave a job for just just for passion but he did this so i don't want to waste time and i have never heard anyone working on insect personality so i am also very excited to uh, see his presentation so let's don't waste time and dive into that सबको नमस्कार बड़ा धन्यवाद यहाँ आते ही थोड़ा सा मेरे को डर लग रहा था क्योंकि रविंद्रनाथ टागोर जो डॉक्टर राजू जैसे मिल गए मेरे को सॉरी एंड वेल सेड डॉक्टर डेविड राजू ही इज अ डॉक्टर ऑफ रेप्टाइल्स कि वो भी स्टूडेंट ऑफ लिटरेचर इंग्लिश लिटरेचर रहे हैं मैं भी स्टूडेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर रहा हूँ मैं संगीत विशारत था मैं चार चार घंटे रियाज करता था एंड संस्कृत लिटरेचर का विद्यार्थी रहा और अचानक से एक बड़ा अच्छा मूड आया जिसमें आई टर्न टूवर्ड्स दिस इंसेक्ट फोटोग्राफी एंड वीडियोग्राफी एंड देन द प्रोसेस व्हाट हैड बीन सेड इन द इंट्रोडक्शन इट हैपेंड बट आई डोंट वर्क फॉर इट आई आई एम इन लव फॉर ऑल दिस इंसेक्ट्स एंड यहाँ आके मुझे एक ऐसा इंसेक्ट मिल गया है जिसका नाम है विकास जी बघेल वो कहीं उड़ गए यहाँ से अभी दिख नहीं रहे आई फाउंड हिम आई फाउंड हिम हियर इन और मुझे बड़े खुशी है कि इतने स्कॉलिस्टिक सब आप लर्नड पीपल यहाँ बैठे हो तो आई केम हेयर टू लर्न सो मे लॉट मेनी थिंग्स अबाउट दिस हाउ आर हाउ डू द टेक्निकलिटीज गो एक्चुअली आई एम नॉट ऑन दैट फील्ड आई स्पीक ऑन इंसेक्ट बट आई एम नॉट एन एंटोमोलॉजिस्ट सो आई डू नॉट नो दैट टेक्निकलिटी और दैट टेक्निकल साइड आई एम लर्निंग आई एम लर्निंग आई हैव स्टार्टेड रीडिंग अबाउट एंटोमोलॉजिकल जर्नल्स एंड वॉट एवर लिटरेचर आई कम अक्रॉस एंड आई जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इट ओनली बिकॉज आई हैव some sort of uh, support from english so that's why i can understand it uh, but uh, a long journey to go and i have started to thoda sa khushi ka mahol hai a chal ke tujhe main leke chalu ek aise gagan ke tale jahan gham bhi na ho aansu bhi na ho bas pyar hi pyar pale एक ऐसे गगन के तले सूरज की पहली किरण से आशा का सवेरा जागे चंदा की किरण से धुलकर घनघोर अंधेरा भागे कहीं धूप खिले कहीं छाव मिले लंबी सी डगर न खले जहाँ गम भी न हो आंसू भी न हो बस प्यार ही प्यार पले एक ऐसे गगन के तले एक ऐसे गगन के तले सो लेट्स एंजॉय दिस इंसेक्ट वर्ल्ड जॉय एट फिंगर टिप्स दिस इज माई टाइटल ऑफ लिम का बुक ऑफ रिकॉर्ड लेट अस बिगेन दीज आर टू देर आर टू पार्ट ऑफ द माई प्रेजेंटेशन द फर्स्ट वन इज ऑफ स्टिल फोटोग्राफी आर जस्ट गोइंग टू observe and enjoy the beauty of insect photography what is insect and what how do they look like they are amazing creatures on this planet most of the time i think that in my last birth i was an insect now i am a human form so the insects they invited me and they told me to cover all their insect life in a beautiful manner so as to human beings now i am myself a human being so let them get accustomed to that that what is insect beauty is outside you know it 
you may not, I may not, or I may. Doesn't matter, it's beautiful. That's what I want to say. ACS sahab ne jo baat kahi hai, exactly usi line pe mein kaam kar raha hun. 240 lecture diye hain, isi line se diye hain. Common people ko attract karna chahiye, unko baat samaj mein aani chahiye. Unko technicality se yadi dara denge, wo bhaag jayenge. Insect bhi vaise hi bhaag jayenge shayad. To mein unko ye baatin nahi batata. Thik hai, anyway, I know it. Silver line butterfly, it's a very common, bilkul Australia se lekar se, India tak, you can find them anywhere. It's a pure butterfly. Common immigrant, close up of it, see the composite eyes, the proboscis and all that. It's a beautiful, amazing beauty there out. It's evening, lady, painted lady, what is called as, but the close up of this, my brother was with, uh, having, uh, when I was taking photograph of this uh, butterfly, my brother was with him, I was on a damn uh, ramp, wandering here and then so in search of insects. And he said, Alok, Alok, come here, come here, there is a butterfly, you take photograph of this. And he was standing by that side. And he was calling me there, over there, to cross that. I said, no, I am taking photographs. And I sat down with my macro lens. Now, for these photographers, I must say, I have got Alpha 7R2, 42 megapixels of uh, full framer, with a 90mm 2.8G lens. It's the very sharpest lens in the world. And I take all those photographs. Of, this photograph is also of that uh, Alpha 7R2, 42 megapixel. So the beauty is this. I started taking photos from this. And when I finished photographing and I showed them that this is my photograph, he said, now I understand, Alok, why you are a photographer and so famous. Because I was asking you to photograph it from that side, but actually you saw beauty from this. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. This is the thing. Once you locate that object or subject, you must take it beautifully. Because people are going to enjoy it. People are going to say, see it. So, for that matter, you must be very conscious. So, camera does its role, that's true, it's a machine. But how you handle it, that's more important. So, the angle which you will take, the light that you decide, of one, what aperture, and, and there are so many other aspects, scientific aspects that are given in the camera, so you must be able to uh, handle that camera. So, if you want to be a real worker, field worker, you must know how to handle a camera. Da. Okay. Peacock pansy. Now see the beauty, the dew drops. This is the beauty of this cold season. Uh, when Dr. Shivashankaran is there in Bangalore, he says, Alok, in this season there is no use to come, you coming here because we do not see insects. Yes, sir, no, insects are there. They are in hibernation mode or some standing still somewhere, hiding themselves from the cold. But they are there. They cannot get finished. So they are there. And my role is to come there in this very season when there is, as we have talked about the caracal and that. When we say that caracals are not here, it does mean that they are there. You were not. You haven't seen them. So it's need to go there. You find them out. Be patient. A lot of patience is there. We are all working on it. So that's the matter. Plain tiger mating. This is cabretter or borer beetle, stem borer beetle, the beautiful lip. See the beauty. It knows that it is beautiful. Now, once again, the definition of beauty. I want to change all this definition of beauty. Why we try to be after some fashions and makeups and uh, cosmetics and all that? Because we want to be very beautiful. Actually, we are all beautiful. Whatever God has made us, we are beautiful. But even then, we try to be more and more beautiful. We, uh, I mean, enhance our, tech, our gym, I mean, say, outward appearance by fashions and cosmetics and all that. Why? So that people should see me only amongst thousands. The best place is a marriage wedding ceremony. <laughs> there you see all, all kinds of people that photographer should avoid the bridegroom and all that and should focus only on me. That's why I'm so beautiful. There is a competition of beauty among human beings. But why are insects beautiful? Because they want to hide from our eyes. They need it for their camouflage. So they are against that publicity. They don't want to get famous. They don't want to even you people to come there and look at them easily and see them. They just hide themselves. So when people say, Alo, kya, tum jab jungle mein ho, you are all alone. Tumko dar nahi lagta. Mala, main ale, akela nahi rehta main aane se pehle bahut sare wahan, ko dekhte rehte ki ya aa gaya banda. Ab pesh ho jao unke samne. And that's why I am blessed. 
कि मैं जब जाता हूँ मेरे को इंसेक्ट दिखते हैं लोग जब जाते आज भी मैं जब सवेरे हम घूमने गए थे पहले आधा घंटा तो मुझे कुछ नहीं दिखा और बाद में धड़ाधड़ 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 इंसेक्ट लोकेट करते गया मैं कहाँ गई वो है 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 और वो कृत क्या कृताली शीज देयर उनका ही कैमरा यूज करते रहा मैं तो ऐसी बात है तो आप वहां जाते हो तो वो आपको देखते हैं आई एम ऑलवेज अमेज विद फैक्ट दैट वेन आई सी इंसेक्ट हाउ डज दैट इंसेक्ट लुक एट मी इज ए अफ्रेड ऑफ मी डज इ लव मी एंड आई गॉट द आंसर येस ही लव मी वाई माई वेरी टाइटल जो आई थिंग इफ्स आई नाउ लेव दैट जॉब वैसा काम मैंने छोड़ दिया इन द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ इंसेक्ट्स ओनली मैं ये दिखा सकता हूँ लेकिन नहीं दिखाऊंगा मैंने बंद कर दिया है इसलिए मैंने उसको डिस्प्ले भी बंद किया दिया फीचरिंग भी बंद कर दिया कि यदि कोई फ्लावर पे बटरफ्लाई बैठा है तो मैं उसके पास जाऊँगा कैमरा ऑन करके जाऊँगा मैं अब अपनी उंगली ये ऐसे उसके सामने दूंगा वो फ्लावर छोड़ के मेरे हाथों पर बैठ सकता है आई हैव गट दट वीडियो इन दिस फोल्डर बट विद ओनली विद द हाई परमिशन ऑफ दिस ऑफिशियल्स आई कैन शो देम अदरवाइज आई हैव स्टॉप दैट वर्क आई बिन आस्ट टू स्टॉप इट बिकॉज दिस इज सर यार आप सेलिब्रिटी जैसे होते जा रहे हो 240 सौ चालीस प्रोग्राम किए हो आप बहुत फेमस हो आप जब ये काम करोगे और बाकी लोग ये करने लगेंगे तो वो बाकी पहले मारेंगे क्योंकि वो उनके बैठ फिंगर टिप्स से आने वाला है नहीं आप क्या आ रहे हैं तो लोग आपसे कॉम्पिटिशन करेंगे जलेंगे जलगांव के सब निवासी हैं तो जलेंगे तो वो क्या पहले क्या करेंगे वो रिवेंज लेंगे वो बटरफ्लाई को पहले मारेंगे फिर फिंगर टिप्स से लेंगे और फिर उसके सेल्फी चलाते रहेंगे इसलिए आप रुक जाओ मैंने बोला यस बिल्कुल आई लव देम सो मच दे आर माई गॉड्स आई प्रे फॉर देम एंड आई एम द ओनली वन सेइंग दैट यू सेव इन सेक्स इफ दे डाय वी आर अबाउट टू फिनिश वेरी क्विकली बोर बीचल हाउ मेनी डॉट्स एव हाउ कलरफुल इट इज सी द एक्सटर्नल ब्यूटी एंड द इंसेक्ट डज नॉट नो इट मे बी ही मे ही माइट बी नोइंग इट बट हीवन ही हैजन टोल्ड मी आई एम ट्राइंग टू लर्न देयर लैंग्वेज थ्री लैंग्वेज दैट आई नो फोर्थ वन इज दैट इंसेक्ट लैंग्वेज पहला मोर्चा तो उनका ही निकालने वाला हूँ मैं जब उनकी लैंग्वेज समझ में आएगी कि वो क्यों चिल्ला रहे हैं हमारे नाम से वे आर खिलिंग देम ऑल द वाइल जैगोग्रामा इन अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल पोजिशन ऐसा सिन बग कभी कभी उल्टा सोचने से सीधा सीधी बात समझ में आती है ये भी वैसे ही सोच रहा है कि यार ह्यूमन बींग कर क्या रहे हैं वॉट इज हैपनिंग अराउंड मी वो जरा उल्टा सोच वो कैसे सोच रहा है चलो ब्यूटीफुल इट्स अ सिकाडास समर टाइम में लिया हुआ फोटोग्राफ है ये सिकाडास फेस टू फेस वो एक सौ स्केलेटन है उनका मोल्टिंग होने के बाद ऐसे इसी पोजीशन में मिले ड्राइड आउट मिले मैं इसका फोटो ले लिया बहुत क्लास पोस्टर है इट डज मीन दैट देर इज अ ग्रुप एक्टिविटी ऑफ लाइक दैट मोल्टिंग ग्रुप एक्टिविटी हाउ डू दे नो द बॉडी क्लॉक इन साइड दैम इट टेल्स दैम दैट जस्ट कम आउट कम आउट ऑफ देयर शेल्स एंड गेट डन वो सू आवाज करके जो सीटी बचती है वो सिकाडस की है वो सिकाडस भी मेरे उंगलियों पे आके बैठा है खाली एक ड्रीम रह गया है अब तो बंद कर दिया इसलिए वैसे ही रहना है उसको वो इस जन्म में तो होना नहीं है कि वो सिकाडा मेरे उंगली पे आके गाना गाएगा सू आवाज करेगा वो जो वाइब्रेशन है ना दोनों आई वॉन्टेड टू फील दैट वाइब्रेशन दे वाइब्रेट दे टॉक टू मी आई माइट हैव द सेम फेरामोन्स मे बी द इंसेक्ट हैव इट्स अ केमिस्ट्री आउट देयर क्रिसकर स्टोली दैट आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट इसके इसका जो पेड़ है वो उसके मैंने फोटो भी एक लाया है अनफॉर्चुनेटली द प्लॉट इन विच आई यूज टू फाइंड इट इंसेक्ट एंड आई स्टडीड दिस इंसेक्ट फ्रॉम एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम एग्स टू मेटिंग एंड मेल फीमेल एंड एवरीथिंग 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 दैट आई हैव गॉट देन आई गॉट अनदर बग पेंटेटोमिट बग क्रोडोफिला मैकेलिकुलिस आई रिकॉर्डेड दम एवरीथिंग इन इन वीडियोग्राफी एवरीथिंग एवरीथिंग नथिंग लेफ्ट एंड देन आई आस्क मिस डॉक्टर गोविंद गुर्जर द हेड डीन ऑफ एंटोमोलॉजी यूज टू बी इन पूसा इंस्टीट्यूट दिल्ली He said, "Ar alo, he he used to speak Marathi because he is Marathi speaker, and my district in my district, Nandura, I am from Bulthana, Bulthana district." He said, "Ar alo, tum ye kya kar rahe ho? Ye ye hamara dhanda hai. Tum kyun guzar rahe ho? Ye tum kya hai? Kya 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 iske? Ye insect ka tum kyun kyun hona hai? Ye kya kya hamne? Sir, bola, maine puri videography kar diye iski. Bole kya kya videography ki? Maine sir, egg laying liya, egg hatching liya, wo jo chote chote wo bache the, wo bhi unka liya. Fir wo molting wager jo bolte hain, wo." फर्स्ट इंस्टा में सेकंड वो वो भी ले लिया फिर वो मेल फीमेल वो भी लोकेट कर दिया मैंने वो फिर उसका मेटिंग वो भी वो भी ले लिया और फिर से उसको एक लेंगे वहां तक आ गया और फिर जाके वो डिसअपियर हो गए वो भी ले लिया और उस पर कौन से बर्ड फीड कर दिए वो भी ले लिया बोले यार आलोक ये तो रिकॉर्ड है ये पूरा डेटा तो पी लायक है लेकिन आई कैन नॉट एफर यू एनी ऑफ द पी यू माइट हैव फोर टू सिक्स पी इन योर पॉकेट 
because only you are not a science student i cannot offer you any of the projects as well as lekin ab zara jaan mein jaan aa gayi ki dr david raju is here <laughs> i offered you phd now you cannot deny it because i am also not a doctor so many people call me doctor because they suppose that some person doing this sort of work must be a doctor so okay it's okay naam se kuch pata nahi chalta aur kuch kaam bhi nahi adta chalo aage jaiye ye spitting bug hai आप कभी देखते हो घूमते घूमते कि कहीं किसी ने थूका है ऐसे लगता है तो इट्स दैट दैट क्रीचर दो दैट स्मॉलर वन मे बी हाफ सेंटीमीटर ऑफ साइज गेहूं जैसा उसको क्लोजअप में लेने के बाद इसकी ब्यूटी पता चलती है थोड़ा सा अंधेरा यदि कर दिया जाए तो और शार्प हो जाएगा ये कैन यू कैन यू पुट ऑफ दिस लाइट क्योंकि वीडियोज में उसका इम्पैक्ट देखने वाला है मैं वीडियो ज्यादा बताने वाला हूँ मैंने तीस वीडियोज लाए हैं आपके लाइट साफ कर दो और शार्प हो जाएगा सॉरी आपने ड्रैगन फ्लाई तो देखा है अब ये यहां तो ड्रैगन फ्लाई के पर्सन बजे हैं स्पेशलिस्ट अब देखिए ये ड्रैगन फ्लाई का एक ही विंग ओपेक है बाकी सब ट्रांसपेरेंट है इट्स माइट बी एनोमली द एक्सपर्ट्स दे माइट कमेंट ऑन देम यू प्लीज एक्सप्लेन व्हाट इज व्हाट इज दिस एक ही उसका सिर्फ जो विंग स्पैन है वो ओपेक है बाकी तीनों विंग्स उसके ट्रांसपेरेंट है आई वॉज आफ्टर दिस ड्रैगन फ्लाई फॉर फोर्टी मिनट्स then it settled somewhere i reached very silently behind it and took that photograph only because of that opaque wing otherwise i wouldn't have uh, pursued that uh, dragon fly that way ek hi wing opaque hai kuch to bhi alag tha isliye dikhaya ab ye jungle queen ye antlion to hai ye bahut beautiful hai bahut sundar hai ab kya identification ke pare hai iski saundarya aur fir baki uska jo chalta hai whatever activity she does That's amazing. ये दूसरा एंट लाइन है बहुत क्लास है बहुत क्लास है बहुत डरावनी भी है बट घोष था सो ब्यूटिफुल आई आई रियलाइज बाय लुकिंग एट इंसेक्ट ओनली सो ब्यूटिफुल ब्यूटिफुल और हमारे प्यारे इंसेक्ट भी यहां पर आके बैठ गए अब विकास जी बघेल उनके लिए तालियां बजा दो एक बार <laughs> हमारे प्यारे कीटक चलो आगे जाएंगे दिस इज द इंसेक्ट एक्चुअली सुजीत सर आज होने थे क्योंकि इंडियन ग्रेट इंडियन बस्टर्ड का ये फूड माना जाता है और उसके साथ इंडियन रोलर भी ये खाता है इसका तो मेरे पास रिकॉर्ड है ये मैंने देख लिया है अब ये पॉइजनस ग्रास ऑपर है ये एक्सटिंक्ट होते जाता आ रहा है क्योंकि ये मिल्क वीड पे ही पाया जाता है नॉट ऑन अदर क्रॉप आई आई वन सीन देम वेरी रेयरली इट कैन सीट एनी वेयर एंड सैन ईट इन मिक्स टाइप ऑफ फूड बट मेनली इट्स फूड इज मिल्क वीड आख रुई का पौधा तो उसी पे बैठेगा उसी के पर पाएगा उस वहीं पे बैठा है अभी भी वो पॉइजनस है उसके ये जो सेकंड जो लेग्स है ना यहां से वो ये ये ये, ये जो सेक्शन है उतना थोरेक्स का वहां से एक पॉइजनस सब्सटेंस वो निकालता है एंड इट कैन क्रिएट हार्ट अरेस्ट इट इज विन सेट हार्ट अरेस्ट आ सकता है वो मे बी पोटेशियम साइनाइड टाइप कुछ सभी केमिकल उसमें नीड टू बी इन्वेस्टिगेटेड इसलिए मैं कल से वो बहुत सारे लोगों को पूछ रहा हूँ कि क्या यू हैव यू गॉट सम वेल डेवलप लेबोरेटरी सो दैट वी कैन डू सम केमिकल फाइंडिंग्स ऑन दैट देर आर सो मेनी सच एस्पेक्ट रेडी विद मी नाउ आई हैव रियलाइज दैट आई कैन नॉट डू पी एच डी एनी बडी इज विलिंग टू ही मे ऑफर मी सम डिलीट और एन ऑफर सम स्कोप फॉर माई वर्क बिकॉज आई एम फ्री आई फ्री लांस नाउ मैं इतना पागल हुआ हूँ इसलिए कि लॉकडाउन के बाद मैंने सोचा यार फोकट का पगार नहीं लेना चाहिए मैंने नौकरी छोड़ दी आई वॉज अ टीचर ऑफ इंग्लिश जूनियर कॉलेज टीचर ऑफ इंग्लिश उनतीस साल नौकरी की इतना पागल हुआ था पंद्रह साल से तो यही कर रहा हूँ दो हजार आठ से इतना पागल हुआ है कि मैं चीज़ छोड़ दिया नौकरी चलो यार पूरा का पूरा यही करेंगे यही बुद्धि मेरे को दी है ऊपर वाले ने इसको निभाना है और फिर वीडियोग्राफी भी और फोटोग्राफी भी फोटोग्राफी थी फॉर द ब्यूटी एंड एंजॉयमेंट ऑफ द कॉमन पीपल बट वीडियोग्राफी उसकी स्टडी है तो ये एक ब्यूटीफुल इंसेक्ट है ये धीरे 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 कम हो रहा है इसका कैराकल ना करे प्लीज इसको पहले ही रोकी है इसको फ्लरिश होने दीजिए ये आपके पेस्ट मैनेजमेंट के ये क्रॉप्स के लिए कोई भी पेस्ट नहीं है फिर भी ये ब्यूटीफुल है और ये फॉरेस्ट में है इसको प्रोटेक्ट करने की योजनाएं मैंने कई बार डायवर्सिटी बोर्ड महाराष्ट्र पे रखी उन्होंने नहीं सुनी है अनफॉर्चुनेटली आई एम वेरी सैड टू से दैट बट आई एम आई होप नाउ श्रीवास्तव जी यहाँ पर है मैं बहुत कुछ आशाएं यहाँ लेके आया हूँ मैं कल ही उनको सब जानकारी दी मेरे काम की ये इंसेक्ट है सर ऐसे दो तीन इंसेक्ट है मैं दिखाने वाला हूँ आगे के फ्रेम में आएंगे अब ये एक इंसेक्ट है ये इंसेक्ट डॉक्टर स्वामीनाथन करके है उदयपुर एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी के रिटायर्ड है पर्सन सिक्सटी फाइव ईयर मेरे गुरु है मेरा सरनेम शेवड़े है लेकिन मराठी में 
ग्रास ऑपर्स को नाकतोड़ा कहा जाता है तो वो सब मुझे कहते हैं सर आप शेवड़े नहीं हो आप नाकतोड़े ही हो बोला हाँ यस वेरी प्राउडली क्या एम नाकतोड़े वाय मैंने एक बुल्ढाणा के जंगल में 65 फाइव स्पेसिस ऑफ ग्रास ऑपर्स रिकॉर्ड किए एक ही जंगल में क्योंकि पैदल चलना पड़ता है भाई व्हीकल लेके आप इंसेक्ट नहीं ढूंढ सकते हो टेलीस्कोपिक लेंस से भी इंसेक्ट नहीं दिखने वाला आपको एक फिट के अंदर उसके पास जाना पड़ेगा उसको शरण जाना पड़ेगा घुटने टेक के बैठना पड़ेगा तभी जाके वो दिखेगा और फिर जाके वो भी यदि वो कुछ करेगा तो वीडियो में आएगा अदरवाइज फोटो लीजिए और आगे चलिए ये रोबस्ट स्टोर लबर है फ्रेनोटेटिक्स रोबस्ट स्टोर लबर अब ये जब डॉक्टर स्वामीनाथन को मैंने बताया आलो कि ये क्या बोल रहे हो मतलब हाँ सर रोबस्ट स्टोर लबर डू नो इट मतलब सर आई फोटोग्राफ्स ऑफ इट आई रिकॉर्डेड आई रिकॉर्डेड टू स्पेसिस ऑफ इट वन इज सब स्पेसिस में भी आलोक पैंतीस साल के बाद सुन रहा हूं ये कहां पर है मतलब सर बुल्ढाणा में आई लाइव टू कम देयर ये मेरे लिए कॉम्प्लीमेंट है मैं ऐसे हिडन ट्रेजर को ढूंढने का काम कर रहा हूं एनी बडी कैन हायर मी जस्ट जस्ट आई एम आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग यू ऑल कि मैं आना चाहता हूं मैं इसीलिए मैंने रिटायरमेंट लिए पांच साल पहले कोई नौकरी नहीं छोड़ेगा बेटी की शादी हो गई मैंने सोचा बस हो गया वहां बस 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 हो गया इतना ही इतना ही करना था हमको बच्चा लग गया आपने नौकरी को वो चाहेगा वो देखेगा क्या करना है क्या नहीं मैं तो यही देखूंगा इसलिए मैं आपको फिर से बार बार रिक्वेस्ट कर रहा हूं कि मेरे को हायर कीजिए मेरे को बुलाइए और मेरे को छोड़िए मेरे को इंसेक्ट एक्टिविटी कवर कर लीजिए मे बी देर आर सम रेयर स्पेसीज हाइडिंग इन साइड इट अब मेरे को दिखता है ये उसका सब स्पेसीज है रोबस्ट स्टोर लगा देखिए कलर बदल गया फिर से कंपेयर करेंगे हम दिस वन This one, different, है ना और चार पांच साल हुए मैं इसे मतलब ट्रैक कर रहा हूं कि ये कौन से एरिया में मिलता है कौन से टेम्परेचर में मिलता है कब मिलता है कौन से वेजिटेशन में मिलता है कैसे दिखेगा कहां दिखेगा सब देख रहा हूं लेकिन उसका मेटिंग अभी तक नहीं मिला पाया उसका एग लेंग छूट गया मेरे से क्योंकि मेरी गलती से मैं वहां एकदम से करीब चला गया वो फीमेल थी वो उसका भी फोटो है यहां पर नहीं है इसमें इस फोल्डर में वो थोड़ा सा हिल गई वो इसलिए वो नहीं तो एक लिंग भी ले लेता था ये एक रेयर ग्रास ऑपर है यू हैवन माइट है रेयरली सीन ये टाइटल जो है लेसर सीन तो मेरे पास लेसर सीन तो नहीं होंगे शायद लेकिन लेसर सीन एक्टिविटीज ऑफ इंसेक्ट तो है आज जो वीडियोस में मैं दिखाने वाला हूँ थोड़ा सा वक्त लूंगा चलिए ये एक रेयर टाइप है ली फूटेड ग्रास ऑपर ये भी रेयर है इसको भी थोड़ा सा कंजर्व करने की आवश्यकता है बहुत ही रेयर है बहुत ज्यादा रेयर मतलब टॉप मोस्ट रेयर इंसेक्ट्स में यदि रखना है तो इसको पहले रखेंगे उसके बाद में बाकी रख सकते हैं हम अब ये मोल्टिंग इसके वीडियोस भी है मेरे पास बहुत ढेर सारे मैंने सब कुछ लिया है मतलब मेटिंग मोल्टिंग प्रेडिटरशिप कैनिबलिज्म स्ट्रगल फॉर एग्जिस्टेंस दे आर बोरिंग ऑफ द फॉर एग लेंग देन एग लेंग इट सेल्फ देन दे आर फाइटिंग दे आर क्वारल दे आर एडजस्टमेंट दे आर हेल्पिंग नेचर एवरीथिंग मैंने सब कुछ लिया है और फिर एक रहा बचा जो एट फिंगर टिप्स बहुत प्यार से वो आके बैठ जाते हैं मतलब मैं कभी कभी किस करता हूँ वो बटरफ्लाई को यार जब जा जब हो गया बहुत हो गया ना 25 मिनट हुए मैं लेके घूम रहा हूँ तुमको भी कोई काम धंधा है कि नहीं मैं तो नहीं है लोग तो मुझे पागल ही समझते लेकिन तुमको भी पागल समझेंगे उड़ो चलो ये एक्सीडेंट है मैं एक बार सवेरे नींद से जागा तो क्या दिमाग में आया कि यार जो एट फिंगर टिप्स तो है लेकिन जो इंसेक्ट जो बटरफ्लाईज अपनी कार से धड़क देके वो मर जाते हैं रास्ते पे तो पेन इन माई हार्ट करके फिल्म ही बना दी शॉर्ट फिल्म जो हार्ट फिंगर टिप्स पेन इन माई हार्ट वो दुखी होते हैं वो कार के नीचे आते हैं उनको कैसे लगता होगा यार हम कोई प्राणी होगा या आदमी होगा तो उसके लिए सौ दो सौ दौड़ के दौड़ के जाते हैं उनके लिए एम्बुलेंस आती है वो ये फलाना ढिकाना सब कुछ इंसेक्ट मर जाते हैं तो उनको कैसे लगता होगा पेन इज कॉमन टू ऑल जनरल इट्स लाइफ आउट देयर सम ऑफ इट सम ग्लिम्स ऑफ दैट लाइफ इज इन यू अदरवाइज द होल लाइफ इज आउट सो उसे महसूस करने के लिए थोड़ा सा रूमानी हो जाए थोड़ा सा रूमानी हो जाए थोड़ा सा तो समझिए यार बाहर कुछ है लाइफ उनको भी जान है उनको भी समझ है उनको भी ब्रेन है इतना सा छोटा सा ब्रेन उसको क्या लगता होगा एक्सीडेंट क्यों है इसने यहां का तो लेक गंवा दिया ये पहले सारे लेक गंवा दिए एक यहां का विंग पार्ट भी गंवा दिया है उसको क्या लगता होगा ये फोटोग्राफ अब भी अभी लिया चार चार छह दिन पहले आई ही केम हियर ऑलमोस्ट ऑन एलेवेंथ आवर बस उनकी कृपा है कहाँ गए कीटक उड़ गए फिर से नहीं जिस वेरी बिजी आउट देयर एंड फैमिली के है शायद वो <laughs> रुक नहीं बात है अब ये डिफाइन कीजिए ये डिफाइन कीजिए 
चलो दिस फोटो आई मस्ट एक्सप्लेन दिस ग्रास ऑफर इज ब्यूटिफुल जेनिया फ्लावर इज वेरी ब्यूटिफुल बट लिसन लिसन दिस ग्रास ऑफर इज डेड वन ये मरा हुआ है इट्स अ पैथोजन टेक कंट्रोल ऑफ दिस ग्रास ऑफर इट्स कॉल्ड एज अ समिट डिसीज I've got two pathogens ready. Yesterday I was talking about me with uh, Parveen Sheikh, ma'am, about this this pathogen. Okay, I had some notice that uh, time is running out of it, so we shall straightforward run to our videos because unless and until I show them to you, it would be incomplete business. चलो ये तो समझ गए आप झट 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 videos बताएंगे. कैटरपिलर खाते कहीं सी है डज गैर इन इट वेरी फास्ट वेरी होरेशियस इटर यू माइट हैव सीन इट माइट नॉट हैव रेयरली सीन बिहेवियर चलो बट इतना खाने के बाद हम जब यहां डोजिंग तो वो क्या करती है इट हैज सो मेनी टास्क टू फिलफुल ककुन ये नेटिंग है अपने मुंह से वो पूरा धागा निकालना है वो मीटरिंग वैसे ही उसको स्केलिंग दिया है वो स्केलिंग कर रही है और उसके अंदर जाएगी पंद्रह दिन के बाद उसका बटरफ्लाई या मौत जो भी बनना है सो बनेगा जिस टाइप का कैटरपिलर है उस टाइप का जीव पूरा डेवलप होके मेटामोफोसिस कंप्लीट मेटामोफोसिस बाहर आएगा उसकी बिफोर की ये एक्टिविटी है वीडियोग्राफिकली चलो इंसेक्ट्स आर सो सेल्फ रिलायंट दे आर सो पावरफुल दे कैन मैनेज एवरी ये बंडल इंसेक्ट है छोटी छोटी टहनियां तोड़ेगा उसको चिपकाएगा उसका घर बनाएगा उसके अंदर रहेगा और ट्रैवल करेगा इतनी सारी चिपका दी है फिर भी घर पूरा बना नहीं है एक और तो उसकी शक्ति देखिए वॉट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग्स इज डूइंग इट्स रोलिंग ऑल दैट स्टिक चलो इनसे बहुत मेहनती होते हैं लेकिन थोड़ा सा बुद्धू भी होते हैं कैसा बुद्धू एक थोड़ा सा डंग रोलर इनसे का मजा देखिए अब ये थोड़ा सा बुद्धू है थोड़ा थोड़ा हमारे जैसा ही है ये पेल्ट बता है आपको है ना उसको लेके जाना है उसके घर में और जोर लगा के हिस्सा पूरा जोर लगा के चल रहा है अकेला ही है अकेला ही रहेगा खुद की शिकार है खुद ही खाएगा लेकिन थोड़ा सा दिमाग से बुद्धू है खींच तो लाया और जब अंदर जाने की कोशिश की तो सोफा सेट बाहर मालिक अंदर अब ना सोफा सेट हिल पा रहा है ना मालिक बाहर आ पा रहा है थोड़ा सा मेजरमेंट इंजीनियरिंग में जरा कमी हो गई कुछ तो भी गड़बड़ हो गई चलो आगे जाएंगे निर्मे जब मैं की चीफ गेस्ट गया था नीरी नागपुर वहां पर मैं सीएसआर फाउंडेशन डे के लिए चीफ गेस्ट उन्होंने बुलाया था मेरे उन्होंने मैंने उनको सत्तर वीडियोस बताए थे ये आधा घंटा मेरे लिए नहीं पुरता यार ये एक घंटा होना अब तब मैं जॉगिंग के लिए सवेरे निकला तो मैंने देखा है कि यार एक स्पाइडर नीटिंग कर रही है कैमरा गले में ही था वीडियो ले लिया सी द परफेक्ट मीटरिंग ऑफ दैट परफेक्ट वर्क हाउ डेक्सरस इट इज दोनों हाथ से बराबर वो नीटिंग कर रही है थ्रेडिंग कर रही है क्या मेजरमेंट चला रहा है स्टिल दैट हार्ड वर्क विद स्माइलिंग फेस जस्ट लाइक अ डॉल दैट्स द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ दैट इंसेक्ट दैट्स वॉट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट सी विद अ स्माइलिंग फेस द डॉल इज ओवर वर्किंग और ये कैसे किस लिए किया सो दैट शी कैन प्रिडेट ऑन समथिंग और जब एक आध ग्रास ऑपर उसमें फंस जाता है तो तीन घंटे जब लगे इतना सब पूरा नीटिंग करने के लिए एक मिनट भी नहीं लगेगा पूरा तटाथ तटाथ टूटने में बस चालू हो गई कुश्ती जितना जाला बुना था एक झट में ऑफकोर्स द स्पाइडर इज डिफरेंट वन बट द स्टोरी इज द सेम इट्स हैपनिंग ऑल ऑल द वाइल्ड विद एवरी स्पाइडर आउट देयर जब तक कि वो स्टिंग नहीं करेगा उसे वेनम नहीं इंजेक्ट करेगा तब तक ये चलती रहेगी दादागिरी और फिर शांत हो गए वहां से फिर वो फूड बनेंगे एक बार मैं ट्रैवल कर रहा था तो एक कैटरपिलर पत्ते खा रही थी मैंने सोचा चलो यार एक्टिविटी मिल गई तो मैं उसके सामने बैठ गया और जैसे ही बैठ गया उसने उसकी बॉडी लैंग्वेज ही बदल दी आप भी अमेज रह जाओगे उसने नहीं नहीं बोलना चालू कर दिया मैं नहीं माखन खाए 
मेरे हर क्वेश्चन का जवाब उसके पास नहीं है एलेक्सा Do you need development? No, no, no. Do you need construction? No, no, no. That you will not. Do you need conservation programs for you? No, no. That you will not. So every question, she says no. One minute ka video mein baitha raha tha. She is trying to communicate with me. She is trying to say something to me. See in her eyes. See in her eyes. It's a human being out there. Only legs and hands and whatever we have organs they are missing there. and the blood the hemocol inside ye bahut aasani se hota hai dr raju ke liye ye kaam hai with a lizard by that <laughs> isi conference mein award kar denge aur unko phd jaisa kyun kar rahe ho aap <laughs> mere ko bhi acha lagega seedha 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 so much love chalo isse stop kar denge aage jayenge ek fantastic dikhega एकदम से पैथेटिक एकदम से पैथेटिक हाँ एकदम पैथेटिक एक ग्रास ऑपर सॉरी प्लेन ग्रास येलो का मेथिंग उड़ते 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 एक स्पाइडर के जाले में जा फंस गया और मैं बैठ गया वहाँ पे मेरे को लगा ये बहुत बड़ी स्टोरी है एक दूजे के लिए होने वाला है आई टुक इट अब कुछ नहीं बोलूँगा ना आप कुछ बोल पाओगे डेथ कम्स लाइक दिस इवन यू कैन नॉट कंट्रोल इट एंड स्टॉप इट एट द डोर स्टेप्स it comes and comes even if in this ecstatic moment of anybody's life to dheere dheere bad raha hai we shall increase the speed both are alive remember yamadut apna kaam kar raha hai aap dekho अब स्ट्रगल देखो कोई मरना नहीं चाहता कितना भी प्यार रहे न यू डाय आई शैल लिव ए फॉर एवर सेप्रेशन इज अ मस्ट सेप्रेशन इज अ मस्ट यू ऑल्सो डिपार्ट फॉर सम मोमेंट फॉर टी ब्रेक और समथिंग लाइक दैट सो दिस इज अड स्टोरी हैपनिंग इट्स बियॉन्ड योर आइडेंटिफिकेशन टेक्निक्स इट्स अ स्टोरी आउट देयर जस्ट लाइक ह्यूमन्स this is the separation and this is the agent of separating everything in it the life and death between this mr yamraj <laughs> chalo ek bahut bada dusra pathetic ek grass hopper hai jo main still photos mein bataya tha aur jiske pair wagar toot gaye hain lekin uski life hai wo zinda hai to kaise jiyega yaar bahut bahut pathetic hai wo see it iske sab pair toot gaye dekho ek ye pair bacha hai ek wo pair bacha hai wo kha raha hai yaar जब तक जिंदा है खाना तो पड़ेगा और कौन उसको हेल्प करेगा मदद करेगा कहा इनके लिए कोई रैंप वगैरह बने हैं या कोई व्हीकल बनाए हैं ना वी कैन नॉट वी कैन नॉट इवन इंटरफेयर विद इट बिकॉज वी डोंट सी इट आई सी इट बिकॉज आई एम प्लेस इट दैट्स दैट्स अनदर पार्ट बट सी इट हाउ पैथेटिक इट इज उसका स्ट्रगल देखिए यार क्या आइडेंटिफिकेशन करूं मैं इसका ये तो अपनी आइडेंटिटी खो चुका है, है ना चलो इतना काफी आई थिंक एक एकदम से अमेजिंग एकदम से अननोन आप डिफाइन कीजिए उसे मेरे को कुछ नहीं पता ये क्या है इट्स अ लावा फ्लो आउट देयर हाउ मेनी ऑफ देम इन मैथमेटिशियन इफ सर इज देयर जस्ट काउंट देम एंड टेल मी हाउ मेनी ऑफ देम हमने यहां बहुत 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 चर्चा की कितने हो सकते हैं चलो बताइए लेस अ मैन ऑफ लिटरेचर दैट्स वाई इज सो क्लेवर सो बीटी थैंक यू अब ये तो हो गया इनका फ्लो ये हो सकते हैं कोई लेकिन ये भी ये क्यों है ये गरबा क्यों खेल रहे हैं अभी राउंड राउंड इट्स गरबा आउट देयर सीट और ये मेरे स्कूल में हो रहा था मैं घर से कैमरा बुलाया और ले लिया सब गालियां दे रहे कि शेवड़े सर आप वो आपका पीरियड है और ये क्या कर मतलब ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है वो होता रहेगा ये कभी नहीं होगा देर इज नो रिटेक और ये कभी भी ट्रैप कैमरा से नहीं किया हूं मैं आई गो देर पर्सनली ऑलमोस्ट गो देर और डेली आई कैन नॉट लिव विदाउट देम दे कॉल मी दे हंट मी आई ड्रीम अबाउट देम दैट रेनबो ब्लू ग्रास ऑपर आई यूज टू ड्रीम अबाउट दैट एंड आई फाउंड आउट बट इतना कम है एक जंगल में बुल्ढाणा के जंगल में 40-50 मिले सर 40 पचास टाइगर हो सकते हैं ग्रास ऑपर नहीं ग्रास ऑपर चालीस पचास हजार मिलने चाहिए 
कि क्या रेशो बन गया है इनसे कहाँ जा रहे हैं कोई सोच रहा है इसके बारे में और ऐसी ह्यूमेनिटेरियन आउटलुक से कोई बी ह्यूमेन यार बिकॉज ऑफ सी दिस इज हैपनिंग कैसे चलेगा ये और इनकी तो बाकी ये स्टोरी है और एक थोड़ा सा एक यंग जनरेशन के लिए यहाँ बहुत सारे यंग बैठे हैं जो सब व्हीकल्स ड्राइव कर सकते हैं उनके लिए है जब डैश बैठती है जब क्रैश होता है आपकी गाड़ी किसी से टकराती है तो क्या हो सकता है बिना हेलमेट के दिस हेज टेकन सम डैश दैट हेड पार्ट इज इंजर्ड इट डज नॉट नो हाउ टू मूव लॉस्ट इट बैलेंस एंड एवरीथिंग द सेंस इज इट्स अबाउट टू डाय उल्टा उल्टा चल रहा है ये देखो यहां पे डैमेज थे और सब यहां से वो सीक्रेट हो रहा है वो जो भी लिक्विड अंदर है वेरी पैथेटिक वन सो दीज आर द स्टोरीज फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू वेरी मच यस यस आई डेंट अंडरस्टैंड थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच it's not it's not me it's the insects that are inspiring me and i am just i am the doer i am i am there always thank you thank you very much any any questions if you have please ask me otherwise we shall proceed <coughs> i i don't have a question but uh, it's a suggestion from uh, because there's a lot of biology sitting here lot of i think 99 percentage scientific science students i mean those pictures were amazing i also been doing photography for uh, insect for almost 18 20 years but uh, there's also some of the finest pictures i seen and the videos also so one suggestion is that when you do talk like this uh, you should talk biology okay instead of romanticizing this like i'll tell you one interesting story about uh, that uh, dung beetle dung beetles life is actually they roll dung all those things they go underground they'll come out from other way so instead of romanticizing probably you can talk about how the they the uh, male actually roll the dung and gift it to female both of them roll it together then they break it and lay inside those stories can be told even the grasshopper grasshopper you, it's the story has to be there's a grasshopper what you showed which goes underwater which stay there for almost 4 minutes so those stories should be told i think instead of you know romanticizing this uh, this is a one suggestion from my that would have been made bit more uh, 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 audience like this would have been a better thing uh, this is my personal thing but it was fantastic to just to see this uh, the this should be some you know interesting stories yeah thank you but <coughs> some of the finest pictures and videos i've seen it yeah it's a i never seen those kind of uh, you know insect images i mean isliye aaya hu aapko thoda sa alag duniya mein le jaane ka hi prayas tha i i maine pehle hi vikas ji se kaha tha ki sir main technical kuch baat hai karunga nahi kyunki main janta nahi hu itna jab main janta nahi hu why should i commit such mistakes here in front of you you know it why should i go wrong so instead of what i know i showed it i have defined what i felt like and my target is the same common man ke liye romanticism sai jab tak nahi karoge jab tak koi dusri bhasha mein unki bhasha mein unke experience se jod ke jab tak nahi bataoge wo interest nahi lenge to main wahi kar raha hu ab schools mein jata hu colleges mein jata hu zoology ke department mein jata hu un sabko batata hu ki yaar study entom wo mere ko puchte hai sir entomology ke karne ke baad humko job opportunities kuch hai mere ko socha yaar mere ko nahi pata main ye hobby karke kar raha hu so aisa hai टेक्निकल नॉलेज मैं ले रहा हूँ मैं अभी सीख रहा हूँ वही बात कर रहा हूँ जैसे आप हो वैसे मेरे को बनना है आई एम ऑन द ट्रैक दैट्स वाई मेरे को अच्छा लगा कि यार एक चलो है मैन ऑफ लिटरेचर एक तो बैठा है एक बंदा रॉन्ग मैन इन द वर्कर्स पैराडाइज जैसा है अब मैं आ गया हूँ चलो दो हो गए दो से तीन हो जाएंगे संख्या बढ़ने वाली है सो so, <laughs> चलो और कुछ समथिंग टू से सो विथ एडवेंसमेंट इन टेक्नोलॉजी एक्चुअली and there are some websites you can check it out they are using the insect patterns to develop uh, like uh, dress patterns and uh, use uh, um, re uh, generating revenue from that mm -hmm. there is one website uh, the holotype mm -hmm. uh, and another thing actually uh, we can uh, like use these kind of technology and uh, these kind of uh, persons to uh, enhance our uh, invertebrate library in museums actually uh, there uh, there was one um, event that happened in london natural history museum one photographer was hired to uh, like uh, regenerate the pictures of <coughs> hundreds of years old uh, invertebrates and he did it 
he uh, made posters uh, of uh, this big size. Uh, uh, this is this project is called Micro Sculptures. You can check it out. This is very interesting. Actually, these can uh, help in uh, conservation awareness about uh, the smaller things which we can uh, cannot see with open uh, like naked eyes. Thank you. Thank you very much for the suggestion. मैं इसी काम कर रहा हूँ थोड़ा सा एस्थेटिक्स ज़्यादा मैं उसके लाने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ मैं जानबूझ के ये कर रहा हूँ कि एस्थेटिक्स के लिए जाना चाहिए एक कलाकार की दृष्टि से इस दुनिया को देख रहा हूँ क्योंकि मुझे उसे बहुत बहुत आनंद दिखता है वो आनंद कैप्चर करने की बात कर रहा हूँ मूड्स ऑफ इंसेक्ट कैसे होंगे वो कैप्चर करने की बात कर रहा हूँ तो थोड़ा सा टेक्निकल से हटके करना पड़ेगा ऐसा लग रहा है साइकोलॉजी के अपने पास एंकरिंग भी वही है जो साइकोलॉजी जानते हैं तो साइकोलॉजी वाले साइकोलॉजी की बात जान जाएंगे मन की बात है ये बस मन की बात आपके सामने पेश करने आया था थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आलोक जी मैं निवेदन करूंगा डॉक्टर एलिजाबेथ थोमस जी से एक बार दोबारा कि वो आगे आए और हमारे प्रेजेंटर छोटी सी ट्रीट देना चाहूंगा चलने दीजिए आप आलोक चलते चलते मेरे ये गीत याद रखना कभी अलविदा ना कहना कभी अलविदा ना कहना रोते हंसते बस यू ही तुम गुनगुनाते रहना कभी अलविदा ना कहना कभी अलविदा ना कहना बीच राह में दिल भर बिछड़ जाए कहीं हम मगर और सुनी सी लगे तुम्हें जीवन की ये डगर हम लौट आएंगे तुम यू ही बुलाते रहना कभी अलविदा ना कहना कभी अलविदा ना कहना अमेजिंग We Thank should probably you. get Thank a judge from Indian Idol as well from the next time. <laughs> great. Okay, great. There it is. Thank you so much, Sudhir ji, for being the chair for the session, and thank you so much to Alok ji for the singing, for all the stories and the wonderful pictures and videos of the wildlife and the insect world. And thank you so much to Dr. Elizabeth. Yes, Zoda Zalia, please. So we are we are now moving at a good pace. Let me call upon the last second session of this day, probably one of the most awaited sessions yet again because it's about the wildlife crime, trafficking of lesser known animal species of Madhya Pradesh and its mitigation. Yes, this is going to be a solo presentation by. मिस्टर कौशिक मॉन्डल जी मैं चाहूंगा तालियों से हम उनका स्वागत करें इस मंच पे ही होल्ड्स एन एमएससी इन जूलॉजी एंड एम इन बायोटेक एंड ही हैज बिन वर्किंग विद द वाइल्ड लाइफ क्राइम कंट्रोल ब्यूरो सिंस 12 इयर्स और इस ही इंस्टीट्यूशन के वॉलेंटियर्स भी हमारे साथ मौजूद हैं एंड मैं चाहूंगा मोहम्मद Yes. So, एक बार फिर से आप सबको टाइटल बताना चाहूंगा सेशन का वाइल्ड लाइफ क्राइम ट्रैफिकिंग ऑफ लेसर नोन एनिमल स्पीशीज ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश एंड इट्स मिटिगेशन एंड एज आई सेट दिस दिस सेशन विल बी प्रेजेंटेड टू यू बाय कौशिक मॉन्डल जी होल्स एन एम एस जूलॉजी एम फिल एंड बायोटेक and working with the wildlife crime control bureau since 12 long years long time there he is zoda taliyon se unka swagat karenge main vivek sir se nivedan karna chahunga vivek singh baghel ji se aur mohammad kafik ji se main nivedan karna chahunga wo aage aaye और एक सैपलिंग के द्वारा हमारे प्रेजेंटर का अभिवादन करें जोरदार तालियां प्लीज
Thank you so much, sir. I would now request Kaushik ji to please move ahead and ignite this much awaited presentation. Thank you, Siddharth ji. So, first of all, hello and uh, good evening, everyone. Myself, Inspector Kaushik Mandal from uh, Wildlife Crime Control Bureau, Government of India. And uh, first of all, I uh, like to thank the organizer. Okay, but almost I am, though I am a student of geology, but uh, what I can say, uh, your presence, like uh, such eminent scientists, professors, and uh, some energetic people, research biologists, हम लोग जैसे ही कभी मीटिंग में जाते हैं सेमिनार या ट्रेनिंग में जाते हैं बेसिकली आवर प्रोजेक्ट्स आर काइंड ऑफ बोरिंग काइंड ऑफ थिंग वी टॉक अबाउट स्पाई एजेंट्स इनफॉर्मर सम थ्री नॉट थ्री इन्वेस्टिगेशन काइंड ऑफ थिंग तो आज काफी दिन बाद मुझे ऐसे लगा कि मैं अपने यूनिवर्सिटी के बैंक्स में बैठा हूँ और काफी सारे जो नॉलेजेबल लोग हैं उनको उनका बात सुन रहा हूँ जैसे सिद्धार्थ जी ने ऑलरेडी मेरा इंट्रोडक्शन दिए हैं आई एम ए मास्टर डिग्री होल्डर फ्रॉम जूलॉजी एंड रिसर्च इन कैंसर बायोलॉजी तो लास्ट ट्वेल्व फिफ्टीन ईयर्स आई एम डूइंग सम वर्क इन क्राइम कंट्रोल सो बेसिकली आप लोगों को सुन के स्पेशली अभी लास्टली जो आलोक जी को सुन रहे थे इज ए हैप्पी फील मोमेंट इन साइड द हार्ट सो एनी वे टू स्टार्ट विथ हम लोग इसमें विल सी दो स्पीसीज basically been found in uh, mp lesser known obviously and uh, in wildlife trade so sir okay so start with we can say it's a global data i have taken you can uh, see that uh, wildlife trade is in fourth number at the moment just followed by drug in number 1 arms human trafficking and wildlife crime and it's a global data it's not only about the india but it's a global data basically a custom data and uh, if you think about wildlife crime 20 years back 25 years back it's uh, not even in uh, number 15 number 20 kind of thing but uh, unfortunately it's uh, growing and it's uh, coming already it's uh, within number uh, fifth position number fourth position so in this uh, slide we can see that i make wildlife crime in the center and some other crime is along with uh, wildlife crime if we uh, we may heard of uh, kajiranga national park na kajiranga is famous for uh, one horn rhino but what is uh, happening in kajiranga because basically wildlife crime is a demand oriented crime demand is coming from outside i am not talking about some crime like uh, somebody is killing some wild boar and then eating is uh, meat because my topic is uh, in general in uh, trafficking wildlife trafficking so i am thinking somebody has kill a deer eat that meat and now he is uh, try to smuggle that skin out of india out of state or anywhere else so in that case kajiranga is uh, very famous for one horn rhino as uh, there are number of one on rhino you can just visit and see one on rhino 1 km me ek rhino dikhenge then uh, another 1 km you can see another uh, one uh, horn rhino there but uh, thing is like that ke uh, unfortunately during 2010 11 ke aas paas uh, china make its demand like uh, other wildlife crime this rhino horn uh, price in international market folded around 10 15 times higher if it is 100 rupees in 2010 in 2011 12 it's become 1000 rupees or so so it's a huge increase in international market and those people who are living around forest fringe areas like uh, the scarbi you may heard about some insurgent groups there scarbi bodo and ulfas kind of insurgent groups they take advantage of that and they started killing rhino so there are not only the poachers who are killing now those insurgent groups are now involved before that what they are doing in 2010 2009 
1990 or something like that, we go 10, 20, 40 years back, they are doing the bank robbery, they are kidnapping. So they have to move out from the forest. And whenever you are moving out, there is a possibility to catch by some enforcement department, some police people or something like that. But when you already have source inside the forest area, then you just kill and just sending out. That means you have less opportunity to catch by some enforcement department, in case the forest officer or maybe the police officers. So here I'm saying that mod, ma, this ma, money laundering, counterfeiting, corruption, violence, in case this is a case of violence, those insurgent groups doesn't need any kind of money. What they need, they just need the arms. In the uh, year 2012-2013, one rhino, if somebody killed and send it to Myanmar and then Vietnam or China, they just uh, do it as butter trade, exchange of goods, like they just send one rhino horn, and against that, they will bring six to seven or eight AK-56 rifles, and arms, and animations. So this is the kind of trend at the moment. If we are thinking about wildlife crime, it's not a single crime. We are doing wildlife crime associated with other crimes, especially if we think about AMP, narcotics is a thing that is associated with criminal who are doing something, trade in narcotics. Now they are also involved in wildlife crime because of those money. So here also you can see this is a graph of uh, wildlife trade in basic. If you think of the big cats like uh, tiger or leopard or something like that, it's only 2% in global data. But the most lesser known items are the much more, like uh, rosewood, Dalbergia sisho, Dalbergia latifolia, those kind of woods are smuggled out of India. It's a huge, it's 35% at the moment, and then most number of smuggled items at the moment in the world. Elephant, then uh, some assorted reptiles, agarud you may know if you are from northeast part, pangolins is another lesser known species at the moment is in 5%. So now come into the first pieces. It's uh, at the moment is the second most smuggle item, smuggle uh, mammal we can say, and the most smuggle wildlife at the moment in the earth. India se bhi bahut jada ja raha hai, and second from uh, Africa. So basically, it is used for traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, jisko kehte hain China mein. It's used in Vietnam. It's used in Thailand. It's used in uh, China also. So basic thing is Chinese medicine, also using like this cloth and for meat, and uh, they also produce some drugs, uh, like some rave party going on. So they use the drugs. Some uh, speaker is saying like the scorpions thing, like some they are out nowadays using the rave party is going on, especially in the metro city. So these kind of drugs they are extracting and using as narcotics. Now you can see. It's from 2007 to 2018. How much fold has been increased in pangolins, pangolins uh, poaching? Second, uh, the graph you can see. In 2007, the blue color is mentioned as a live pangolin, and the yellow one is mentioned as a scales. 2007, there's a number of cases has been identified. Most of the cases are for live pangolin case, live pangolin seizures. And the year passed by, now 2016, 17, onwards 2020, 21, 22 maybe, scales has been increased and live pangolins has been decreased. That means nowadays people are trying to sell, matlab, uh, jo trafficking karne ka koshish kar rahe, most of them are, we are catching our pangolin scales. Because live animals are easy to caught. Kahi pe bhi koi traffic kar rahe, somebody is catching like live pangolin kya hota hai, roll, roll ho jate. But you are carrying any live animal, any turtle, any tortoise kind of thing, any snake kind of thing, so oh, move karte hain. That time it will be easy for anyone to detect. So pangolin, because in MP, in central India, even in southern and the northeast part of India, there is tradition that pangolin ko log maar ke kha jate hain. Meat khana, there's uh, some uh, tribal groups are there ke meat wo kha rahe hain for hundreds of years. But thing is like that, that they used to throw the scale of the scale. They they just used to throw out those scales. They didn't know that there was no value of the scale. As there is a demand, aya, to there is some groups of people coming outside and entering into these forest fringe areas. And they are saying, those you eat the meat, what do you do with the scale? Ko. They are saying, we are just throwing out those scales in our field. So they said, don't throw it, give it to us. 
हम जस्ट इसको मे बी फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज मे बी हाँ थाउजेंड रुपीज मे बी विद इन टू थाउजेंड रुपीज हम लोग पर किलो के हिसाब से इसको खरीदेंगे जो पर्टिकुलर इंडिविजुअल था जो ट्राइबल कम्युनिटी था फॉर देम इट जस्ट ए फूड उनके लिए क्या है उसको वो खरीद लिए मतलब उसको जंगल से पकड़े दे मीट को खाए एंड देन पहले उनके लिए दे जस्ट यूज टू थ्रो आउट अभी उनके लिए जस्ट एक्स्ट्रा मनी लाइक फाइव हंड्रेड या थाउजेंड रुपीज और टू थाउजेंड रुपीज जो भी आए दैट इज समथिंग लाइक ए काइंड ऑफ एक्स्ट्रा मनी फॉर दिस स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ मनी दे आर नाउ गिविंग दोज टू दिस मिडिल मैन एंड मिडिल मैन आर कलेक्टिंग दे नोज हुआर टू गो एंड दे आर कलेक्टिंग वेन दिस पैंगुलिन स्केल बिकम ट्वेंटी किलो फिफ्टी किलो हंड्रेड किलो देन दे स्मगल आउट आउट ऑफ द इंडिया सो दिस इज हैपनिंग अनदर स्पीसीज इट्स मंगूज मंगूज और नेवला you know the specialists in southern part of india this uh, items have been this animal has been rampantly killed and after killing those hair has been taken some places like in up there's called serpot some places in uh, near kolkata there are some uh, small kind of factories are there they are preparing those bus, um, brushes and uh, selling out initially we can uh, like 10 years 20 years back you can found those brushes even in our local market nowadays is has been reduced but still people are making and specially exporting out of the country so it's another animal found in mp and there are places where those these animal have been poached for this this kind of wildlife crime control bureau runs its operation every year called operation clean art and to obtain like 1 kilo of mongoose hair almost 40 to 50 animals have to be killed then the next animal already those animals have been covered like a forest owl it is been very rare but other owls especially the time of diwali it's a season specific uh, poaching or hunting we can say people used to uh, capture those owls during just before one month or one and half months before diwali and as a ritual they sell those people who has लाइक like, जिनको चाहिए दिवाली के टाइम पूजा करना मे बी सम पीपल पूजा करके छोड़ देते हैं सम यूज टू स्लॉटर देम मार दे भी देते हैं इट्स डिपेंड्स ऑन कौन से जगह में हो रहा है बट सो इट्स ए डार्कनेस इन दिवाली यू कैन से देन कम्स दोज टाटल्स मेनी और टाटल्स फाउंड सम आर फ्रेश वाटर सम मे बी फाउंड इन रिवर आइन एंड मोस्टली टाटल आर यूज फॉर दे आर मीच इफ इट इज फ्रेश वाटर people of west bengal people in assam and also by is goes to bangladesh area for their meat purpose if not meat mostly other like uh, star tortoises they are used as a pet trade sometimes those calapi and those their sales have been used to prepare some musical instrument or maybe some spectacle kind of thing so these are things happening here now this ghadiyal ghadiyal are basically killed for this kind of shoes bags and this kind of thing now snakes snakes basically killed for their skin for preparing belt bag shoes kind of thing venom is another thing venom wo kya karte hain basically they use some chemicals make it some white color dust kind of powder and then they smuggle out अनदर थिंग इज दो मुआ सांप जिसको कहते हैं रेड सैंड बोआ खंडवा बुरहानपुर साइड में बहुत है दे आर डूइंग इज लाइक समबडी के उसमें रखो के अपने पास पैसा आएगा इसका एडवांटेज लेते हुए दो सम पीपल आर वट दे आर डूइंग स्पेशली यू हैव सीन इन खंडवा साइड बुरहानपुर साइड एंड सम प्लेसेज आर बॉर्डरिंग विथ महाराष्ट्र दे जस्ट कैप्चर वन स्नेक टेक ए वीडियो एंड पुट इट एंड यूट्यूब देन डिलीवरेटली दे मैंशन दे आर मोबाइल नंबर सो so, आपको वीडियो दिखेगा कोई एनफोर्समेंट डिपार्टमेंट को मे बी कोई समबडी हु इज एन वर्किंग इन एन जी ओ सम एनर्जेटिक पीपल जिनका वाइल्ड लाइफ के ऊपर एंथू हो तो दे कॉल हम लोग को इन्फॉर्मेशन देंगे मे बी पुलिस और लोकल फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट को इन्फॉर्मेशन देंगे देन एज ए डिकॉय कस्टमर हम लोग उनके पास जाएंगे दिस इज द बेसिक थिंग कि डील होगा आप, आप दो लाख रुपया लेके आओ पाँच लाख रुपया हो समथिंग लाइक दैट और जैसे ही आप वहाँ पर पहुँचेंगे दैट्स लाइक कैंड ऑफ फोर ट्वेंटी आप वहाँ पर पहुँचेंगे he has the photo but he didn't has any animal or like that aapko aisa jagah bulayenge aapse maar peet luta muta karega aapke paas jitna bhi paisa maybe you are not carrying a 2 lakh rupees or something like that but you have a watch or maybe a mobile or something they will vanish with that thing so they have a single piece of uh, snake they use it for one year along after that the species may die and they 
जस्ट लेफ्ट देन अगेन कैच अगेन मेक ए वीडियो अगेन पीपल को लूटना दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग ऑल्सो है एंड स्नैक स्नैक वेन ऑन स्किन दिस आर द थिंग्स नाउ यू कैन सी इट्स पीपल फ्रॉम तिब्बत वेन एवर वी थिंक ऑफ टाइगर और लेपर्ड पोचिंग वट बेसिकली वी थिंक कोई भी फोटो आता है सम्बड़ी सम डिपार्टमेंट हैज कैच सम टाइगर स्किन और लेपर्ड स्किन तो हम लोग उसको वैल्यू बहुत ज़्यादा देते हैं बट इंटरनेशनल मार्केट में क्या है कि दस क्लॉज दोज टीथ दोज बोन्स आर मोर कॉस्टलियर बिकॉज इट यूज टू बी प्रिपेयर दोज मेडिसिन काइंड ऑफ थिंग एंड दोज स्कीन्स आर बेसिकली गोइंग आउट इन आइदर यूरोपियन कंट्रीज वेर टू मेक सम जैकेट्स और समथिंग लाइक दैट और मे बी द तिब्बत वेर पीपल यूज टू वेर दैट आप यहाँ पर अगर आप स्कीन को अच्छे से देखोगे देर आर लेपर्ड स्किन देर आर टाइगर स्किन बट आप नीचे की तरफ देखोगे देर आर सम स्किन लाइक वॉटर स्किन हाँ पीपल आर ऑल्सो यूजिंग वॉटर एज ए स्किन और यहाँ पर इंटरेस्टिंग फैक्ट ये है लाइक दे आर तिब्बत में भी जो गाँव हैं दोज गाँव में जो विलेजर्स है देर हैव सम ग्राम पंचायत आपके जैसे हम लोग यहाँ पे होता है ग्राम पंचायत प्रधान इफ इज ए प्रधान ही विल ओवर ए टाइगर स्किन इफ समबडी हिज इज जूनियर ही विल यूज ए लेपर्ड स्किन सम नॉर्मल गाँव वाले ही यूज यूल वॉटर स्किन सो दिस इज द हायर आर की इज देयर सो दो दैट मीन्स नॉट ओनली टाइगर नॉट ओनली लेपर्ड दोज कैरिस्मेटिक स्पीसीज लेसर नॉन स्पीसीज आर ऑल्सो बीन कील्ड बिकॉज न मास पीपल इज देयर टाइगर स्किन इज वन एंड ग्राम पंचायत प्रधान इज वन बट नंबर ऑफ विलेजर्स इज फिफ्टी नंबर ऑफ विलेजर्स मे बी हंड्रेड सो वॉटर स्किन वी नीडेड हंड्रेड थाउजेंड सो लेसर नॉन स्पीसीज दैट्स वाई कील्ड ए रैंडम वे दिस इज द वॉटर स्किन सम वॉल स्किन देन सम सम फाउल If you think about this kind of jungle fowl, red jungle fowl or uh, grey jungle fowl, what we think is mostly killed for their meat. If those fowl came out, especially this is a found in uh, uh, southern part of India, some part of Madhya Pradesh, and also they are counterpart the red jungle fowl found in MP. They are not only killed for meat, but they are also killed for their neck feather. The neck feather they have this is a colourful feather you can see. This feather basically going out out of the country and this interesting way they use the foreign post office. If you go foreign post office in Kolkata, in Delhi, in Mumbai, you can see there is a number of packet only containing those feathers. Feathers are used for fishing, fly fishing they used to call, and this is going like European countries where people has a laser time. टू फिशिंग यहाँ पे हम लोग दूसरे एनिमल को देके जैसे चाड़ा वाड़ा बना के देते हैं दे यूज दो अट्रैक्टिव फेदर टू कैच फिशेस एंड इज गोइंग लाइक रैम्पर्ट दिस इज द सम फोटोग्राफ्स फ्रॉम फॉरन पोस्ट ऑफिस यू कैन सी मेनी आर बर्ड्स कलरफुल बर्ड्स हैव बीन कील्ड मे बी एज ए होल एंड दे आर मेकिंग पैकेट्स एंड स्मगलिंग में वन ऑफ द इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग इज देयर दिस पर्टिकुलर आइटम हैज नो वैल्यू वैन यू कील्ड इट्स ए फ्री फॉर द पर्टिकुलर हंटर somebody has taken maybe with a 100 rupees each skin and they have prepared a number of maybe 50 number of bags and when those bags are going through those scanner what happened the custom officials when they are examining this 50 numbers of bags are going they are able to catch only 10 numbers of bags and those 40 numbers of bags are free they are going out so from that particular 40 numbers of bag they make out all those money because it's a free item you just go and kill a particular animal it's a free for the hunter you will give a 50 rupees for the hunter and you will collect a particular skin now you have a 100 numbers of uh, particular feather and you are sending if the, out of 100 if 50 reaches destination he will get all those money so he मतलब जो स्मगलर होते हैं उनके लिए ये नहीं मायने रखता कि आधा आइटम पकड़ा गया है so that's kind of thing basically is happening through the foreign post office this insects is a earlier trend the people used to keep those insects as a wall hanging kind of thing aajkal it thoda reduce hua hai but still some insects abhi sir dikha rahe the ki there are such a beautiful beautiful butterflies and other insects are there foreign people get attracted they just ask those uh, people to kill them they paste it and then they send or they come along and take those items some sea shells is may not found in uh mp but still if we visit some places like tourist spots and some uh, temple area those are the some uh, selected uh, protected uh, as per wildlife protection act sea seals those are uh, used in wildlife crime some corals or we called it munga this is the uh, topmost is a black coral 
and similarly uh, those other corals also brain corals the staghorn corals also used initially it has been used for cement factories nowadays it has been reduced such a number people are using in some medicine some uh, Ayurvedic medicine also used, but very rarely. This is an interesting item. Anyone have ever seen that? It's called? Hiran. Not Hiran, but near? Hiran. Right, it's a CR Singhi. Uh, most of the item, if you catch 100 of uh, this item, 99% is the probability those items are being fake. But yeah, some uh, people thought that ke, uh, CR ke, uh, sir ko kaat ke jo skull part hai, uske saath kuch skin ko kaat ke, they use as a black magic. So, this is a part of uh, CR singing. Not only those, CR ka jo hota hai, jackal ka jo, especially Haryana side mein, ab Rajasthan side mein jaoge, they used to kill those uh, CR only for their tail purpose. Ab dekhe honge, those jacket mein lagate hain. Basically, those per, uh, jacket mein lagane wala jo skin hai, that comes from outside called raccoon. Abhi government of India as per DGFT ne, uh, raccoon import uh, to regulate kar diye hain, band kar diye hain, but still uh, kya hota hai ke there are some factories in Haryana, they used to uh, jacket jo banate hain, leather jacket, uske saath ho particular uh, collar ko add on karte hain. Abhi somebody is importing hundreds number of raccoon fur legally with the permission of custom department. At the sim uh, simultaneously they add on 50, 100 number of raccoon because who are going to st uh, check their stock. If the stocks is going to be regularly checked only, that time we can catch, otherwise it will be very impossible to catch them. Now this is, somebody is also talking about vulture. It's uh, possibly a Egyptian vulture, very, huh? Egyptian vulture. Very recently, it's in 2022 only, Khandwa mein pakra gaya hai. And that's why I'm asking someone, like uh, Khandwa mein, this is coming from UP. And its destination is Mumbai. And why this bird has been captured and now it's on wildlife trade. Khandwa mein pakra gaya tha, railway ke through ja raha tha. RPF ne pehle isko pakra, then handed over to forest department. Seven uh, uh, Egyptian vulture has been captured. Some uh, passenger have been called, ke haan unko dikha ke koi movement ho raha hai unke seat ke niche. So they have called RPF aaya, unko pakre and then handed over. Unfortunately what happened in that case, ke unke paas aur bhi jada, jo accused tha unko bhi उन्होंने खंडवा में उतार लिए, but unfortunately what happened कि उनके पास और भी Egyptian vulture था, जो Mumbai भी उनका destination पहुंच गया। Mumbai में जैसे station में गया, तो वहाँ पे उनके कोई बंदा आया, उनको पता था कौन से seat के number के नीचे, they came and they also take those uh, seven eight और जो extra number थे। Unfortunately the use of uh, CCTV which are in uh, the Mumbai station, railway station से हम लोग उनको ढूंढ पाए और उसको बाद में recovery कर पाए। So this case is under investigation, ये अभी चल ही रहा है recent का case है। तो इसका अभी हम हम लोगों को पता नहीं कि किस लिए यूज़ कर रहे हैं। That's very interesting कि इसका ले किस लिए जा रहा था। We are uh, मतलब clueless at the moment, but yeah definitely हम लोग कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि कैसे किस लिए और इसको पहले भी actually इसको ले गए हैं। This species uh, very common go or uh, varana species. Most of the varana at the moment you may know Wildlife Protection Act uh, जो 2022 amendment हुआ है। From December onwards we have only two schedules. Before that, we have six schedules. At the moment, we only have two schedules, and most of the Varana species at the moment in schedule one only. Punishments also increased. So Varana scope especially marked the tribal log. That's just for their meat, and then they used to take the skins. Uske baad just photo rakha hua hai. Anyone guess or anyone know this particular? Huh? Hemipenis. Hemipenis, and it's now they called in their. Uh, Business term mein, it's called hatta jodi. Like two hands, ek saath rakha hua hai, to hatta jodi. It's just nothing but a male reproductive organ. They uh, initially killed and they took out that animal. And think that it's found in male only. And those reproductive organ is inside the body. So whenever poachers come and try to kill, they that doesn't know this is a male or it's a female. So if there is a hundreds numbers of uh, hatta jodi has been taken, that means at least 200 numbers of animal to be killed. And it's also a very pathetic. They just inko pakarte hain, upar se isko tang dete hain, and they say heat, niche se aag jala dete hain. It's a very slow process. It will take one day, two days of time. Dheere dheere uska jo mangs hai, uska jo skin hai, it will gone, and those they semi penis will come out. So this is a new business. It's used in black magic purpose. Mitigation. Mitigation to log bhag, ab log, uh, already aap, uh, discuss kiye hain, but think 
जो भी नॉन कैरेस्मेटिक स्पीसीज है एनफोर्समेंट ऑफिशियल के लिए uh, क्योंकि देर आर लाइक फॉरेस्ट एंड स्पेशली अगर पुलिस डिपार्टमेंट में चले जाएंगे आप लोग बेसिक वी आर मतलब साइंस बैकग्राउंड है और मे बी आप जानते हैं कि इस स्पीसीज कौन है देर आर सम डिपार्टमेंट्स लाइक कस्टम्स लाइक पुलिस इवन सम ऑफिशियल फ्रॉम फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट अनफॉर्चुनेट टू से दे इवन डोंट नो दोज फ्लैक्स इफ स्पीसीज हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई सो इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू आइडेंटिफाई द लेसर नोन्स वन हाँ देर आर सम मतलब पीपल जो कभी उस पर्टिकुलर आइटम को देखे नहीं जब देखे ही नहीं तो उनको मालूम नहीं दिस स्पीसीज इज इन शेड्यूल वन और शेड्यूल टू और वर्ड तो इसके लिए उनको बताना उनका सेंसिटाइजेशन अवेयरनेस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेकेंड द लोकल कम्युनिटी इन्वॉल्वमेंट इट्स फॉर एवरीथिंग लाइक आप लोग बात कर रहे थे बेसिकली आदत देन माई टॉपिक आई थिंक एवरी ओन इज पिक अबाउट दैट दे आर कंजर्वेशन स्ट्रैटेजी वट हैपन इज लाइक दैट कि आप कंजर्वेशन करते हो कंजर्वेशन इज अ लॉन्ग टर्म प्रोसेस लाइक यू डन कंजर्वेशन फॉर टेन ईयर्स फॉर ट्वेंटी ईयर्स फिफ्टी ईयर्स देन पर्टिकुलर वन एनिमल विच ए वन नंबर ऑफ स्पीसीज एंड इट टेक टेन ईयर्स ट्वेंटी ईयर्स टू बिकम ट्वेंटी फिफ्टी हंड्रेड एंड देन सडन पोचिंग इवेंट केम एंड इट्स जस्ट फेनिस इट्स जस्ट लाइक पाना इट्स जस्ट लाइक सरिस्का इट टेक हंड्रेड ऑफ ईयर्स टू मेक ए थर्टी और फिफ्टी नंबर्स ऑफ टाइगर बट विद इन फोर फाइव ईयर्स सम पोचिंग इंसिडेंट हैपन एंड ऑल द टाइगर वैनिस्ट नाउ एगेन पाना हैज थर्टी फोर्टी फिफ्टी सिक्सटी नंबर ऑफ टाइगर्स इट टेक टाइम इट टेक ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ऑलमोस्ट टू मेक दिस एंड बट मे बी से सिंगल कोचिंग इवेंट कैन वैनिस ऑल दो स्पीसी सो कम्युनिटी इन्वॉल्वमेंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू मे हार्ड ऑफ संसार चांद हार्ड यू नो ना संसार चांद इज ए वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फिरोसियस पोचर लाइक बीरापन इन साउथ इंडिया सो संसार चांद इज ए इंटरेस्टिंग फेलो ही इज जस्ट इन फ्रॉम डेली बट ही अगेंस्ट हिम देर इज थर्टी सिक्स वाइल्ड लाइफ केसेस बट ही किल्ड ऑलमोस्ट थ्री हंड मोर देन थ्री हंड्रेड टाइगर्स एंड मोर देन टू थाउजेंड लेपर्ड्स बट ही नेवर विजिटेड ए फॉरेस्ट एरिया दैट्स अ इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग ही नेवर विजिटेड रनथम्बो नेवर विजिटेड सरिस्का नेवर विजिटेड पन्ना नथिंग ही जस्ट मेक ए ऑर्गेनाइज ग्रुप लाइक सामोहर इन पदरी सामोहर इन बावरिया दोज नोमैडिक कोचिंग ग्रुप दे हैव मेक ए ऑर्गेनाइज ग्रुप दे जस्ट पुट दोज ग्रुप आप गाँव के पास जाओ जस्ट इन्फ्लुएंस दोज फॉरेस्ट पीपल एंड आस्क वॉट यू डू इफ सम टाइगर और लेपर्ड के मैन की लियो और बाके लो के लियो और काउ वट यू डू दे उस से हम तो गरीब लोग हैं क्या करेंगे गाँव वाले फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट के पास जाएंगे फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट विल इंक्वायर एंड अल्टीमेटली विल टेक सम कॉम्पेंसेशन फ्रॉम अगर इन्वेस्टिगेशन सही रहा तो बट दोज नोमैडिक बाबरिया ग्रुप्स और मे बी सम अदर हंटिंग ग्रुप्स क्या कहेंगे कि आप एक काम करो जस्ट ऐसे ही कोई इंसिडेंट होता है आप हमें बुलाओ आपको कॉम्पेंसेशन जो मिलना था तो उसको मिलेगा ही बट उसके साथ साथ आपके जिसके लिए क्षति पहुंच रहा है हम उसको ही खत्म कर देंगे वी दे जस्ट यूज टू कम दोज ग्रुप्स आर बेसिकली फ्रॉम हरियाणा दिस बावरिया ग्रुप आई एम सेइंग बेसिकली फ्रॉम राजस्थान एंड हरियाणा पादरी यू नो फ्रॉम दिस सेंट्रल पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया बट दे गो ऑल ओवर इंडिया रिसेंटली सम पदरीज है गिर फॉर कटिंग सम वाइट सैंडलवुड सो यू कैन से दे आर गोइंग आउट नॉट ओनली फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेट दे आर गोइंग आउट एवरी कोई भी स्टेट में चले गए वहां पे जाके दे यूज टू मूव अलॉन्ग विद देयर फैमिलीज नॉट ओनली अ सिंगल पर्सन विल गो दे विल गो इन 15 ट्वेंटी नंबर दे आर वाइफ दे आर पेरेंट्स दे आर बच्चे सब लोग लेके जाएंगे दे यूज टू लिव इन टेंस एंड समटाइम्स वेन हम लोगों ने छापामारी किए थे वी यूज टू सीज द फ्रिज यू डजेंट बिलोंग ए पर्टिकुलर टेन से नॉट ओनली बेड्स और समथिंग आलमीरा दे हैव फ्रिज हुक करके हुकिंग करके दे फ्रिज भी अपने पास रखे थे तो एक जगह जाते थे एंड दे जस्ट कीप दो पर्टिकुलर गांव के पास पहुंच गए दो महीने रुके कंबल बेचने लगे फ्रूट बेचने लगे एंड उसके साथ साथ गांव वाले को इन्फ्लुएंस करने लगे जस्ट ए डिपार्टमेंटल फेलो वी यूज टू विजिट सम फॉरेस्ट एरियाज एंड फॉर मेकिंग द खबरीज मुखबीर इन्फॉर्मार्ट बनाने के लिए एज ए डिपार्टमेंट फेलो वी यूज टू गो वो लोग क्या करते हैं गांव में जाएंगे और अपने हिसाब से अपने मुखबिर बनाएंगे वो जाएंगे और गांव के वाले किसी को बताएंगे कि कोई भी ऐसा डेथ होता है जहां पे टाइगर आके सम बफेलो को मार दिए हैं काऊ को माफे मार दिए हैं तो हमें इन्फॉर्म करो वो गांव वालों के पास पहुंचे और बताए कि चलो नेक्स्ट दिन हम क्या करेंगे जब वी जस्ट पुट सम फर्टिलाइजर सम पॉइजन और समथिंग लाइक दैट टाइगर विल कम और नेक्स्ट डे दे विल ईट द मीट सम जलाशय के पास जाएंगे पानी के पास जाके मर जाएंगे आप वहाँ से खाल और हड्डी वगैरह निकाल लोगे मे बी विल गिव सम टू थाउजेंड रुपीज वन टू और समथिंग कम्बल लाइक दैट एंड दे विल ब्रिंग दो स्कीम टू सम मेट्रो सिटीज इन हेयर केस जिससे दे ब्रिंग टू संसार चांद संसार चांद जैसा
एंड बैठे बैठे आपके पास पाँच दस टाइगर स्किन लेपर्ड्स भी मंगा लिए जैसे उन्होंने मंगा लिए ही दिल्ली से मूव नहीं करेंगे वी जस्ट मेक ए फोन कॉल और समथिंग लाइक दैट फिर नेपाल से कोई बंदा आएगा और वही आइटम को दिल्ली का कोई होटल में वसम अनोन प्लेस में देख के वहाँ से डील होकर चला जाएगा इट्स नॉट ओनली फॉर टाइगर और लेपर्ड इट्स फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ स्किन और एनी काइंड ऑफ हड्डी किसी के लिए भी हो सकता है एंड दैट्स ऑल लाइक दैस दोज फेलो कमिंग फ्रॉम द चाइना दोज आर मोस्टली द वाइट कॉलर फेलो सम बिजनेस मैन सम पॉलिटिशियन सम काइंड ऑफ लाइक दैट जो एंड बायर बेसिकली होते हैं दे वेन दे कम फट दे डू दे डजेंट ब्रिंग एनी काइंड ऑफ मनी अलॉन्ग विद देम नाई दैट दे जस्ट दे विल कम विजिट दे विल एंटर इन टू इंडिया मे बी फ्लाइट दिल्ली में फ्लाइट होके गए वहाँ पे पहुँचे कोई होटल में मीटिंग हुआ टाइगर स्किन को देखें एंड देन विल जस्ट गो बैक टू देयर ओन कंट्री ना पैसा लाए ना पर्टिकुलर आइटम को ले गए वट हैपन दे जस्ट कम एंड स्किन के पीछे अपना सिग्नेचर और अपना एक स्टैम्प लगा के चले गए देन दो कैरियर पीपल विल कम मे बी आफ्टर वीक और सो दे विल कम एंड दे विल जस्ट कम एंड मीट इथ संसार चांद और दे आर फेलोज सी दे विल नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन द फ्रंट पार्ट द स्किन न टाइगर स्किन है लेपर्ड स्किन है ऑटर स्किन है कौन सा स्किन है उसमें इंटरेस्टेड नहीं जैसे बैक साइड देखेंगे एंड जस्ट सी दिस सिग्नेचर ऑफ इज बॉस बॉस के सिग्नेचर देखें उनको पैसा दिया आइटम लिए और चले गए वट इज द स्ट्रैटेजी स्ट्रैटेजी का अगर कोई इन्फोर्समेंट डिपार्टमेंट उनको पकड़े तो दे विल कैच हु दस कैरियर नॉट द एंड बायर नॉट दैट वाइट फेलो क्योंकि कैरियर को दस बार पकड़ लेंगे बट एंड बायर के पास पैसा है वो दस बार हजार बार ऐसे करेंगे अब जितने बार नॉर्मली क्या होता है कि फॉरेस्ट या कोई भी पुलिस का डिपार्टमेंट हम लोग वाइल्ड लाइफ क्राइम के किस को पकड़ते हैं एकदम नीचे वाले जो पोचर हैं जो हंटर हैं बट वेरी रेयरली वी यूज टू कैच दोज कैरियर दो मिडिल मैन इवन इस इवन वेरी रेयर के हम लोग एंड बायर तक पहुंच पाए तो बेसिकली कोई भी डिपार्टमेंट के लिए हम लोग कोशिश करते हैं कि एंड बायर को पहुंच पाए क्योंकि एंड बायर को पकड़ेंगे नीचे हंटर को पकड़ना बहुत इजी है आप हंड्रेड्स ऑफ हंटर को पकड़ लेंगे हंड्रेड्स ऑफ पोचर हंड्रेड शिकारी को पकड़ लेंगे इन नेक्स्ट फाइव नेक्स्ट सेवन डेज बिकॉज इंडिया इज अ वेरी पुअर कंट्री और हंड्रेड पोचर आपके लिए आ जाएगा जो आके तुरंत इसको उसी केस को इसीलिए हम लोग जितना उस पर्टिकुलर चेन पे जितना ऊपर जा सकते हैं उनको पकड़ने का कोशिश करते हैं सो थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच डू वी हैव एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस Yes, sir. Please use the mic. On कर. Mic on. हाँ, yes, sir. There's a general perception that nowadays it's like more of inbound trafficking uh, compared to the outbound. If you could just share a bit of things, if it is really true or something. Definitely, that's a good point. Though it's uh, not a topic of today's, but yeah, as he is saying, uh, at present we can see, especially in the border of Indo-Bangladesh and Indo-Nepal border, those are the poorest border. वहाँ से जैसे हम लोग के tiger skin, tiger का part या otter skin या कोई भी wildlife product India से बाहर जा रहा है. इट्स अ सिमिलर केस के वहाँ से बाहर से मिलने वाला दो स्पीसीज आर ऑल्सो कमिंग मोस्टली बाई कैन सर माई एक्सपीरियंस आई कॉट सम थ्री सिम्पनजीज सिम्पनजीज कमिंग फ्रॉम लैंडेड इन बांग्लादेश देन दे यूज एम्बुलेंस बिकॉज बांग्लादेश एंड इंडिया स्पेशली फॉर कोलकाता हैज़ ए एम ओ यू दैट बांग्लादेश पीपल यूज टू गेट फॉर ट्रीटमेंट हॉस्पिटल में कोलकाता में आते रहते हैं एंड दिस एम्बुलेंस को यूज़ करते हुए प्रेस के जो गाड़ी है उसको यूज़ करते हैं दे यूज टू ब्रिंग दोज लाइव एनिमल्स नॉट फॉर लाइक एनी स्किन ऑफ समथिंग लाइक दैट बट लायन रिसेंटली यू हैव कैच अफ्रीकन लायन इन बांग्लादेश बॉर्डर मंकीज आर वेरी कॉमन दिस मार्मोसेट मंकीज आर वन ऑफ द कॉमनेस्ट इफ समथिंग लाइक बर्ड्स दिस आर ऑल्सो कमिंग फ्रॉम दिस नेपाल बॉर्डर इस गोरखपुर के पास जो बॉर्डर है उसके थ्रू मैकाउज एंड दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग आर कमिंग एंड दिस पेट ट्रेडर आज के दिन में क्या है कि गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इज मेक ए परिवेश पोर्ट्रल कि आपके पास कोई एक्जोटिक एनिमल भी हो तो यू हैव टू डिक्लेयर एंड आफ्टर सर्टन टाइम इफ डिड डिक्लेयर देन इट्स आपके पास रखना इट विल बिकम ए इलीगल थिंग बिकॉज नाउ इट नाउ दिस रिसेंट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट अमेंडमेंट सेज के दोज अपेंडिक्स वन एंड अपेंडिक्स टू एनिमल्स ऑफ साइटिस 
the CITES animal also now in Wildlife Protection Act. So before that, the CITES species, if somebody has catched some CITES species, it's only the duty of custom officer or directorate of revenue intelligence, DRI, jinko hum kehte hai, ke they will do the cases. The forest department has no power at the moment. Aaj ke din mein kya hai ke this CITES appendix 1 and 2 mein kuch kuch particular species of plants and animals ko we have included in Wildlife Protection Act. Now the forest and police department has the power to catch them also. Before kya hota tha ke you have to catch those particular live lion, live simpanji, live marmoset, live macaw. Then you have to catch them in the particular exit point like maybe the border, maybe the airport, maybe the dock. आज के दिन में चिन्नई एयरपोर्ट में अगर देखा जाए हर एवरी फाइव सेवन डेज में देर आर कैचेज ऑफ रेप्टाइल्स रेप्टाइल्स वगैरह क्या होता है कि नॉर्मली दे यूज टू कम बाई फ्लाइट और फॉरेन पोस्ट ऑफिस स्नेक रेप्टाइल्स जो मे बी फॉर वन मंथ टू मंथ बिना खाए जिंदा रह जाते हैं उनको पैक करके जस्ट पोस्ट ऑफिस के पोस्टल पैकेज में डाल देते हैं जस्ट नॉर्मल पोस्ट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया का जो पोस्ट है बाहर से आते हैं यहाँ पे आने के बाद दे जस्ट हैव फेक एड्रेसेस दे सम पीपल विल कम इन टू द पोस्ट ऑफिस एंड देन कलेक्ट एंड दे गो देर इज नो समथिंग कॉल्ड डिलीवरी सिस्टम क्योंकि आप अगर उस पर्टिकुलर पार्सल को पकड़ भी लोगे आप एड्रेस को ढूंढोगे पूरा दिल्ली में पूरा कोलकाता में पूरा इंडिया में कहीं पर भी वो एड्रेस मिलेगा नहीं बट दैट पर्टिकुलर फेलो नोस के हाँ कोई एक बंदा जो पोस्ट ऑफिस में उसके साथ शामिल है उनको आके नॉक करेगा मेरा पैकेट आया क्या अगर उसने बोल दिया हाँ मेरे पास है दे विल जस्ट सम मनी वो देगा और उसे कलेक्ट करके ले जाएगा सो दिस आर काइंड ऑफ सिस्ट थिंग इज गोइंग ऑन कि हाँ जैसे समबड़ी इज सही ना कि स्कॉर्पियोन फ्रॉम फॉरन स्कॉर्पियोन सम समबड़ी इज नाउ रिसेंटली वी हैव सीन इन फॉरन पोस्ट ऑफिस के एक बुक के अंदर पूरा काट के बुक के जो पेज है अंदर से काट के दे हैव ब्रिंग अराउंड वन और टू लैक्स टेरेंटूला कितना छोटा छोटा टेरेंटूला के बच्चा एक एक वायल में जो हम लोग बायोटेक्नोलॉजी के नहीं होते हैं जो इसमें हम लोग प्रोटीन या डी एन ए को एनालिस करके नहीं वायल रखते हैं उसके अंदर अंदर हाँ लाइक दिस प्लास्टिक वायल यस 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 कैंगरूज आर कमिंग इन टू अनफॉर्चुनेटली इन एम पी ओनली दिस इज कमिंग फ्रॉम म्यांमार टू इट्स प्लेस कॉल्ड इन वेस्ट बेंगाल सिलीगुड़ी एंड आसाम बॉर्डर Uh, when uh, police people trying to catch them, one or two kangaroo flew away. Initially, there is a four number of kangaroos has been catch. After that, again from jungle, two kangaroo ko pakra gaya. So the kang live kangaroos are coming. So there are number of the people that they are here making some farmhouse, especially in the southern part of India, outside the particular city, and making some mini zoo kind of thing. Also, there is a next step. Up, one place there is somebody. Uh, is showing a macaw ka photo, a uh, particular koi live animal ka photo. Aap just uh, click karo Bhopal se baith ke that particular animal may be in Kolkata, may be in Delhi or Mumbai. But next day somebody will approach from Bhopal ke haan mere paas hai. That same animal will not come but there is a next task. Another party will bring that particular animal. Bhopal mein kahin pe rakha hua hai. You never know kahan pe rakha hua hai. Jaisi call aata hai somebody will deliver you next day. Yeah, please ma'am. Please pass on the mic to her. Shumita ma'am, please Sorry. have the mic. Yeah. So, um, uh, the current wildlife act, the re revision, it says CITES, uh, you now, said now. CITES is now included, yes, yes, but it does not cover captive individuals. Does what not I use, ma'am, because CITES... So, once these individuals go into captivity in any zoo, okay? No, it's, uh, it's, this thing is not for zoo, ma'am. Zoo is for government exchange program. So, there is CITES appendix 1, 2 and 3. The CITES appendix one is only for government people, like some scientists uh, want to do some research no, work on some animals. They can bring that particular animal with the permission of um, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Department of Commerce. They will ask them. Some Jew wants some exchange. Rhino, they get tiger. Lena hai. So that is for the CITES appendix one. Baki jo hai, that CITES is basically for legal trade. Illegal trade yeah, ko yeah, yeah. legal trade but ko lana hai. What I understood is now captive individuals, captive animals will not be covered by CITES. कैप्टिव के लिए मैम एक्चुअली दिस परिवेश पोर्ट्रल आ गया है उनको दे दिए हैं जस्ट लाइक like, क्या होता था पहले मैम एक एग्जांपल लाइक यू गो एंड सम पेट शॉप आपके पास कोई पेट शॉप में गए यू हैव सम एक्सोटिक एनिमल आप जैसे ही उनको पूछे दिस इज ए साइटिस लिस्ट स्पीसीज वो बोलेंगे नो 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 दिस पर्टिकुलर इंडिविजुअल इज नॉट ब्रिंग आउटसाइड इंडिया इट हैज जस्ट ब्रीड इनके जो पेरेंट्स है नाइनटीन में जब इंडिया साइटिस के एमओ हुआ था उसके पहले वी हैव ब्रिंग दैट उसका बच्चा है 
तो उसमें आप लिंक नहीं ढूंढ पाओगे उसके अगेंस्ट में कोई केस नहीं कर पाओगे फॉर दैट मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ने अभी जो रूल किए हैं मैम कि यू हैव टू डिक्लेयर स्टेट वाइज पर्टिकुलर डिक्लेरेशन के टाइम अलग अलग होंगे एम में गवर्नमेंट चीफ ऑफ फॉरन ऑफिस से भी ऑर्डर निकला है कि एनी वन इट मे बी ए ब्रीडर ए मे बी ए सम पेट शॉप ओनर ए मे बी ए इंडिविजुअल मैं अपने पास कोई एनिमल रखा हूँ आप पर्टिकुलर पोर्ट्रेट में जाके वहाँ पे वेबसाइट में जाके आपको एंट्री करना है आज के डेट में आपने एंट्री कर दी आपके पास दो है तो दो ही है इसके बाद अगर आप तीन भी लाओगे द थर्ड वन विल बी कैप्चर आपके अगेंस्ट में केस होगा इगुआना इज जस्ट रेप्टाइल सर अभी तो साइटिस अपेंडिक्स टू में था तो लोग साइटिस अपेंडिक्स के साथ ला सकते थे बट जो ग्रीन कलर का रेप्टाइल है लोग अभी दिल्ली कॉनॉट प्लेस में जाएंगे तो लोग ऐसे टांग के अपने घूमते रहते हैं और यूट्यूब में वीडियो तो आता ही रहता है यस यस सर यस सर एनी एक्सॉटिक एनिमल जो भी रखे हैं तो परिवेश पोर्टल में डालना है एक जस्ट शेयरिंग द एक्सपीरियंस लाइक थोड़ा सा like long back it happened sir. like they have monitor lizards sir so they are poor uh, nobody knows much about this how many species are available in this so there are also some species is endangered scheduled one species and some is uh, scheduled 3 uh, to uh, like this right so in fact actually this is what madam was talking about it is sometimes is international market this crocodile skins and everything so they are allowing some species which are very common Yes, so that can be farmed and they can be remove the skin and sell it in the market. Yes, sir. So what what usually happening in India? It happened in the way back in 1990s. I got a project from Minister of Environment. Sir. So there was some uh, demand from the Bangladesh that they want to uh, sell monitor lizard, particularly Varanus uh, bengalensis. So that they want to sell it in a thousand of things. So they got they want to have a permission from scientists. so that time actually one mistake they did is they did not consult the india country so that came, report came from site is that ki what is the status of this monitor lizards in the country so that time minister of environment has given us a project throughout the country wide survey and we have four species of monitor lizards so I, and if you allow bangladesh to uh, export I and mean, the catch these animals definitely indian species will be transported illegally from india to bangladesh sir. so that was our final study and uh, we have arenas uh, uh, yellow monitor lizard is uh, highly endangered species and it skin is also very good sir so that time it when it happened like this once the skin is processed so it is definitely customs department cannot identify whether it is right, a sir. common uh, monitor lizard or it is a endangered species yes, sir. so sir. ultimately we suggested we, we should not allow this type of monitor uh, exploitation of monitor lizards so internationally that uh, idea was flawed so that is it so that uh, thing i think uh, sir aapka jo suggestion tha it's been um, government of india ki taraf se mana gaya hai and the last for 6 7 years government of india especially dgft under the ministry of uh, commerce they make the uh, banned this uh, luca like species import banned like you cannot import a uh, lion trophy you cannot import a alligator because sometimes what happens the custom people doesn't know it's a alligator skin or it's a crocodile skin just 5 uh, 6 years back people used to import those alligator skin prepare some bag or something like that or maybe shoes or something like that they it will go to singapore it will go some european countries and then they sell at the moment government of india has banned any blue cala species if it is listed in cites appendix 2 or 3 also you can't import it cites so this you can import the finished product but you cannot import the particular skin or raw product at the moment sir. okay uh, uh, singapore i think they have given me very big parts of problem sir so they have given a certificate sir it is a memento given to the scientists for example when customs people is the cat definitely the singapore is very famous for those skin sir and what happened in illegal trade is like that if if this particular skin reptile skin and maybe a crocodile or alligator skin make bag is going out it's just this skin has been come from uh, Africa and now it reached in uh, India Indian people has just uh, Kanpur or Agra mein unhone bag banaya it will go to Singapore us time koi value nahi hai jaise Singapore pahuncha and some there is some brand name lag gaya the shirt aap koi shirt pehenenge that may be a 1000 rupees koi shirt pehenenge it may be a 5000 uh, hmm. identify so it look alike species at Check. the moment is banned only genetics can identify ki which species ah sir सो सर वी आर रनिंग आउट ऑफ टाइम थैंक यू सो मच कौशिक मॉडल जी जोरदार तालियां होनी चाहिए उनके लिए फॉर थ्रोइंग लाइट ऑन प्रोसीडिंग्स ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ क्राइम कंट्रोल ब्यूरो मैं आमंत्रित करना चाहूँगा मिस्टर मोहम्मद खालिक जी को और संगीता जी को कि वो आगे आएँ 
और एक मेमेंटो पेश करें हमारे प्रेजेंटर कौशिक जी को एज अ सिंबल ऑफ लव एंड रिस्पेक्ट मैं आपको बताना चाहूँगा बोथ ऑफ देम खालिक जी एंड संगीता जी हैपेंस टू बी द वॉलेंटियर्स ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ क्राइम कंट्रोल ब्यूरो फॉर मध्य प्रदेश एंड छत्तीसगढ़ यस टू प्राउड वॉलेंटियर्स एंड अ फर्दर अमेजिंग पर्सनैलिटी वी हैड एज द प्रेजेंटर थैंक यू सो मच कौशिक जी फॉर दैट अमेजिंग thought provoking and insightful session about the working and proceedings of wildlife crime control bureau great so this brings us to the last session of this two day first national conference on lesser known species of madhya pradesh and this session last one hopefully last but not the least is titled as status of small कार्निवोर कंजर्वेशन इन मध्य प्रदेश थ्रेट्स एंड सर्वाइवल स्ट्रैटेजीज एंड एज द प्रेजेंट फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन वी आर रिलेटेड टू हैव मिस्टर मनप्रीत सिंह बत जोरदार तालियों से उनका स्वागत करेंगे हम एंड दिस सेशन विल बी चेयर बाय डॉक्टर शोमिता मुखर्जी जी उनको आप देख चुके हैं सुन चुके हैं और काफी बार उनसे यहाँ पे हम अलग अलग विषयों पर उनके ओपिनियंस उनकी नॉलेज देख चुके हैं जान चुके हैं एंड uh, मैं निवेदन करना चाहूँगा मिस्टर uh, 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 बकुल लाड जी से कि वो आगे आए और एक uh, सैपलिंग से हमारे जो रिसर्चर हैं और हमारे जो चेयर हैं उनका वेलकम करें अभिनंदन करें प्लीज बाय दैट टाइम लेट मी ब्रीफ यू अबाउट आर प्रेजेंटर एंड द चेयर आर प्रेजेंटर ये स्थालिया होनी चाहिए प्लीज एवरी शाम है इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि एनर्जीज डाउन है यस जस्ट फ्यू मोर मोमेंट्स टुगेदर थैंक यू सो मच लाट सर एंड यस अबाउट आर प्रेजेंट मिस्टर मनप्रीत सिंह जी ही हैज कंप्लीटेड हिज एम एस सी इन्वायरमेंट मैनेजमेंट फ्रॉम द फॉरेस्ट रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट देहरादून एंड इज एम फिल इन एनवायरमेंट एंड सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट फ्रॉम बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी ही ऑल्सो हैज कंप्लीटेड पी जी डिप्लोमा in animal protection law at nalsar hyderabad and another pg diploma in tribal development management at nird hyderabad at present he is pursuing a phd on the topic of response of small carnivores to environmental change in the central indian highlands under the joint supervision of respective faculties from iifm bhopal columbia university sakin kombator and more we are extremely happy to have you with us please taliyo se unka swagat karenge hum sab and as the chair we are once again happy to have dr shomita mukherjee ji she did her masters in wildlife biology and doctoral degree from the wildlife institute of india and saurashtra university rajkot gujarat and her post doctoral work at the national center for biological sciences bangalore She studied several species of small cats to varying degrees throughout India including diet distribution and fall geography of jungle cat leopard cat and fishing cat and distribution and activity times of marbled cat we are once again happy to have you over to you i would request you aur main chahunga hum zor dar taaliyon se unhe nivedan kare ki is aakhri session ki shuruaat wo kare yeah good evening everyone and uh, thank you very much for inviting me as a chairperson on this session and i met manpreet only this morning and uh, i heard that he is working on small carnivores and was really excited and uh, i won't take much time he will be covering all the other species that i did not cover i only spoke on cats but he'll be talking about mongoose civets and canids so over to you manpreet thank you oh, thank you so much ma'am uh good evening everyone and uh, i am feeling so honored and blessed that this session is being chaired by dr shomita mukherjee who has done some pioneer work on small cats in india and he has been an inspiration to so many wildlife biologists for the generations to come and uh, so my topic is uh, status of small carnivore conservation in mp uh
सो स्मॉल कार्निवोर्स आर द मैमिलियन स्पीशीज बिलोंगिंग टू आर योर कार्निवोरा एंड हैविंग वेट लेस दैन सिक्सटीन के जी नाउ दिस इज़ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दैट वाई दिस थ्रेस होल्ड ऑफ सिक्सटीन के जी हैज़ बीन सेट अप फॉर स्मॉल कार्निवोर्स बिकेज एन एवरेज वेट ऑफ थर्टीन टू एन एवरेज वेट ऑफ थर्टीन टू सिक्सटीन के जी मार्क्स द थ्रेस होल्ड बिटवीन एक्सट्रेंजिक रेगुलेटिंग कार्निवोर्स एंड द इंट्रेंजिक रेगुलेटिंग कार्निवोर्स एंड मीटिंग द दिस वेट थ्रेस होल्ड ऑफ सिक्सटीन के जी वी हैव टू हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी नाइन स्पीशीज ऑफ स्मॉल कार्निवोर्स ग्लोबली एंड इन मध्य प्रदेश वी हैव सेवनटीन स्पीशीज विच कुड बी मोर बिकेज ऑफ रिसेंट साइटिंग ऑफ सम स्मॉल कैट स्पीशीज लाइक एशियटिक वाइल्ड कैट एंड फिशिंग कैट फ्रॉम पन्ना टाइगर रिजर्व एंड देन ऑल्सो यूरेशन ऑर्डर इन कान्हा पेंच कॉरिडोर सो ऑल दीज स्पीशीज द नंबर इज जस्ट अप्रॉक्सीमेट इट कूडेंट बी टेकन एज द लाइक एक्चुअल स्टेटिस्टिक फॉर द रिचनेस ऑफ स्मॉल कार्निवर स्पीशीज इन एम पी सो in these uh, uh, so the iucn status of these small carnivore species in uh, lc least concern category we are have we have 12 species and uh, uh, then uh, one species in endangered category two in uh, two species each in near threatened and vulnerable category um but if we look at the population trend of uh, the least concern cat, uh, species the population trend of um, most of the species is either declining or remains unknown uh, so this calls for uh, research not only on those species which are facing uh, like a uh, higher risk of extinction but also the species which are generalist and uh, have been um, like not researched upon because they are numbers are uh, like their population is stable or their population is good because we ju uh, just like uh, yesterday someone was pointing out that we just wait for the species number to come down to such a level that uh, then we uh, research upon them or then we get serious about uh, the conservation management of these species and even if we uh, look at the global status of these small carnivores uh, then uh, you will see that in the least concern category the uh, uh, population trend of many of these species is declining i think there are uh, some issues with this mic okay next one so uh, ecological importance of this small carnivore species that uh, many of these small carnivore species like jackals are uh, very uh, like good scavengers they eat um, they eat the remaining kills of animals and animal waste and thus control the disease and uh, also control the rodent populations so in agriculture uh, uh, land use uh, so rodent population is being controlled by these small carnivores and also like the diseases like uh, canin distemper and the other diseases are so uh, controlled by uh, uh, these small carnivore species and but the most interesting uh, role of these small carnivores is their role in sea dispersal because many species like jackals and uh, uh, fox and civet species a uh, consume a wide variety of staggering number of fruit species as a part of their diet either uh, as a primary uh, primary uh, 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 diet source or opportunistically in in the times of poor resource availability of their primary uh, uh, diet like we have done a uh, study on sea dispersal role of civet in pachmari wildlife sanctuary and we have seen that these uh, species are uh, sea dis uh, like uh, civet species play an active role in the sea dispersal of many plant species like phoenix uh, silvestris sigillum cumini and many ficus species so um, 
as i have mentioned that these uh, small carnivore species are highly frugivorous and uh, so uh, they play a significant role in shaping uh, forest regeneration uh, processes and plant recruitment and especially in degraded forest ecosystems their uh, roles become more significant because uh, these uh, small carnivores uh, act as a vector of carrying the seeds from uh, from intact forest patches to the degraded forest patches and thus accentuate the rate of uh, restoration or reforestation effort so these small carnivores uh, can be integrated into the reforestation and restoration efforts so that we can have accentuated uh, rate of uh, recovery of the degraded ecosystems and also carnivore gut passage enhances the germination rate of many fruit species so to check uh, to check this how this uh, uh, like civet gut passage can affect the seed germination rate of uh, three fruit species that is phoenix silvestris and sizigium cumini and ficus racemosa we have collected the scat samples from pachmari wildlife sanctuary so uh, these are the locations from where i have collected the scat samples to understand uh, the role of civet in seed dispersal so uh, if you look at uh, uh, look at the results of seed viability and seed germination you can see that seed viability of both the species that is date palm and malabar plum that is sizigium cumini remains more or less same so there was no statistically significant difference between both the groups so that means seeds defecated undamaged and intact seeds after passing through its gut passage it did not damage the seeds and also uh, if we look at the seed germination rate uh, of uh, both the species then we can see that it has uh, increased the germination rate of phoenix silvestris we have seen that uh, in the control group in the control group we have taken the uh, fruit directly from the plant species and manually depulped those uh, fruits and in um, and uh, in the uh, civet uh, civet gut passage seeds we have taken the uh, uh, seeds by sieving sieving the scat samples and then uh, uh, extracting the seeds from them and we have seen that uh, in a date palm that is phoenix silvestris uh, species that is there was 31 point uh, 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 31 point uh, sorry 41 point 5 percentage uh, seed germination rate uh, in in a control group but 56.5 percent seed germination rate in the civet defecated seeds so uh, but in the case of sizigium cumini interestingly we did not get to see any statistically significant difference between both the groups that is civet defecated seeds and the control seeds and also uh, we have checked the impact of civet gut passage on the germination speed that the number of days it had taken for seeds to germinate uh, so uh, interestingly for both the species that is phoenix silvestris and sizigium cumini the seed germination um, the seed germination speed got enhanced after gut passage as we can see from the cumulative germination percentage um, uh, interestingly here i want to add something that we have also tried to sow the seeds of ficus racemosa but in both the uh, in both the uh, treatments that is the control group as well as in the civet defecated seeds we did not uh, no seed got uh, like germinated after being planted so uh, we could not uh, like uh, draw any concrete inference from that and also another interesting uh, a part of the study was the selection bias for small seeds we uh, have tried to measure the length width and the weight of uh, both the uh, both the uh, treatments that is the civet defecated seeds as well as the control seeds and we uh, get to see that in the case of phoenix silvestris there was a selection bias for small seeds if you uh, see that in civet ingested seeds uh, they they uh, like they more prefer the smaller seeds smaller in length width and weight but in case of uh, sizigium cumini
we did not get to see any difference in all of the parameters a seed morphological parameters that is length width and weight um so uh, also like my study is also uh, understanding the occupancy of uh, golden jackal in uh, uh, apart from golden jackal i am also working on five other small carnivore species in the central indian highlands so i uh, have uh, uh, like uh, 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 superimposed the grid cell uh, of 2 into 2 km uh, 2 into 2 square kilometer size on uh, on the land use map of uh, central indian highlands and i have uh, then according to uh, proportionate stratified random sampling that is uh, i have uh, uh, selected the number of grid cells according to the proportion of land use category in the uh, landscape and uh, and and also uh, and so in each of the grid cell i have uh, uh, laid uh, 16 points which were at a uh, distance of 500 meters from each other and uh, then I have actively walked on uh, uh, from one point till the 16th point and I have taken a special replicates not temporal replicates because uh, to save time and as well as uh, uh, due to the financial limitations and the logistic constraints I have taken the special replicates where I have taken the each uh, uh, the first four points as a one special replicate uh, so for in each grid cell we have taken the four special replicates and uh, uh, so i'm still in the phase of data collection for uh, many other forest divisions but here i'm presenting the results of uh, bhopal forest circle and uh, uh, in in the occupancy uh, site occupancy of golden jackal we have seen that was uh, 0 0.76 uh, and the detection probability was 0 0.34 and uh, uh, and interestingly uh, occupancy was uh, maximum in scrub forest followed by agriculture land use and uh, uh, so just like Shamita Mem was pointing out yesterday that we consider scrub forest and the other wa uh, other wasteland as wasteland and we do not uh, give them the due importance which they actually hold uh, so uh, I think there is a lot we need to in, uh, encompass uh, for accounting for the biodiversity outside the protected areas. So these are the top 10 models for uh, occupancy of golden jackal in Bhopal forest circle and uh, here uh, size is the parameter of occupancy um, and uh, P is the detection probability and uh, so the two top models has the uh, covariates of distance to water body and distance to human settlements plus the effort uh, so the people who may be new to the occupancy in occupancy we take imp uh, take into account imperfect detections uh, if we go to a site there could be three possibilities that if a species is present and we detect it if a species is absent uh, it uh, uh, like it isn't detected but there could be a third possibility that species is present but due to our sampling efforts or we we are not able to uh, detect it so it go undetected or it go unnoticed so to take into account those imperfect detection we use occupancy modeling approach and in occupancy modeling we basically take a maximum likelihood estimation function to understand the probability of observations in the data to fit into a model uh, but they are uh, like uh, we can also use Bayesian inferences methods too uh, so um, so I have basically taken of uh, distance to human settlement distance to water body and uh, illegal felling or logging as covariates along with uh, the uh, number of hours since the sunset that I have done the sampling for as a covariate for detection probability So uh, in this, uh, for the uh, top two uh, like models, we have seen that uh, distance to water body and distance to human settlements are the two most important covariates which impacts the occupancy of the small uh, of the golden jackal in the Bhopal forest circle. And if we try to model uh, uh, model the occupancy as a function of uh, 
uh, as a function of these individual covariates that is distance to water body and distance to human settlement we can see that uh, uh, the occupancy uh, decreases as the distance to water body uh, uh, gets higher and also uh, distance to human settlement like uh, the occupancy uh, increases and at the uh, higher distances from the human settlement it goes decrease which which is a, a cause of concern because uh, it can also elevate the human jackal conflict because we know that jackals actively raid the poultry and come into conflict with humans Uh, and uh, uh, in, uh, other two canid species in MPR Bengal fox and dhol. Interestingly, Bengal fox um, uh, also eat a number of fruit species uh, like bale and uh, and jamun. And uh, dhol uh, dhol can uh, dholes are like in uh, a pack of like uh, 10 to 12. And they can also prey upon uh, the species which are much larger. Uh, than their body size like uh, sambar and uh, uh, nilgai and uh, and uh, uh, swam deer in harvestidae we have three uh, species that is small indian mongoose gray mongoose and uh, ready mongoose uh, and uh, small indian uh, small indian mongoose are basically found uh, most of near the urban uh, areas in the pipes and uh, other um, uh, and other drainage uh, systems and uh, gray mongoose are also known to inhabit the hum uh, near human settlement in rural areas as well as in the farmlands and uh, ruddy mongoose are mostly found on the rocky outcrops and in the uh, scrub forests and in the uh, in the forest fringe areas mostly and uh, ruddy mongoose can be uh, uh, is much larger than size than small Indian mongoose and gray mongoose and it can be identified by uh, by a black tip at the its uh, tail at the end of its tail in viviridae that is the civet group we have two species in uh, Madhya Pradesh that is uh, palm civet and uh, small Indian civet um, palm civet are uh, semi arboreal that they actively go up uh, up to the uh, trees and uh, look for uh, the, uh, the food resources and consume fruits. Um, but small Indian civets, this isn't the case, so they are, have mostly been observed on the surface and they hardly go up higher on the tree branches. Um, in uh, Mustel ID, we have uh, three species, uh, smooth coated otter, Eurasian otter and honey badger. I think I am skipping a uh, discussion on uh, otters because there have been a presentation on that which have wonderfully covered all the aspects of uh, otters. And uh, honey badger is I guess a very understudied species and there has been a very lesser research effort dedicated to honey badgers. And honey badgers, uh, 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 there is an interesting thing that they have affinity towards honey and bee larvae. Uh, so the, uh, that's why their uh, name is uh, honey badger. In Pallady, I think we have uh, six, seven species, and uh, I think Shomita ma'am has covered wonderfully yesterday all the aspects of the small cat species. So I uh, I think it's um, better if I keep discussion on it, this. Back. Uh. So, uh, threats faced by uh, small carnivores, I have used the IOCN threat classification criteria to understand the various threats faced by these small carnivores, both in Madhya Pradesh and uh, globally. And uh, as we can see from this graph that biological resource use and agriculture and aquaculture are two most important factors which affect uh, these small carnivores and in biological resource use we have uh, like hunting and illegal trading which I think Kaushik sir has wonderfully covered and in agriculture and aquaculture we have uh, uh, like agriculture intensification and uh, we know that many of these small carnivores uh, forage in agriculture landscapes and uh, so uh, um, 
and also residential and commercial development and pollution are the other factors which which uh, threats these small carnivore species and even if we compare it with globally then biological resource use and agriculture and aquaculture are two most important factors and one interesting study uh, i have found that uh, that the uh, chromium released from the tannery industry has significantly affect the reproductive fitness of uh, small indian mangoes um, by affecting its all um, ovary follicles so i think uh, there is a lot uh, of research that can be done on that front to unravel the different threats and how they impact the behavior and other adaptation capacities of these small carnivores so vehicular collision is uh, uh, i think i have seen uh, like when i was doing field work in hoshangabad and uh, harda and the surrounding areas uh like every day i used to witness one uh, like one uh, road kill uh so i think so i think uh, there needs to be uh, like something needs to be done to uh, control this ve uh, these vehicular collisions because uh, i have seen like so many uh, so many road kills in uh four five months when i was doing the field work for uh, the small carnivore occupancy service and jackal and uh, jungle cat are i think are the most uh, affected uh, small carnivore species from uh, road collisions um so also i think railroad mortality uh, is also one um like which we can uh, have some research projects on in the future to understand how railroad mortality affect these small carnivores uh also uh, like these uh, i think mangoes species i think uh, kaushik sir has like just said that mangoes species are being killed uh, like uh, like there is a full uh, illegal trade going on on the mangoes species for paint brush industry basically so one mangoes is equivalent to like one mangoose can produce 45 paint brushes and uh, 50 mangoose species can produce 1 kg hair so there are a lot of mangoose species that are being killed to uh, for paint brushes and also a uh, jackal skull is also being uh, like a uh, jackal skull is being used by the religious uh, practitioners for ceremonial purposes and uh, hence jackals are being killed for uh, that too so conservation management strategies i think uh, until now there has been a lot of discussion around how to conserve these species and uh, what could be the conservation management plans uh, to uh, to to uh, like revive the population of declining species and uh, i think we need to uh, overhaul the existing system for more inclusiveness towards biodiversity outside protected areas i think because till uh, now we our focus has been mostly on protected areas and outside protected areas there could be as much diversity or even more of these small carnivore species especially because they thrive in wasteland grassland scrub forest and the forest fringe areas and also i think we can engage the common people through citizen science projects and uh, also special and temporal monitoring to understand the uh, a uh, population trend of these small carnivore species is necessary uh, and i think um, uh, also involving the communities in the conservation management interventions because i believe without involving communities any kind of conservation um, remains futile or doesn't fully uh, get successful in uh, in its uh, uh, capacity so i think these are the conservation management our uh, strategies we can incorporate uh thank you so much thanks a lot thank you ma'am really nice. and uh, what i really uh, appreciated is uh, your work on the seed dispersal bit because uh, usually we don't think of carnivores as seed dispersers you know but what is really uh, interesting is they actually can change the dynamics and uh, even the the way a forest appears just by the way they disperse the seeds and uh, more than that you see another set of carnivores that actually control seed predators so there are two differences 
Rodents are often seed predators. They break up the seed in such a way that they, the seed doesn't germinate. Whereas uh, carnivores actually don't digest the seed and so they disperse it. And so one set of carnivores actually controls the seed predators and the other set of carnivores actually disperses the seeds and maintains the dynamics of a forest. So I think it's really important. And uh, I think your study was really nice because it's one of the very few studies that looks at carnivores, small carnivores as seed dispersers. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thanks a lot, Manpreet. Thank Any you. questions? Uh, you can. Yeah. Please pass the mic to. Hello, Manpreet. I'm so happy that you are studying golden jackal, but I must say that you have chosen a whole lot of species for your PhD. Is the, uh, you're, you're going to cover entire species for your PhD or? Uh, so basically, okay. I'm focusing on six small carnivore species. Okay, uh, okay. So they are two mongoose species, that is grey mongoose and ruddy mongoose, mm -hmm. and uh, then golden jackal and uh, Asian palm civet. Um, uh, and also jungle cat and rusty spotted cat. Although uh, I want to admit here that I have not seen a single sight of a uh, rusty spotted cat, but jungle cat is quite common. I have seen so many sightings of them near the human settlements. But rusty spotted cat, I think is, it's because uh, it's uh, mostly nocturnal. So my study basically I conduct from the morning hours because rest of the species are diurnal. So that could be a reason behind it that I and anyway it is not that much common and it is not easy to find so hopefully I'll get no, to see one don't day. worry I, I was not going there actually what I was trying to say ah. that you are doing occupancy and I know it's hard to get jackal uh, it's a suggestion you can always discuss it with your PI and yes. all uh, you can uh, try the howling method that really work well and mm. in uh, European studies it, it worked mm. wonder mm. Uh, you have to survey the area properly and then you have to have a, a strategized location so that you will not get confused with the mm. calling groups of mm. course mm -hmm. but uh, howling method I I didn't got the permission to do that in Sariska it was okay. not allowed there <laughs> but it's really good uh, thing mm. if you really want to see that how many jackals are there it's not easy to you know identify them separately like individual identification howling mm. can help you you can discuss with your PI mm. and I personally feel that if you are working on foxes and jackal please mm. all the researchers please try to uh, get some information on their denning sites that is where the journey begins and it's very crucial so if you are in field please try to get that information for foxes also we really do not have hmm. information on that so that is that is all on my part thank you so much ma'am for your wonderful suggestions i will obviously discuss it with my supervisor and uh, see if we can also do sure. research on the sure. dining sites of golden jackal who said uh, logistic and uh, financial constraints because so it sounded very familiar and so i just thought <laughs> I must share because that howling will work for you. Uh, this study isn't a part of any project and I'm not getting any funding for conducting this study. So uh, there are financial constraints and uh, I am covering 28 forest divisions so it already adds up to the finance. Ask the biodiversity board <laughs> <laughs> for money. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's a conference meant for lesson on species in MP hmm. and you need to promote it to get more information yes. and make them not so less known. Mm -hmm. So I think you should approach them for the money. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions? Shall we wrap up? <laughs> ma'am, please, Mike, please. Mm. तो मुझे एक से लेके तीन तक या तो जैकाल मिलेंगे या कैट मिलेगी मरी अपार्ट फ्रॉम इस 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 डॉग यस मैम ये मैं देखा है मैंने वेरी ट्रू मैम बिकेस इवन आई हैव सीन बोथ ऑफ दिस पीसीज मोस्टली इन द रोड किल्स दैट इस गोल्डन जैकल एंड जंगल कैट ऑन रोड ऑन रोड ऑन रोड यस मैम बहुत उसे देखते हुए जातियों को मुझे पता चलता है कि ये हमारे हुए मिल रहे हैं। 
Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Manpreet, for that wonderful uh, session. And thank you so much to Shomita ji for being a wonderful chair. I Vikas ji ko bulaya uh, chamga founder and uh, president SNHC ki wo aage aaye and uh, there he goes with the last set of mementos for our chair and our presenter for our chair, Dr. Shomita Mukherjee. And for our presenter, Mr. Mandeep Singh. Zoda Dalia, please. Thank you so much to everyone present there. And to Kate Har Achedin Kaik. छोटा सा अंत आता ही है तो वो अंत आ चुका है आ, मैं हमारे बीच जो हमारे गेस्ट मौजूद हैं उनको इस डाइस पे बुलाना चाहूँगा मंच पे बुलाना चाहूँगा और टू प्रोसीड विद द कंक्लूजन सेरेमनी द क्लोजिंग सेरेमनी सबसे पहले मैं चाहूँगा विकास जी स्वागत करें हमारे गेस्ट डॉक्टर अतुल कुमार जी का आई एफ चीफ वाइल्ड लाइफ वार्डन का मैं चाहूँगा तालियों से हम उनका अभिनंदन करें इस मंच पे यस मैं चाहूँगा मंच पे आए उनके साथ साथ उसके साथ साथ मैं चाहूँगा मिसेज संगीता सक्सेना जी स्टेट डायरेक्टर डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ इंडिया मध्य प्रदेश एंड छत्तीसगढ़ मैं उनको मंच पे बुलाना चाहूँगा जोरदार तालियों से हम उनका भी स्वागत करेंगे हैज बीन वेरी एक्टिव एंड अटेंडेंट ड्यूरिंग द सेशन मैं देख रहा था हर एक क्वेरी और हर एक थॉट्स पे उनके रिस्पॉन्सेज उनके एक्सप्रेशन से पता चल रहे थे सो so, मैं चाहूँगा उनका स्वागत हो यहाँ पे इस मंच पे और अफकोर्स वन सच पर्सनैलिटी हुज बिन गाइडिंग अस सेंस मैं आदरणीय आर श्रीनिवासन मूर्ति जी का स्वागत इस मंच पे करना चाहूँगा आई एफ एस रिटायर्ड और अब मैं चाहूँगा और मैं साथ ही साथ मैं इनवाइट करना चाहूँगा ऑन द डाइस ऑफकोर्स द मैन बिहाइंड दिस वंडरफुल कॉन्फ्रेंस विकास जी द फाउंडर प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ एस एन एच सी इंडिया प्लीज गिव इट अप फॉर विकास सिंह बघेल जी एंड लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट मैं मंच पे आमंत्रित करना चाहूँगा आदरणीय संगीता राजगिर जी को फाउंडर एंड मेंबर सेक्रेटरी भोपाल बर्थ सोसाइटी जोरदार तालियों ने चाहिए उनके लिए एंड टू बिगिन विद द क्लोजिंग सेरेमनी मैं चाहूँगा कि विकास जी आगे आए और हमारे गेस्ट डॉक्टर अतुल कुमार जी का इस क्लोजिंग सेरेमनी में स्वागत करें अभिवादन करें जिस जो परंपरा हम अभी तक फॉलो कर करते हुए आए हैं बाय प्रेजेंटिंग दिस मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स एंड मैं चाहूँगा uh, कि अब डॉक्टर uh, एलिजाबेथ जी आगे आए और वो स्वागत करें uh, आर श्रीनिवासन मूर्ति जी का एक और सैपलिंग के स्वाद जोरदार ताली होनी चाहिए एंड अब मैं बुलाना चाहूँगा श्री मोहम्मद खालिक जी को कि वो आगे आए और संगीता सक्सेना जी का स्वागत करें हमारे बीच द फाउंडर मेंबर ऑफ भोपाल बर्थ सोसाइटी एंड नाउ फॉर द वेलकम एड्रेस ऑफ आर रिस्पेक्टिव गेस्ट एंड all the delegates and participants here i would wholeheartedly like to invite on to the podium the one and only uh, dr bakul larji the assistant member secretary of madhya pradesh state biodiversity board taliyon se hum unka swagat karenge everyone aap sabhi ko bahut bahut namaskar madhya pradesh ke andar bhopal mein इस फर्स्ट नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ ऑन लेसर नॉन स्पीसीज ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश की जो थीम थी कंजर्वेशन इफर्ट्स एंड मैनेजमेंट चैलेंजेस ऑफ लेसर नॉन फॉनल स्पीसीज तो ये जो प्रोग्राम जो वर्कशॉप हुआ है इसके पीछे की जो कहानी है मैं बताऊंगा बाद में लेकिन सबसे पहले मैं मंचा से हमारे अतिथियों का मैं स्वागत करना चाहूँगा डॉक्टर 
श्री रोशो साहब श्री आर श्रीनिवास मूर्ति साहब संगीता राजगिरी मैडम संगीता सक्सेना मैडम विकास सिंह बघेल का सबके में सब और साथ में यहाँ पर इस सभा में उपस्थित सभी वाइल्ड लाइफ एक्सपर्ट्स सभी रिसर्चर्स और सभी हमारे टीम एम के मेंबर्स टीम के भोपाल बर्ड्स के यहाँ मेंबर्स सभी पार्टनर्स का मैं यहाँ बहुत बहुत बोर्ड परिवार को स्वागत करता हूँ क्योंकि ये जो वर्कशॉप थी दो दिन की थी इसके लिए जो प्रपोजल था विकास सिंह बघेल साहब का जो हमारे बोर्ड में आया था तो लेसर नॉन स्पीसीज का वर्ड सुनते ही लगा कि यार इस पर क्या ऐसा आगे हो सकता है लेसर नॉन स्पीसीज में कितना काम हो सकता है लेकिन जब यहाँ दो दिन देखा तो यहाँ इतना ज़्यादा इंटरेस्टिंग और इंटरेक्टिव और इनोवेटिव सेशन यहाँ पर हुए हैं कि मेरी जो डायरी थी वो पूरी डायरी भर गई शायद किसी की डायरी भरी होगी और जब मैं डायरी घर ले गया कल तो मैंने बोला कि ये डायरी संभाल कर रखना है इसको मुझे पढ़ना है मतलब कि यहाँ इतने क्योंकि हमने पूरे दो दिन यहाँ पर सीखा तो निश्चित रूप से ये बोर्ड मैं सर से चाहूंगा कि अपने भाषण में सर कहेंगे कि बोर्ड आपका जो भी प्रपोजल आएगा जरूर स्वीकार करेगा क्योंकि इतना ज्यादा काम होना बाकी है और इतना इंटरेस्टिंग काम है कि इसमें निश्चित रूप से बोर्ड इसमें सपोर्ट करेगा मुझे आशा है सर इसमें घोषणा करेंगे यहाँ पर तो इतने लेसर नॉन स्पीस के साथ में इतने ज्यादा लोग जुड़े हुए हैं और इतने इंटरेस्टिंग विषय पर यहाँ चर्चा हुई है तो निश्चित रूप से मेरे ख्याल से सभी का ज्ञानवर्धन भी यहाँ हुआ है नॉलेज भी बढ़ा है और बोर्ड इसमें आपके साथ में हर कदम पे तैयार खड़ा है तो इस पूरे दो दिन के सेशन को जो हमारे इंटरेस्टिंग जो सेशन बनाने के लिए जो हमारे पूरे प्रेजेंटर थे मैं नाम लेना चाहूँगा कि उन्होंने इस सेशन को बहुत ही इंटरेस्टिंग बनाया है मिस्टर मिस प्रवीण शेख डॉक्टर सुजीत नरवाड़े डॉक्टर शोमिता मुखर्जी डॉक्टर नरसिम्हा राजन डॉक्टर डेविड राजू डॉक्टर सरवन मलिक प्रफुल्ल चौधरी निर्मलया चक्रवर्ती राजगिर मैडम संजय यादव अमिता दुबे सन्नी जोशी सुधीर के जैना धीरज दास डॉक्टर रणदीप सिंह आलोक शेवड़े कौशिक मंडल और मनप्रीत सिंह मैं चाहूँगा सभी सदन उनके लिए बहुत जोरदार तालियों स्वागत करेंगे इस पूरे दो दिन की वर्कशॉप के लिए जो हमारे चेयर्स थे वो काफ़ी डायनामिक थे और काफ़ी हम हमको इन्होंने गाइड किए यहाँ पर तो डॉक्टर सुहास कुमार सर श्री मूर्ति सर सुमरजन सुमरजन सेन सर ऋषिकेश शर्मा अजय गाड़ीकर साहब डॉक्टर असीम श्रीवास्तव साहब डॉक्टर आर जे राव साहब श्री दिलशेर खान साहब और संगीता राजगिर मैडम का सभी का मैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं कि आपने इस पूरे सेशन को चेयर किया और इनके लिए जोरदार तालियों से मैं चाहूंगा कि स्वागत हो जाए तो मैं इसी दो शब्दों के साथ में मैं चाहूंगा कि बोर्ड के लिए ये जो सेशन था दो दिन का ये नए द्वार क्यों खोलता है क्योंकि हमको यहाँ इतने ज्यादा रिसोर्स पर्सन मिल गए यहाँ पर जो कि बोर्ड के काम को हम आप आगे जाके आगे बढ़ाएंगे दूसरा हमको आपसे एक नए नए प्रोजेक्ट की उम्मीद भी है कि आप अलग अलग सेक्टर में काम कर सकते हैं और तीसरा जो जैव विविधता बोर्ड द्वारा एक बायोडाइवर्सिटी अवार्ड दिए जाते हैं उसमें एक इंडिविजुअल कैटेगरी भी होती है उसमें भी आप अवार्ड का आप नॉमिनेशन कर सकते हैं तो ये बहुत बहुत एक अच्छी संभावना है हम तलाश कर रहे हैं तो मैं धन्यवाद दूंगा विकास बघेल जी को कि जिन्होंने एक अच्छा एक प्रयास किया कि इस बोर्ड के सपोर्ट से बोर्ड के सहायता से उन्होंने एक नया प्रोग्राम लॉन्च किया है और चूंकि ये तो एक अर्धकुंभ है कुंभ में सब इकट्ठे होते हैं लेकिन आगे महाकुंभ भी होना बाकी है मैं चाहूँगा मैं चाहूँगा कि जैसे कि ये लेसर नॉन है कुछ मोर नॉन भी होगी और कुछ अननोन भी होगी तो इन सब का तीन दिन का सेशन किया जाए जिसमें कि कुछ ऐसी स्पीसीज जो कि एक्सटेंड हो चुकी हैं जिनको हम भूल चुके हैं उनको भी याद किया जाए तो इस तरह से आगे कुछ प्लान करके एक बड़ा महाकुंभ जिसमें और भी कंट्री के लोगों को यहाँ बुलाया जाए तो काफ़ी अच्छा इसमें हो सकता है बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद बकुल जी और जैसा उन्होंने कहा कि पिछले एक दो दिनों में हमारा काफ़ी ज्ञानवर्धन हुआ है उसी ज्ञानवर्धन पर पुनः रोशनी डालने के लिए मैं बुलाया चाहूँगा डॉक्टर एलिजाबेथ थॉमस जी को असिस्टेंट मेंबर सेक्रेटरी मध्य प्रदेश स्टेट बायोडाइवर्सिटी बोर्ड कि वो आगे आए 
and I would request her to please share the proceedings of conference and recommendations of this first national conference on lesser known species of Madhya Pradesh. Taliyo se hum swagat karenge please. जैसा अभी हमारे एंकर ने कहा सभी अच्छी चीजों का एक अंत होता है और जैसा अभी मेरे कलीग डॉक्टर बकुल लाड ने कहा ये अंत नहीं ये शुरुआत है तो इसी के साथ आ, दो दिन की जो कॉन्फ्रेंस थी इसका निचोड़ मैं आपके सामने रख रही हूँ इट इज अ मैटर ऑफ ग्रेट प्राइड दैट द फर्स्ट नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन लेसर नोन स्पीशीज ऑफ एम इज कमिंग टू एन एंड In two days of the conference, we had 15 interesting sessions back to back with experts sharing their rich experience and hard work in the field and throwing light on different aspects of biology to ecology, from conservation challenges to conservation strategies. I must say that, these, that there was not a single dull moment in the two days. The energy level of the participants was, was always high and participatory. Now presenting an overview, coming to the technical sessions of day one. The first presentation was on Lesser Florican by Dr. Sujit Narvade from BNHS. Uh, as he presented, the major challenges associated with the species are declining grasslands, predation by free-ranging dogs, and power lines and wind turbines. And the recommendations for the species is to, uh, to uh, revisit the policy to protect grasslands, more long-term intensive surveys are required. And uh, as he mentioned, florican-friendly agricultural practices need to be adopt adopted, and involving community by declaring community and conservation reserves is one of the ways. The second species was the Indian skimmer. Uh, the presentation was done by Parveen Sheikh from BNHS. The major challenges uh, uh, related with the species are high predation from free-ranging dogs, high livestock pressure resulting in trampling of nests, illegal sign ma sand mining. And the way forward is, uh, like she suggested, the Nest Guardian program, which can be replicated by the department also, and of course, community engagement. The third session was on the sm small cats, done by Dr. Shomita Mukherjee. The major takeaway of the session was we need to take up more intensive survey program in Madhya Pradesh. There was also a special mention about the wasteland policy which needs to be relooked. And the fourth presentation given by K. Nars Narsimha Rajan on otters, uh, where he shared his experience of doing research in uh, southern states. Again, not much work has been done in Madhya Pradesh, and this is a species we need to take up more intensive surveys. Uh, the next presentation was uh, on wolf, which was jointly made by Mr. Uh, Sevara Malik and Mr. Praful Chaudhary, who gave an overview of uh, wolf population in Noradehi Sanctuary. Again, the primary recommendation is that there is need to create a mosaic of habitats for protecting wolf and to, and to do more intensive research. Then, uh, then we had a very interesting session by uh, naturalist David Raju who introduced us to the star faunal species of Madhya Pradesh with beautiful pictures and interesting anecdotes. I hope everybody enjoyed. The last presentation of the day was by Mr. Nirmala Chakrabarti, who gave a pictorial presentation of the wildlife of Madhya Pradesh. On day two, the technical session was started with a presentation on dolphin conservation made by Mr. Sanjeev Yadav and Mr. Amit Dubey from WWF. The presentation threw lights on the major challenges, conservation challenges, and highlighted the importance of seasonal monitoring and community mobilization. Uh, he gave the example of dolphin mitras. Then coming to the presentation by Mr. Sunny Joshi on raptor conservation uh, with, ha with special focus on vultures. The major challenges associated with vultures is, as we all know, NSA ID, uh, IDs, use of pesticides, and collision by transmission line. We also had a very interesting pr uh, presentation on scorpions made by Sudhir Jena. He talked about the diversity of scorpions in Madhya Pradesh al along with interesting facts about the life cycle and breeding behavior of scorpions. 
then the, the, the presentation on forest outlet by Mr. Dheeraj Das threw light on the forest outlet project in Madhya Pradesh. I'm happy, happy to say that both these uh, projects on scorpions and forest outlet are being supported by Madhya Pradesh State Biodiversity Board. <laughs> then we had an impressive, pre impressive presentation on Caracal by uh, Dr. Randeep Singh, who threw light on his work in Ranthambore Tiger Reserve, uh, where he, he has done 37 photo captures of Caracal. And he also threw light on the food habits and habitat, uh, also suggested that there is a possibility of presence of Caracal in Kuno Palpur. So we need to explore this. Maybe we can take up a project on this. You need not have a degree in science to be a, to be a nature enthusiast or a scientist. You can be a scientist at heart. Well, this was proven by Mr. Alok Shirde, who through his beautiful photos and videos took all of us through the amazing world of insects. His passion is really commendable. Then uh, we had a very interesting talk on wildlife crime and trafficking of lesser known uh, animal species by Mr. Kaushik Mandal, who threw uh, light on pangolin trade, then uh, otters, jungle fowls, lot many species which are illegally traded and uh, also uh, gave an uh, insight in, uh, into how this uh, trade operates. Then the last session was on the status of small carnivore conservation by Mr. Manpreet Singh, who mentioned about the uh, 17 small carnivore species present in MP, and uh, his work on civets, gold, golden jackal, Bengal fox, and dole. And uh, with this, uh, this was the overview of what we deliberated in the past two days. Uh, the real work begins after this, because this is the two hai, of us will be able to experts hai, in recommendations ko hum compile karein ki har species specific conservation challenges kya hai, aur iske liye kya conservation strategies honi chahiye, iska hum nichod nikal ke jo subject specialists hai, unke, unse hum vet karayenge, और इसको रेकमेंडेशन के रूप में शासन को भेजेंगे जो कि हमारा काम है तो हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि ये जो एक नई शुरुआत है ये केवल एक शुरुआत है आगे बहुत सारा काम है और उम्मीद करते हैं कि इस इस कॉन्फ्रेंस के थ्रू हमने जिस प्रकार रिसर्चर्स को एकेडमिया को और पॉलिसी प्लानर्स को हम एक प्लेटफॉर्म पे लेके आए हैं हम इससे कुछ आगे और बेहतर achieve karenge and we, we will be able to uh, make some, uh, some uh, change in the conservation scenario in Madhya Pradesh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Elizabeth Thomasji, for inducing a ray of hope and development. Moving ahead, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, we have met two days in the past two days, but two such pratishtit vyakti are here. जिनका अनुभव और जिनका यहाँ पे मौजूद रहना सम्मान योग्य है और अब बारी है कि मैं ऑनरेबल बोर्ड से और खास करके डॉक्टर अतुल कुमार जी से निवेदन करूँगा कि हम उनको यहाँ मंच पे बुला के सम्मानित करें मैं आप सभी की जोरदार तालियों के बीच बुलाना चाहूँगा श्री दिल दिलशेर खान जी को इस मंच पे मैं चाहूँगा � एनर्जेटिक एंट्री <laughs> और भारतीय परंपरा के हिसाब से हम एक शॉल और नारियल के द्वारा हम उनका सम्मान करना चाहेंगे श्री दिल दिलशेर खान दिल, दिलशेर खान जी को आज आपने सुना आपको पता चला ही इज अ वर्ल्ड कंजर्वेशनिस्ट रेसिपिएंट ऑफ द स्पैरो अवार्ड मेंबर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड कमेटी एंड होल्ड्स अ वैल्यूएबल एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ ट्वेंटी सिक्स ईयर्स ऑन वर्ल्ड रिसर्च जी हाँ तालियां होती रहनी चाहिए कमोन की व्यवस्था परित साई श्री दिलशेर खान जी और उन्हीं के साथ साथ मैं बुलाना चाहूँगा श्री ऋषिकेश शर्मा जी को भी जोरदार तालियां उनके लिए भी होनी चाहिए पहले दिन से हमारे साथ बने हुए हैं he has had hundred plus papers published in several national and international journals काफी यहाँ पे यंग फेलोस को उन्होंने गाइड किया, इम्पोर्टेंट एडवाइस दी, 
and just as I have told you earlier, he also holds a PhD in the study of Ghadiyal, Madhya Pradesh, which is very little in the country. So, this is a very good example. And 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 this is Now let us move towards the release of a poster on scorpions of Madhya Pradesh. This poster is based on project supported by Madhya Pradesh State Biodiversity Board titled "Diversity of Scorpions." You have seen Sudhir Jena ji ko dekha tha abhi is topic pe present karte hain. Unhi ka title hai. And uh, as I previously said that. he has studied ecology biology and associated traditional knowledge about medically important species and the principal investigator of this project is uh, dr pratyush mahapatra ji scientist zoological survey of india and shri sudhir kumar jina the project fellow of zsi central zone jabalpur main chahunga ki wo poster yahan pe please uh, release kiya jaye ya present kiya jaye okay we have it in the hard copy so i would request the board i would request the guest of honors to please unveil this poster on scorpions of madhya pradesh the project that has been largely supported by the madhya pradesh state biodiversity board ji ha taaliyan honi chahiye aur kuch taaliyan bacha ke rakhiye jab poster samne aaye hamare Yes there it is Yes there it is the poster of scorpions of Madhya Pradesh I would request all of you to please hold it up and main chahunga Sudhir ji bhi aaye tasveer mein hissa bane and there you see the scorpions of Madhya Pradesh Thank you so much to the guest of honors thank you so much to Sudhir ji and now moving ahead uh humne jin guest ke thoughts aur vichar shuruaat mein sune the aur sunne ke baad humne ek bahut behtareen aagaaz kiya tha to ab kyunki thoda ant ki taraf badh rahe hain ya fir ek nayi shuruaat ki taraf badh rahe hain to main उन्हीं को दोबारा बड़ी ही खुशी और बड़ी ही आदर के साथ इस डायस पे पोडियम पे बुलाना चाहूँगा मैं जोरदार तालियों के बीच चाहूँगा आप स्वागत करें और गेस्ट डॉक्टर अतुल कुमार श्रीवास्तव जी जोरदार ताली आईएफएस प्रिंसिपल चीफ कंजर्वेटर फॉरेस्ट एंड मेंबर सेक्रेटरी मध्य प्रदेश स्टेट बायोडाइवर्सिटी बोर्ड गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन हियर मंच पर उपस्थित हमारे गुरु समान आदरणीय श्री मूर्ति साहब जिनके अंडर में हमने प्रोबेशन शुरू किया था भारतीय वन सेवा की अपनी नौकरी की शुरुआत की थी मैडम संगीता सक्सेना मैडम जिनके हस्बैंड श्री आर्यन सक्सेना साहब के साथ मेरा बहुत लंबा समय उनके साथ मैं भारतीय वन सेवा के साथ काम किया है तो मैडम यहाँ पर स्टेट हेड हैं डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ के आप सभी जानते ही हैं विकास सिंह बघेल जी एस एन एस सी के रेड डायरेक्टर बी एन एच एस सॉरी भोपाल बर्ड की संगीता राजगीर जी और पिछले दो दिन से लगातार अपनी एक्टिव ऊर्जा के साथ में इस कॉन्फ्रेंस में भाग ले रहे हमारे सभी प्रतिभागीगढ़ डेलीगेट्स ये निश्चित रूप से दो दिन का जो हमारी फर्स्ट नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन लेसर नॉन 
फॉनल स्पीशीज के ऊपर बातें हुई हैं बहुत ही ऐसी प्रजातियां थी जिनके बारे में हम बहुत कम जानते हैं उसके बारे में काफ़ी विस्तार से सभी जो शोधकर्ताओं ने वैज्ञानिकों ने जो हमारे इस पे इस पे जो हमारे रिसोर्स पर्सन थे इन सभी लोगों ने जो यहाँ पे अपना प्रेजेंटेशन दिया था वो काबिल तारीफ है और जो साथ में प्रेजेंटेशन के दौरान ही आपने जो थ्रेट्स चैलेंजेस और उसको कैसे हाउ टू गो हेड उसको दूर करने के लिए जो भी यहाँ पर अभी वर्कशॉप की जो रिकमेंडेशन यहाँ पे पढ़ी गई है वो तो सिर्फ एक तरह से बस एक रिपोर्ट जैसी थी उस रिपोर्ट से काम नहीं चलने वाला है उसमें से हमें एक्शन क्या करना है जो डुएबल चीज़ें हैं जो हमें आगे फ्यूचर में करनी हैं उसके लिए हमें उस पर ज़्यादा ध्यान देना होगा उस पर हमें उसका एब्सट्रैक्ट बनाना होगा क्योंकि उसके आधार पर हम फिर आगे अपने वे फॉरवर्ड में हम क्या कर, करें करना चाहते हैं कुछ जगहों पर बात आई थी खास करके जब कल वो परवीन शेख जी अपना प्रेजेंटेशन कर रही थी स्कीमिंग ऑफ चंबल के ऊपर वहाँ पे बहुत सारे इशूज ऐसे हैं जहाँ पे कि हमें आगे कुछ काम करने जरूरत पड़ेगी और यदि आवश्यकता हुई आपके जिस जिसका भी आपके प्रपोजल्स आएंगे प्रोजेक्ट प्रपोजल आएंगे उसका हम लोग बायोडाइवर्सिटी बोर्ड की तरफ जो हमारी सामर्थ्य होगी क्षमता होगी उसके अनुरूप हम उसको कोशिश करेंगे उसको सपोर्ट करने की दूसरा एक सबसे महत्वपूर्ण आज जो विषय है जिसपे डॉक्टर रणदीप सिंह जी ने खास करके भरतपुर धोल और राजस्थान के एरिया के क्षेत्रों में जो आपने वहाँ पर कैराकल के बारे में जो अपने काम किए हैं और उसका जस्ट एड ज्वाइनिंग और द चंबल रिवर हमारा कूनों वाला जो पार्ट इधर लगता है तो कूनों के क्षेत्र में भी जो भी कैराकल के संबंध में स्टडीज करना चाहते हैं जो भी संस्थाएं जो भी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वी मोस्ट वेलकम देम टू कम फॉरवर्ड विद योर प्रपोजल सो दैट वी कैन सपोर्ट फॉर दैट स्टडी ऑल्सो ये दो दिन का ऐसा समागम था जिसमें कि बी एन एच एस डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ साइकॉन डब्ल्यू आई आई और विभिन्न और आई आई एफ एम उसके अलावा खास करके जो विशेष जो इतना लंबा दीर्घ समय से काम करने वाले हमारे ऋषि ऋषिकेश शर्मा जी जो कि 79 से ही इस क्षेत्र में चंबल में काम कर रहे हैं और बिल्कुल अब तो वो रेजिडेंट हो गए हैं चंबल के रेजिडेंट हैं वो तो आपको वहाँ की पूरी बहुत ही बारीकियाँ मालूम हैं क्या समस्याएं हैं क्या चुनौतियाँ हैं सब मालूम है आपको तो जो भी आपके वहाँ से आपके सुझाव होंगे जो भी आपके रिकमेंडेशन होंगे प्रपोजल्स होंगे विल बी हैप्पी टू हेल्प यहाँ खास करके जो ये जब कॉन्फ्रेंस की शुरुआत रूपरेखा बन रही थी विकास सिंह बघेल साहब ने जब ये प्रपोजल लाया था मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा था कि कैसे किया जाएगा क्या किया जाएगा लेकिन उन्होंने इतनी अच्छी तरीके से पूरे इस कॉन्फ्रेंस को ऑर्गेनाइज किया प्लान किया एग्जीक्यूट किया और आज इसका परिणाम है कि दो दिन हम बहुत ही लाइवली माहौल में दो दिन यहाँ पर कॉन्फ्रेंस अटेंड कर सके हैं और मुझे उम्मीद है कि मॉर्निंग का जो सेशन वन विहार का आपका रहा हो जो लोग गए होंगे उस वन विहार के सेशन में खास करके बर्ड वॉचिंग वाले में खाली बर्ड वॉचिंग ही नहीं तो मेरे ख्याल से वो पूरा जो जो अनुभूति एक कार्यक्रम करते हैं हम मध्य प्रदेश में तो उसमें सारी फील ऑफ द फॉरेस्ट की पूरी फीलिंग आती है तो वो फिर अनुभूति आपको हुई हो अच्छी अनुभूति हुई होगी मैडम गीता रानी गुप्ता जी के कुछ सुझाव भी आए थे इसमें कुछ कॉन्फ्रेंस के संबंध में हम अलग से इनको बताएंगे आगे कैसे और जो भी मुझे लगता है कि जो थोड़े फीडबैक कम से कम आपसे हमें मिल जाएंगे अगर कोई ऐसी मैकेनिज्म हो अगर हमने तो उससे कम से फ्यूचर में हमें अपने आगे जो जो भी कॉन्फ्रेंस हमें करने करेंगे तो उसमें निश्चित रूप से हम सुधार करने की गुंजाइश रहेगी तो मैं तो अपने आप को ही अभी तक बहुत लेसर नोन था आप सबके साथ मिलकर मैं अब मोर लार्जर नोन हो गया हूँ <laughs> आप सबके साथ जुड़ गया हूँ तो 
ये सारे हमारे नए जो फ्रेंड्स हमारे बन गए हैं जिनके साथ हम नए जुड़ा जुड़ाव हमारा हुआ है मुझे उम्मीद है कि ये तो अभी जैसे शुरुआत की बात शुरुआत ही है आगे जो भी आपके एसोसिएशन हमारे साथ होंगे जिस रूप में भी होंगे निष्ठ रूप से हम बेहतर एक पार्टनर रूप में काम करेंगे और बेहतर तरीके से किस तरह से हम सिर्फ लेसर नॉन एनिमल्स के बारे में ही नहीं बल्कि हम तो सारे एनिमल्स पूरे ब्रह्मांड में जितने भी हमारे जो एनिमल्स हैं सबके बारे सबके सारे नॉट ओनली एनिमल्स और एवरी ऑल लिविंग क्लीचर्स उसके बारे में चूँकि बायोडाइवर्सिटी अपने आप में सिर्फ एक एनिमल्स के बारे में बात नहीं करता है इट इंक्लूड्स एवरी थिंग वेदर इट इज एनिमल प्लांट्स एक्वेटिक सिस्टम मतलब जो भी आप जहाँ पे भी जीव है हमारा बायोडाइवर्सिटी बोर्ड का टैग लाइन भी है हमारी वो भी जो लोगो भी है कि जीवो जीव से जीवन हम एक जीव दूसरे जीव से कैसे जुड़ा हुआ है उसके साथ जो जो उनके लाइफ के साथ एसोसिएशन है और खास करके ये जो दो दिन के हमारे प्रेजेंटेशन हुए हैं जो भी हुए हैं हमारा मकसद ही है सभी को एक प्रॉपर तरीके से उनका प्रॉपर रिकॉर्डिंग करने का डॉक्यूमेंटेशन करने का तो डॉक्यूमेंटेशन करने वाले काम में जो हम अपना प्रोजेक्ट के आपके पब्लिकेशंस होते हैं वहाँ पे हम तो हेल्प करते ही करते हैं खास करके जो लेसर नोन या वॉट्स एवर नोन इज देयर इन द इन एनी एरिया उसको अपने पी में इंदराज करते हैं उसके रजिस्टर करते हैं पीपल्स बायोडाइवर्सिटी रजिस्टर जिस क्षेत्र में हमारा बन रहा है तो चाहे वो लेसर हो चाहे लार्जर हो सभी की हमारी रिकॉर्डिंग वहाँ पर होती है ट्रेडिशनल नॉलेज की रिकॉर्डिंग भी वहाँ पे हम करते हैं तो मुझे उम्मीद है कि हम जिस पर्पस से ये दो दिन की वर्कशॉप कॉन्फ्रेंस हमने की थी उम्मीद है कि हम उसमें सफल रहे हैं और आपके जो लगातार सहयोग मिला है वो आगे ऐसे और मिलता रहेगा और फ्यूचर में हम आपसे अपेक्षा करते हैं कि और बेहतर से बेहतर जो भी अब प्रोजेक्ट आपके आए सो दैट वी कैन हेल्प फ्रॉम आवर ऑन साइड बायोडाइवर्सिटी बोर्ड साइड सो मैं तो मैं फिर से एसएनएससी का भी धन्यवाद करना चाहूँगा आप सभी का धन्यवाद करना चाहूँगा कि आप सभी लोग बहुत ही लाइवली तरीके से इस कार्यक्रम में उपस्थित रहे अपने पार्टिसिपेशन दिया है और ऐसे ही आगे सहयोग मिलता रहे थैंक यू वेरी मच Thank you so much, Dr. Dhul ji. And if there is one thing I can say on behalf of everyone to you, it is even we are happy that now we are largely known to you as well. <laughs> so thank you so much for that wonderful address, and thank you so much for your guidance throughout the two days. And now, ज़्यादा देरी ना करते हुए मैं मंच पे आमंत्रित करना चाहूँगा the one and only Muhammad Khalid ji, the founder and CEO of Bhopal Bird Society. to please uh, come here and deliver the vote of thanks uh so sorry before we leave i believe it becomes very significant for us to uh, listen and hear from श्रीनिवास मूर्ति जी एज वेल मैं चाहूँगा जोरदार तालियों से हम उनका स्वागत करें काफ़ी ऑथर्स ने हमें बताया यहाँ पर एमिनेंट पर्सनैलिटीज ने कि वो एक गुरु की तरह गुरु की भूमिका में रहे हैं सो मैं चाहूँगा प्लीज़ मूर्ति जी हमारे साथ अपने विचार साझा करें सो गुड इवनिंग टू एवरीबडी इस कार्यक्रम के साथ यहाँ पे सबसे ज़्यादा खुशी पाने वाले कोई जीव है उसमें मैं प्रथम हूँ ऐसा मुझे मैं मानता हूँ जस्ट आई वॉन्टेड टू शेयर ए स्मॉल स्टोरी ऑफ दिस जर्नी कि संगीता मैडम भी बैठे हुए हैं यहाँ पे और मोहम्मद खालिक वहाँ बैठा हुआ है <laughs> 2005 में व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड द फर्स्ट एक्सटेंशन प्रोग्राम as a forest department but of course i was not at the platform of the forest department at that point of time i was in academy of administration very nearby so there i could utilize that platform to make a uh, public extension program with respect to making the people to understand the nature forest and other things 
through Bhopal bird watching camps that started in 2005. Now we are 18 years down line and then yesterday um, Asim Srivastava was telling now it is, it is there everywhere bird watching camps. So from 2005 to 2023 uh, we have seen that much of uh, what should I say progress around. It's a very good development. But at the same time, ki exactly this prakar ki extension program se, kitne log nature conservation ke liye life ko samarpit karke aage chalte hain, ya fir usko ek profession ke roop mein chunte hain, to usme se mujhe jo dikhaye dete, ye ek yahan pe khalik hai, aur dusra inke sa- <coughs> aur ये विकास जी हैं इफ आई एम करेक्ट हम लोगों ने एक पहला मीडिया कॉन्फ्रेंस किया था अराउंड 6 7 इयर्स बैक उसमें ये आए थे वहां से फिर वो धीरे-धीरे आके मेरे से मतलब मिलना फिर पूछना साहब मुझे कुछ करना है मुझे कुछ करना है एंड देन दिस जेंटलमैन इज स्पेंडिंग मनी फ्रॉम हिज पॉकेट टू ब्रिंग आउट दैट ट्राई मंथली जर्नल एंड देन एंड ही इज अ ट्रैवल एजेंट बेसिकली ट्रैवल ऑपरेटर जो काम करते हैं लेकिन जब नेचर से कोई जुड़ जाते हैं तो किस प्रकार आदमी आगे जा सकते हैं तो देन एट द सेम टाइम आई हैड माय ओन इश्यूज विद दिस मतलब 3 आर 4 पीपल जो भी इसके साथ लगे हुए थे भाई आप लोग नेचर कैंप्स को अपना मतलब एज अ पार्ट ऑफ योर प्रोफेशन तो उसको ले लिया है लेकिन प्लीज रेज योर बार्स इसके आगे आगे चलो तो धीरे-धीरे पुश करते करते फाइनली uh, मतलब they have come with a proposal of conducting this uh, workshop. So, and then they wanted to push me ahead of them. I said, I will not come I want to see that the next generation of people who are coming from this. And also, from public people are coming Government organizations are doing it. But until we don't stand in this kind of तो फिर बात को आगे बढ़ाना काफी आ, क्या बोलते हैं क्योंकि आज कोई सबसे बड़ा मतलब लेसर नोन स्पीशीज है भारत में और हाईली एंडेंजर्ड स्पीशीज है वो नेचर है जब तक पब्लिक से नेचर की सपोर्ट में लोग नहीं आएंगे आगे तो इसको कोई इसके नाम से कोई आपको वोट नहीं देने वाले हैं मैंने कहने करती है इसकी कंजर्वेशन एक प्रायोरिटी के रूप में नहीं आने वाला है पीपल जनरली कॉल ये ग्रीन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है तो जनरली ऐसा कह के छोड़ देते हैं बट व्हाट इज ग्रीन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर आप यहां पे हम लोग एसी में बैठे हैं सब कुछ है सब फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर है इसमें से ऑक्सीजन हटा दें इसमें से जोशी मठ की तरह आपकी नीचे से जमीन किसका दें कहां जाएंगे या फिर महामारी के रूप में कोरोना आ जाए दोबारा फिर सब अपना मुंह बांध के बैठे रहेंगे मतलब अपने अपने घर में कमरों में बैठ के ये सब आपकी ग्रीन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की इकोसिस्टम सर्विस ऐसा है लेकिन इस बात को हम कितने लोग इस बात को हम ऐसे आम बात आम भाषा में अपने बच्चों को या किसी अपने मोहल्ले में अपने परिवार को हम समझा पाते वो बाहर पेड़ खड़ा है वो अपना ऑक्सीजन दे रहा है इधर भी पौधे रखे ये भी दे रहा किससे किससे पूछ के ऑक्सीजन दे रहा है ये ऑक्सीजन ना हो फिर क्या मतलब एवरीबॉडी नोस अबाउट इट इसके बारे में इतना डिटेल बताने की जरूरत नहीं है एंड देन this is about a story where some few people, dedicated people uh, from general public came out and now are able to have collaborate with the government agencies. And then this particular matlab, uh, karyakram se mereko itna acha lagta hai ki yahan pe serving government sector ki officers hai, managers hai. And then students hai, academics hai, academics se sambandhin tu log hai, naturalist hai. Researchers, हैं, institutions हैं, और retired लोग हम लोग हैं सब एक roof के नीचे बैठ के दो तीन दो दिन लगातार एक particular issue के बारे में मंथन करना और there was not a single moment जहाँ पे लोगों को बोलना पड़ा कि भाई मतलब सोना नहीं अभी <laughs> मैं खुद को बैठ के दो पैर को यहाँ बोला था मैंने कि भाई खुद को नहीं सोना आज <laughs> क्योंकि जब मैं बात करता हूं जनरली लंच के बाद ही मेरा सेशन रहता है आई एंश्योर कि मैं किसी को सोने नहीं देता लेकिन 
आज चूंकि ऐसा कुछ मतलब स्थितियाँ थी मुझे खुद को मतलब नींद से बाहर निकाल के काम करना पड़ा बट आई थैंक्स टू मतलब रणधीर पूरा नाम क्या है साहब आपका जी कि आपने मतलब किसी को मुझे भी इंक्लूडिंग मी आपने सोने नहीं दिया अदरवाइज डायस पर बैठ के सोने का मतलब है कि बहुत बुरा मतलब होता तो दैट दैट इज वेरी एक्सलेंट आउटकम एंड देन विथ ऑल द रिसर्चर्स आई रिक्वेस्ट वन थिंग कल भी मैंने कहा था वहाँ बैठ के आपको पर्टिकुलर स्टेटस ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर स्पीशीज या इस इश्यू आपने रेज किया उसकी थ्रेट्स क्या है वे फॉरवर्ड क्या है ये जब तक आप दो पन्नों में लिख के इन्हें नहीं भेजेंगे ये विकास की और मोहम्मद खालिक की उतना मतलब बस की बात नहीं होगा क्योंकि जितना ज़्यादा आप समझते हैं उस बात को वो लिख के दो दिन के भीतर भिजवा दीजिए इट नॉट नॉट ए बिग थिंग फॉर यू उसकी बेसिस पे देन दे विल कंपाइल वर्कशॉप रिकमेंडेशन रिपोर्ट फिर बायोडावर्सिटी बोर्ड को भेजेंगे ऑलरेडी अतुल श्रीवास्तव साहब तो बता ही चुके हैं वो क्या कर सकते हैं उनके टीम भी लोग भी सब लोग इस बात के लिए समर्पित हैं तो इफ यू वॉन्ट द इश्यूज टू बी टेकन फॉरवर्ड देन इट रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी लाइज विथ यू दैट्स एन इम्पॉर्टेंट इश्यू देन ये वर्ड ऑफ कॉशन फॉर सम ऑफ दोज प्रेजेंटर्स कि आप लोगों को मालूम था कि कौन सा प्रेजेंटेशन बहुत अच्छा था कौन सा प्रोडक्ट प्रेजेंटेशन थोड़ा मॉडरेट है कौन सा प्रेजेंटेशन उस टारगेट को मीट आउट नहीं कर पाया आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू टेक एनी नेम्स बट स्टिल मतलब जो लोग मतलब जो नेक्स्ट लेवल पे हैं वो कोशिश करिए कि जह, जहाँ पे इस प्रकार की कॉन्फ्रेंसेस आते हैं हमें मौके पे क्या कहना क्या करना है साहब पूछ रहे थे इतनी ये तो रिपोर्ट है रिपोर्ट से कुछ नहीं बनने वाला फाइनली जो कंजर्वेशन के इश्यूज के लिए मैं किस चीज़ को एड्रेस करना ये बात हमें स्पष्ट रूप से कहने की मतलब अपने को एक क्या बोलते हैं एवोल्यूशन की तरफ उस दिशा में जाने की जरूरत है तो दूसरा एक सबसे इम्पॉर्टेंट बात यह है बगैर जन समर्थन का कोई जैव विविधता का संरक्षण नहीं होगा तो इट्स वेरी एसेंशियल इश्यू तो जब मैंने शुरुआत अभी अपनी बातों में कहा था द मेन इश्यू ऑफ कंडक्टिंग ए नेचर कैंप और एनी बर्ड वाचिंग कैंप इज टू इन्वॉल्व द पब्लिक विथ द नेचर तो वो प्रक्रिया निरंतर होते रहना चाहिए तो अकेला मतलब हम जाकर मतलब बाहर जाके दो चार दिन पिकनिक करके घर चले गए इस एटीट्यूड से हम कितने लोगों को वाकई अपनी दिशा में ले जा ले मतलब अपनी दिशा में माने कि नेचर की कंजर्वेशन की दिशा में ले जा सकते हैं दिस हैज टू बी टारगेट ऑफ एवरी पर्सन सिटिंग ईयर एंड देन फॉर विच ए बिग मतलब इश्यू इज दैट कि प्लीज एड्रेस द टीचर्स टीचर्स इज ए बिग कम्युनिटी जो हर समय मतलब जब तक वो स्कूल में रहते हैं स्कूल के बाहर भी रहते हैं अपनी स्टूडेंट कम्युनिटी से वो इंट्रैक्शन में रहते हैं If already you are able to मतलब really address them in a big way, already we have a model with the biodiversity board, तो that will really resolve ये bigger मतलब issue of the country's crisis जहाँ पे sustainable development की बात नहीं हो रही है So I congratulate everybody who has collaborated for this uh, program and एंड thank everybody who has participated with their full stinted uh, attention here. Jai Hind. I wish this particular program should not end here, other than sending the recommendations and then where the work is going to start from department side. So I wish this such such conferences should happen on annual basis. So तब जाके आप लोग अपने साथ दो चार लोगों को ले आइएगा. Then there will be more competition for getting registration, and then we do have bigger convention halls here. यदि 500 लोग भी आते हैं. कितने लोग पेपर प्रेजेंट करते हैं पोस्टर प्रेजेंट करते हैं इट कैन गो टू द नेक्स्ट लेवल व्हाट आई मीन टू से दिस कंजर्वेशन कम्युनिटी ऑफ सेंट्रल इंडिया मस्ट ग्रो एंड देन दिस इंस्टीट्यूशंस द पीपल शुड रियली डू अ ग्रेट वर्क इन द टाइम्स टू कम जय हिंद बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मूर्ति जी इसलिए कहते हैं एक्सपीरियंस स्पीक्स वॉल्यूम एक्सपीरियंस स्पीक्स क्वालिटी कितनी सरलता से कितनी महत्वपूर्ण बातें मूर्ति जी ने हमारे सामने रखी और मुझे यकीन है हम जैसे अनेक लोग उनके विचारों से उनके काम से प्रेरणा लेते हैं और लेते रहेंगे एक और बात जोदा तालिया होनी चाहिए मूर्ति जी के लिए एंड अब मैं खालिक जी को आमंत्रित करना चाहूँगा डायस पे टू प्रपोज द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स बहुत बहुत नमस्कार सभी को और आदरणीय मंच को बहुत बहुत सम्मान मेरी तरफ से आ, बहुत बड़ी कॉन्फ्रेंस है ये इसमें 
वोट ऑफ थैंक्स देना बहुत कठिन है मगर मैं नाम लेना चाहूँगा और मैं पहले से ही क्षमा मांगना चाहूँगा कि अगर मैं किसी का नाम भूल जाऊँ सबसे पहले एस एन एस सी इंडिया और भोपाल वर्ड्स की तरफ से हम लोग जोरदार तालियाँ चाहेंगे यहाँ डॉक्टर अतुल कुमार श्रीवास्तव सर के लिए और जैव विविधता बोर्ड की पूरी टीम एलिजावेत मैडम के लिए और बकुल राट सर के लिए पूरी टीम के लिए जोरदार तालियाँ बजाइए बहुत बहुत सपोर्ट और बहुत अच्छा कार्यक्रम यहाँ पे हुआ है इसके साथ ही मंच पे बैठे आ, मेरे गुरु हैं श्री आर एस मूर्ति सर संगीता राजगीर मैडम ये आ, आ, जो लोग हैं वो ऐसे पायनियर हैं जो हम लोगों को सिखाते हैं काम करने के लिए आगे बढ़ाते हैं और मैं जो है वो बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ अपने सपोर्टर को जिसमें मध्य प्रदेश टाइगर फाउंडेशन सोसाइटी है वन वी आर नेशनल पार्क है हमारे ट्रेवल पार्टनर हैं एम पी टूर्स एंड ट्रेवल्स एपको को मैं धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ जिन्होंने हमको वेन्यू दिया है यहाँ पे जिसमें हम लोग कार्यक्रम कर पा रहे हैं वी एन एस इंस्टीट्यूशंस को फैसिलिटीज़ के लिए और हमारे वॉल्टियर्स के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद है सेंट्रल जू अथॉरिटी डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ इंडिया बी एन एच एस नौरादेही आलोक आस्था लोक कल्याण समिति जिन्होंने हमको जोरदार सपोर्ट दिया है उनके लिए तालियां बनती हैं यहाँ पे बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आप लोगों का इसके साथ में जनसंपर्क विभाग प्रोलोफिक्स मीडिया पार्टनर प्रिंट जर्नल एस एन एस सी जर्नल इनके भी मैं धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ मैं बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ हमारे सभी सीनियर फॉरेस्ट ऑफिसर्स का जो पूरा समय यहाँ पे अपना जो कीमती समय से समय निकाल के यहाँ पे उपस्थित रहे हैं श्री जयेश चौहान सर सुब्रंजन सेन सर मोहनता सर मोहनता मैडम अन्नागिरी सर और डायरेक्टर वन वी मैडम हमारे जो रिटायर्ड आईएफएस ऑफिसर्स हैं उसमें सुहास कुमार सर भी यहाँ उपस्थित रहे इसके साथ साथ मैं दूसरे डिग्नेटरीज का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ जिसमें हमारे यहाँ नंदी सर हैं यहाँ पे और आर जे राव सर थे हमारे जो शायद चले गए हैं राजेश सक्सेना सर का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद है सर आप लोगों का जो एक प्लांट्स भी रहा और आपका जो सपोर्ट रहा वो बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद उसके लिए साथ में हमारे साथ में हैं डॉक्टर मनोज कुमार शर्मा सर आर एम एन एस से उनका भी मैं धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूं वो यहां पे उपस्थित रहे सभी स्पीकर्स और जिन्होंने चेयर किया है उनके लिए जोरदार तालियाँ आप लोग खुद के लिए बजाइए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपका क्योंकि आप लोगों ने ऐसे विषय को उठाया है जो मैं कल बात कर रहा था और मेरे से सभी मीडिया पर्सनस ने ये कहा कि ये आप लिख रहे हैं मध्य प्रदेश के नहीं ये पूरे भारत की एकमात्र कॉन्फ्रेंस ऐसी हुई है क्योंकि हमारे पास कोई रेफरेंस नहीं है कि ऐसी कॉन्फ्रेंस पहले हो चुकी है तो बहुत 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 धन्यवाद आप लोगों का इसमें बहुत अच्छी बात ये रही है कि हम लोग लेसर नोन स्पीसीज की बात कर रहे हैं मगर एक खास बात ये निकल के आती है कि जो क्योंकि हम लोग डब्ल्यू से भी हैं जो ट्रेडिंग और पोचिंग और अगर हम कंजर्वेशन नहीं करेंगे तो लेसर नोन हम लोग हो जाएंगे क्योंकि जो कोविड आई है उसके बाद कहीं कल ऐसा ना हो कि जानवर एक कॉन्फ्रेंस करें और जिसमें ये कर दें कि लेसर नोन स्पीसीज जो ह्यूमन है उसके ऊपर हम लोग एक कॉन्फ्रेंस करें तो हमको इनका कंजर्वेशन जरूर करना है ये जो है हम लोगों के लिए बहुत ज़रूरी है और आखिरी में सभी के लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद है मगर इसको एक शायरी के साथ जो है वो मैं इसको अंत देना चाहूँगा कि यूँ ही नहीं मिलता कोई मुकाम उन्हें पाने के लिए चलना पड़ता है ये खासकर विकास जी के लिए है यूँ ही नहीं मिलता कोई मुकाम उन्हें पाने के लिए चलना पड़ता है और इतना आसान नहीं होता कामयाबी का मिलना उसके लिए किस्मत से भी लड़ना पड़ता है तो हमको यही करना है और हमको किस्मत से लड़ लड़ के कंजर्वेशन करना है सभी स्पीसीज का कैसे भी पैसे आए कैसे भी हमको लड़ना पड़े कैसा भी फील्ड में काम हो करके हमको आगे बढ़ना है तो आप लोगों का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद जो आप लोग पूरा समय उपस्थित रहे और अगर हमसे पूरी कॉन्फ्रेंस में कोई गलती हो गई हो तो उसके लिए भी हम लोग क्षमा मांगते हैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद शायद सिद्धार्थ और खालिक बहुत थक गए हैं तो वो बार बार मेरे नाम की जगह पे मेरे संगीता सक्सेना मैडम की जगह पे मेरा नाम ले दे रहे हैं क्योंकि मैंने खालिक को काफ़ी कुछ सिखाया ये तो ठीक है सब लेकिन संगीता सक्सेना मैडम जो हैं वो डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ के एम छत्तीसगढ़ के डायरेक्टर हैं 
और जब से हमने काम शुरू किया है उनके साथ ही हमने पहला प्रोग्राम किया और अब तक हम उनके साथ कुछ ना कुछ करते आ रहे हैं और एक बहुत ही हम लोगों को एज ए मैंटोर एक गाइड की तरह हम लोगों को हमेशा हर कार्यक्रम में सपोर्ट देती हैं और बहुत गाइडेंस देती हैं तो इसके लिए मैं खाली को सिद्धार्थ की तरफ से क्षमा चाहती हूँ और मैडम को मैं प्लीज दो मिनट और बैठे रहिए मैं चाहूंगा हम सब एक साथ ही निकले यस यस ओके जस्ट टू मिनट्स एक्चुअली मेरे को टाइम नहीं मिला जैसे ये लोग संगीता राजगीर एंड अभी मिस्टर मूर्ति ने भी कहा था कि क्या कहते हैं हम लोग ने बर्ड वाचिंग कैंप शुरू किए थे साथ में वी स्टार्टेड एंड अब तक हम लोग उसको फॉलो कर रहे हैं एंड एक चीज़ और उन्होंने नहीं बताई हमने पन्ना में भी वी स्टार्टेड बर्ड वाचिंग कैंप आई थिंक वी स्टार्टेड इन 2010 पन्ना में और वो अभी तक हम लोग कर रहे हैं उसको वहाँ पे इन कोलेब्रेशन विद फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट एंड जो बताते हैं ना कि कम्युनिटी को साथ में जोड़ के चलना चाहिए सो so, हमें हमेशा मिस्टर मूर्ति ने मोटिवेट किया है जो भी चीज़ हमने अपने एस डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू एफ इंडिया वी हैव प्रोमोटेड वी हैव आस्ट फॉर आप पहले बायोडाइवर्सिटी बोर्ड में भी रहे हैं उन्होंने हमेशा हमारे को इनक्रेज किया है मोटिवेट किया है एंड सिमिलरली उनकी जगह जब आप आए डॉक्टर श्रीवास्तव तो ही हैज ऑल्सो बीन एनकरेजिंग अस एंड मोटिवेटिंग अस टू डू समथिंग सो थैंक यू वंस अगेन फॉर ऑल द एनकरेजमेंट एंड एवरीथिंग यू हैव बिन गिविंग अस एंड सेकेंडली आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक मिस्टर विकास बिकॉज जब वो मेरे पास आए फर्स्ट टाइम कि हम उसमें कुछ वर्कशॉप कॉन्फ्रेंस करना चाहते हैं एंड दैट टू ऑन लेसन ऑन स्पीशीज सो आई रियली गेट दिस थिंग ओ दैट्स रियली नाइस थिंग हमने सुनी भी नहीं थी कि इस पर भी हो सकती है एंड बिलीव मी इन लास्ट दीज टू डेज आई थिंक ईच एंड एवरी सेशन वॉज वेरी एक्साइटिंग मतलब ऐसा कभी भी नहीं लगा कि मैं उठ के चली जाऊं और ये सेशन बोरिंग होगा बिकॉज ऑल द स्पीशीज आर सो मैग्निफिसेंट जैसे मैंने बोला था एवरी नेचर इट सेल्फ इज सो नाइस सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट ईच एंड एवरी स्पीशी हर एक का एक अपना रोल जैसे रहता है सो एंड सब ने जिसने भी प्रेजेंट किया दे हैव प्रेजेंटेड इट सो वेल कि सबको और एंड हमारा ये ही एक ऑब्जेक्टिव था कि सबको अवेयर करना एंड सो देट अब or i think we'll get more and more researchers and uh, you know uh, people to come up to take up these studies so thank you once again bhopal word khalik to main kehti hu it's just like a motherly feeling because when he <laughs> jab hamara humne ye uh, camps shuru kiye the to he was very very young and ab hum like he's become our resource person so <laughs> it's really nice thank you so much thank, thank you, you so much ma'am please yeah. give it up for the state director wwf इंडिया मध्य प्रदेश एंड छत्तीसगढ़ और पूरे पूरे प्रेजेंटेशन के साथ साथ जो हमारे बुलढाना से आलोक शेवड़े जी आए थे उन्होंने प्रेजेंटेशन तो किया दो 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 गाने भी सुनाए थे संगीत भी शारद <laughs> संगीत भी शारद होने की पूरी आपने जो यहाँ पे अपनी परिभाषा अपना उदाहरण दिया थैंक यू वेरी मच यस थैंक यू सो मच और आप सभी को भी धन्यवाद किया आपने मेरी आवाज़ को छिला थैंक यू सो मच टू विकास जी फॉर हैविंग मी हेयर बींग अ पार्ट of such an intellectual group it was my privilege aur uh, mujhe professionally anchoring karte hue zyada waqt nahi hua 4 5 saal hi hue to agar mujhse bhi koi choti moti galti ho gayi to aap mujhe 4 5 saal ka bachcha samajh ke maaf kar sakte hain and uh, you made a few doctors <laughs> ab hame doctoral degree nikalni padegi <laughs> yes yes those were the reminders even for them even for me <laughs> and uh, well main ant दो पंक्तियों के साथ ही करना चाहूँगा जिस तरीके से हम पंक्तियों के साथ बेहतरीन थॉट्स के साथ विचारों के साथ आगे बढ़ते हुए आए हैं सो so, और जिस तरह से उम्मीद करेंगे सबने कि आगे भी हम जुड़े रहेंगे तो उन चार पंक्तियों पे ही इस बेहतरीन कॉन्फ्रेंस का अंत ये पंक्तियाँ आप सभी की नज़र में सभी हमारे गेस्ट की नज़र में कियर्स किया है कि यूँ तो दिल की बात सीधे सीधे कही नहीं जाती यूँ तो दिल की बात सीधे सीधे कही नहीं जाती महफिल में आप जैसे तोहफे मिले तो शिकायत की नहीं जाती तो करिए वादा तो करिए वादा कि कल भी आपका दीदार होगा दीदार मतलब देखना 
तो करिए वादा कि कल भी आपका दीदार होगा वरना जाने की इजाजत इस तरह दी नहीं जाती जोरदार तालियां होनी चाहिए फॉर ऑल आर गेस्ट एंड फॉर ऑल ऑफ लेसन ऑन स्पीशीज ऑफ मदर थैंक यू सो मच एवरीवन हैव अ ग्रेट नाइट हैव अ ग्रेट टाइम अहेड